Hello friends. This is Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto abandoned QB and inherited the most powerful Keke Jenke in existence? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. When Naruto got to the bridge he saw Sasuke facing Haku and another person he's never seen. He was fairly tall with a strong built body. He wore a Chinese style shirt with a tiger design on the back. The shirt was red and the tiger was white. His pants were a camo design and instead of regular shinobi sandals he wore tabies. What got Naruto's attention was the huge double-edged sword in his right hand. It was stained with blood, Sasuke's blood. Naruto moved shouted Sakura while next to Tazuna. Naruto barely moved to the right and caught a glimpse of who attacked. It was another guy he has never seen. He was slightly taller than the one with the sword. He wore a gray shirt that says, violence fetish, on the front, baggy blue jeans and black tabby boots like the other. His hair was a dark purple almost black while the other has brown hair. This newcomer's hair was also in dreads while the swordsman's was spiked. In the second guy's hands were two three-foot-long battle spears. He looked at Naruto showing him his red cat-like eyes. Nice dodge runt, said the spear wielder as he stood up. Who the hell are you freaks? Demanded Naruto. Name's Jigoku and my bud's name is Ryoga, answered the spearman. And you are? He asked. I'm Uzumaki Naruto, the greatest shinobi of the Konoha village, shouted the blonde dimwit. Well then, show me what you got, Jigoku stated as he rushed Naruto. As Jigoku rushed, Naruto rushed as well much to everyone's shock. The two exchanged attacks when they clashed. Jigoku swung his left spear horizontally while Naruto ducked and stabbed him with a kunai. Jigoku then kneed Naruto in the gut and followed with a vertical slash with his right spear. Naruto jumped back and threw his kunai right at Jigoku's throat but missed. Then Jigoku dashed at Naruto. The two fought like this with neither getting an edge on each other while they fought Kakashi and Zabuza watched from far off. Looks like the brat's in a bit of a bind. Shouldn't you help him, eh Kakashi? Asked a sarcastic Zabuza. Naruto should be fine, you should worry about yourself Zabuza, answered Kakashi as he faces his foe. While Kakashi and Zabuza start to face off, Naruto and Jigoku drop their weapons. Jigoku charged after Naruto, while Naruto used his cage Bushin no Jutsu to confuse Jigoku. Then Jigoku grabbed his spears and combined them into one spear and started attacking the clones. Naruto backed up to the bridge's rail and Jigoku was in front of him with his spear pointed on top of Naruto's head. Say good night runt, said Jigoku ready to strike. Suddenly Naruto dashed three feet past Jigoku with his right arm extended forward with a curved blade of chakra starting from his forearm going past his elbow. Naruto looked at his right arm in amazement, then he looked at his left arm and saw another chakra blade. As for Jigoku, he felt a long cut on his cheek. You little son of a, started a pissed off Jigoku as he turned to face Naruto's back. His cut healed instantly and he too formed chakra blades as well. Then Jigoku lunged at Naruto, but Gado decided to make his appearance. End of flashback the rest was something Naruto wishes to forget. All anyone could say was, it was gruesome. Anyway Zabuza and Haku were out of a job so they decided to stay in wave country and protect the people. As for Jigoku and Ryoga, they left after traveling with Team 7 for a while helping Naruto improve on well everything since Kakashi was busy teaching Sasuke. After Team 7 returned to Konoha things were back to normal. Well about as normal as a village run by a bunch of psychotic apes. Sakura is still a pink-haired freak with no talent. Sasuke is still his brooding self. Kakashi is still a freakishly late porno reading teacher with bad excuses. The only one different is Naruto. Who is trying to use his bloodline limit poorly. After a few weeks of D rank missions and fruitless hours of training to unlock his bloodline, Naruto and his team were given a chance to participate in the Chunin exams. Normally this sounds great, but Naruto's been having a horrible time. First he was dissed by San Nin, then beaten by a green spandex wearing nut job, and now he entered a room filled with Genin who look like they're ready to tear his head off. Next thing Naruto sees is Sakura arguing with Ino about who belongs to Sasuke. This is so troublesome. Why don't you guys just drop dead? Called out the lazy Shikamaru with Choji beside him. Well if it isn't the three stooges, 
I thought you would have slept in Shikamaru, said Naruto. What? Well you know what? Ah skip it you're not worth the trouble, said Shikamaru. Yeah, whatever, responded Naruto pulling out a CD player and started listening to some music. Where did he get the CD player? Asked a new voice from behind. From some guy we met on a mission, I'm surprised to see you here Kiba, answered Sasuke. From there Naruto tuned out everyone out, missing out on some guy introducing himself as Kabuto who gave the rookie 9 info on Gara, Lee, and about the Chunin exams. What he did notice was that three sound nins were moving in to strike Kabuto, so Naruto got in the way and tripped the mummy looking one. Why you little, said the bandaged nin as he was getting up. Naruto gave his fox like smirk, ready to fight only to be interrupted by the proctors. Stop right there you brats, shouted the tallest one. There won't be any fighting during the start of the exams, he continued. Sorry just got a little excited, replied the sound nin. Man, what a way to ruin my fun, whined our orange clad menace. After that the proctor introduced himself as Ibiki and started explaining how the first exam is set up. Once the exam started all the genin noticed how tough the questions were. Throughout this test Naruto was about to have a nervous breakdown, until someone started speaking to him. You do realize you are supposed to cheat right? Huh? Responded Naruto, thankfully no one but Hanada heard him. W what's, W wrong and Naruto-kun? Asked the Hyuga. I thought I heard someone talk to me, whispered Naruto. That was me you whiskered fool. I'm talking to you telepathically, so just think when you talk to me. Okay, who the hell are you? Thought Naruto. My name is Risko and I'm going to help you pass the first part of this exam. Why? Asked Naruto. All will be revealed soon enough, now the answer to question 1 is. As the written exam progressed the genin who were caught cheating were knocked off. As the 45 minute mark was hit Ibiki decided to announce the 10th question. He stated that those who wished to bail out to raise their hands. One by one the genin who cracked under the pressure left with their teammates. Ibiki noticed that Naruto was still in the room, so he decided to put more pressure on him. So you're sure you don't want to leave kid? Asked Ibiki. He got no response from Naruto. Everyone was watching Naruto for his reaction. You can still quit, there is no shame if you quit now, he said but he still got no response. Or even listening. I'm giving you a chance to try again next time, he yelled. After his outburst Naruto popped out one of his headphones. Huh. Sorry I wasn't listening you were boring me, Naruto finally answered. Before Ibiki could say anything a big mass of apparently a banner with a trench coat clad woman crashed through the window. Alright. You brats there's no time to relax, because the second part of the Chunin exam starts now, shouted the strange woman. She got no response from the genin which is no surprise. Your timing is still horrible Anko, said Ibiki from behind the banner. One hour later the remaining genin arrived at the location for the second part of the exam, the forest of death. While Anko was giving out the rules for part 2 of the exam, Kakashi, Kuranai, Asuma, and the unknown species called Gai were talking about a certain mission. I still don't get it Kakashi, how is it that a non-shinobi can face an army of mercenaries, win that battle, and not be wounded? Asked Asuma. Yeah that's a little hard to swallow, added Kuranai. It may seem weird, but he did, but it wasn't a battle at all, answered Kakashi. What do you mean my eternal rival? Asked Guy. It was a massacre, he responded. The Junin were a little shocked. He just threw himself at them cutting them to pieces with his spears. Ripping them apart with his hands. Biting chunks of flesh off, and worse yet he even flayed a few and even ripped some of their heads off with the spines still attached, he continued. Oh Kami-sama, how horrible, spoke out Kuranai. That's not all, he was also laughing the whole time, added Kakashi. Back with Team 7. Well things are not looking up for them. First they were attacked by Mist Nin, then by Orochimaru, and then the Sound Nin. Lee jumped in to help Sakura while Sasuke and Naruto were out cold. After he was beaten Team 10 jumped in. Sasuke finally awoke with the curse mark activated. He beat Zaku and started to rip his arms off until three other Nin came in. Hey Vikor, who are we after again? Asked one of the Nin. Who knows? All I know is that it's a boy with a powerful bloodline, answered Vakor. Are they after Sasuke as well? Thought Dosu. Hey Bregul, why don't you play with these kids? We'll find the right one that way, suggested the third nin. Great idea Ramo, 
responded Bregule as his body started to shift. His muscles started to expand, he grew taller, past the seven-foot mark. His skin got thicker and he grew tusk under his jaw. The young Genin were freaked out by Bregule's appearance. Sasuke charged at him and backfisted him, but it did nothing. Sasuke gasped in shock because his power boost did nothing. What was that? Taunted Bregule as he backfisted Sasuke, sending him flying right into a tree. Sasuke! yelled Sakura and Ino. As Bregule started walking toward them, he stopped when he saw Naruto walk toward him, glowing red orange chakra. I don't know who you think you are, but you're dead, said Bregule, throwing his fist at Naruto. Naruto caught Bregule's arm and pushed it back. Everyone was shocked, especially Sasuke, Neji, Dosu, and Shikamaru. The two grabbed each other's hands and were trying to overpower each other. Then Naruto twisted Bregule's arms breaking them. Blood started spraying out as Bregule yelled in pain. Who are you? asked Bregule. He got no answer it was like Naruto wasn't even awake. You bastard! he yelled as he charged at Naruto. He lifted Naruto off the ground. All was silent until a spray of blood erupted. Bregule dropped to the ground with his neck snapped. Vakor and Reimo were shocked. The genin there were shaking. They just saw a man more than twice their size get killed by a short 12 year old kid like he was nothing. No way. That brat killed Bregule, yelled Ramo. Well, don't just stand there, take him down, ordered Vakor coming out of his shock. Without another word, Ramo's body expanded like Bregule, only slightly smaller, and then he formed two more of himself and they attacked Naruto. Two of the three Ramos grabbed both of Naruto's arms. Naruto managed to slide his arms out of their grip and thrust his left hand into one's chest. Once he pulled his hand back, that Ramo's chest burst with blood as he fell to the ground. Suddenly Naruto did a jump kick right into the other Ramo's head. The second Ramo's neck snapped and he too fell to the ground. No way, when did Naruto get so strong? Thought Sakura as she and everyone else watched Naruto grab the last Reimo by his arms and pull them behind his back impaling him with his own shoulder blades. So now it's my turn, yelled Vakor as his shoulders started to enlarge about two head sizes wide. But I'm not like Bregule or Reimo. I'm in a class of my own, he added as his shoulders started to open and start gathering chakra and he fired at Naruto. Luckily Naruto dodged the blast by getting in between the beams. How do you like my high output chakra cannons? They're not equipment either, they are a part of my very flesh. I am a chakra blasting killing machine, explained Vakor as he fired again only for Naruto to leap out of the way. Quick on your feet aren't ya, commented Vakor as he kept firing and missing. Hold still damn it, he yelled. What the hell is going on? asked a frightened kin. How the should I know, answered a just as frightened Zaku as he watched the battle. Suddenly Vakor stopped shooting when he noticed Choji and smirked. Well then, if you're not going to stay still, then I'll just have to vaporize your fat little friend here, threatened Vakor as he turned to face Choji. Hey! I'm not, yelled Choji, but he stopped when Vakor aimed his chakra blasters at him. Before he fired Naruto gathered his chakra into his hands after he jumped between Vakor and Choji. What the bloody hell! yelled Vakor before he fired his blasters. As he fired his chakra beams, Naruto fired the gathered chakra from his hands. The two energy beams collided, Naruto's blast overpowered Vakor's own and engulfed him. The blast started peeling his flesh off his bones as he yells in agony. Then the blast moved on to his bones vaporizing them. Afterwards the blast continued forward and wasted everything in its path. Naruto turned and looked at the gathered genin. Choji started backing away until Naruto spoke. Choji, Ino, Shikamaru. What are you guys doing here? Asked our strange orange clad hero. You. Dot you mean you don't remember? asked Ino in shock. No, why? answered Naruto as he looked at the area and saw Bregules and Ramos' corpses as they dissolved. What the hell? he yelled, not believing what he was seeing. The four teams watched as the bodies disappear before their eyes. They all turned towards each other. They were too exhausted to put up a fight even if they wanted to. Not that any of them want to after seeing what Naruto did. Slowly but surely the sound team left. Then Lee's team left after recovering their fallen teammate. After that, Team 10 left, leaving only Team 7 alone. Two days later, Team 7 reached the tower where they and six other teams waited for the third part of the Chunin exam. The Hokage went ahead and explained the purpose of the Chunin exams. 
Afterwards the sickly Hayate showed up and finished up the explanation and asked if anyone wished to drop out of the exam, Kabuto did. Then the first two combatants were selected. The first two were Sasuke and one of Kabuto's teammates. The two faced each other as the others watched from the stands. Hello everyone, said Kakashi after he had his talk with Sasuke. Uh. Kakashi sensei can I talk to you for a moment? asked Sakura. Certainly Sakura, answered Kakashi. Naruto at this point decided to ignore his teammate and sensei when Hanada walked towards him. Hey Hanada what's up? called out Naruto. Oh, and nothing na. Naruto-kun. I, just wanted to, see you, replied Hanada. Really? Cool, said Naruto. The two stood there talking about nothing, well Naruto did most of the talking. Hanada just listened to him enjoying his voice as he talked about his training and such. It's strange, whenever I'm near Hanada I feel a lot calmer. While when I'm near Sakura I'm more worried about not living to see another day, thought Naruto. Wow Naruto-kun is really amazing. I wish I was more like him, thought the Hyuga heiress. Meanwhile the match ended with Sasuke winning. Then Konkuro winning his match, then Shino won against Zaku by filling his arms with his bugs and blowing Zaku's arm off or both. After that was Sakura and Inos which ended as a draw. Then Temuri's victory over Tenten. Afterwards was Shikamaru vs Kin, after the so-called troublesome battle, came Naruto and Kiba's fight. Alright. Finally it's my turn to fight, yelled our blonde shinobi as he jumped into the arena. Yes. We hit the jackpot today Akamaru, shouted Kiba as he and Akamaru leapt into the arena as well. After a few small arguments about using Akamaru the match finally started. Kiba rushed Naruto and tackled him into the ground. Naruto's body slid across the arena. Kiba smirked over his apparent victory. Up in the stands the instructors each have already guessed the outcome. Well, it's not surprising that Kiba would win against Naruto, thought Kurenai. Figures that Naruto would go down easily, thought Asuma. Strange, I thought Sakura said Naruto suddenly became stronger. Maybe it was just a fluke, thought Kakashi. As everyone who saw Naruto's fight with those three nin were shocked by Kiba's victory, Kiba started to taunt the down blonde. Man I can't believe you even made it this far. Ha 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 what a loser, boasted the dog boy. You sure about that mutt boy? Countered Naruto as he rose to his feet. What? Spoke the startled dog Nin as he watched Naruto rise. Because, I, won't, back down, yelled Naruto as he tossed off his jacket revealing a black t-shirt the words, never gonna stop, on the back. Then he got into a fighting stance. His stance was an odd one. His legs were spread wide, his right knee was bent so far down that it was touching the ground. His left knee was slightly bent. His left arm was over his left leg with his hand open and his right arm was raised over his head in a fist. To everyone this stance would be no doubt horrible, but Kakashi noticed something familiar about the stance. That stance, it looks like a lower version of that madman's stance, whispered Kakashi as remember the spearman. What kind of a stance is that Dobi? Asked Kiba. Why don't you find out Ki? Countered Naruto. That was enough for Kiba to attack. He and Akamaru struck at Naruto, but they missed him. Naruto dodged their first attack and twisted his body and used his right leg to sweep Kiba and used his right elbow to hit Akamaru, but he missed. Akamaru then bit down on Naruto's arm. Naruto managed to fling the dog off but Akamaru landed onto Kiba's back and Kiba popped a soldier pill into Akamaru's mouth. After eating it his fur started to turn red. What the hell? Is that even legal? Asked the shocked Naruto. Yes. A soldier pill is legal, because it is a ninja tool, answered Hayate. Some help you are. Snapped Naruto. Then he saw Akamaru turn into Kiba. Oh crap, he added. Five minutes later the two Kibas were thrashing Naruto left and right with their Gatsuga. SP? Naruto was feeling like a torn up ragdoll. Hanada couldn't stand the beating, but she knew she couldn't do anything to stop it. As Naruto was being beaten he heard a voice he hasn't heard since his C-ranked mission. Damn runt, you're getting on hell of a beating. Aniki is that you? How can I hear your voice? Wait a minute, oh yeah that guy Risco said that I can talk telly whatever with him. Does that mean I can do the same with you too? Hey slow down will ya? Anyway in order, yes it's me, second you're hearing my thoughts, third who the is Risco. Last yes I guess we are telepathic to each other. Now why don't you try those moves Ryoga and I taught you. 
Good idea, Aniki, as Kiba and Akamaru charged at Naruto again. Naruto kneeled down on his right knee and crossed his arms. He then chambered his right hand next to his hip. As his opponents drew closer, Naruto threw his fist into the air and a sudden cyclone erupted around him. Show Kei's Ken. Rising wind fist, shouted Naruto. The cyclone engulfed the three combatants and sent them flying into the walls. They slid off the walls and got back up slowly. Akamaru managed to keep Kiba's form. Naruto started losing his balance. Note to self. Don't do that again until I get it right, he added. Up in the stands, many shinobi were wondering about Naruto's attack. What kind of a jutsu is that? Thought Shikamaru, never seeing anything like it before. He used a wind jutsu without any hand seals, is that even possible? Thought Sakura. Most impressive, Naruto, it would seem that you were holding back during our little bout. I cannot wait to face you for real now, thought Lee, the dangerously unstable unknown species. Looks like that brat is a wind user too Tamari, said Konkuro. Yeah, but he has no control whatsoever, commented the wind mistress. That was amazing, whispered Hanada. That's it you're dead, yelled Kiba as he and Akamaru used the Gatsuga again. Naruto didn't have time to get his balance as he was being thrashed again. It kept on going for about two more minutes until Naruto's eyes started to slit. He dashed to one of the two Kibas. He swung his right arm and for an instant his chakra blade appeared and vanished before anyone could see it. The blade cut that Kiba in the gut, but it wasn't deep enough to cause a serious cut, still some blood did appear. The Kiba that was cut turned out to be Akamaru. Akamaru! Bastard what did you do to him? shouted Kiba as he attacked Naruto with his Gatsuga by himself. Just as Kiba reached Naruto, Naruto grabbed one of his arms stopping Kiba instantly. Naruto pulled his right fist back then he threw a punch right into Kiba's face and sent him flying. Kiba flew right into the stands, straight into the wall. He made a crater on the wall. He then bounced off and went through the rail, and right back on the ground making another crater. Oh shit, said Hayate as he went to check on Kiba. Good, he's still alive. Winner Uzumaki Naruto, he added. Up in the stands Kuranai couldn't believe what she just saw. She saw one of her own students just get the beating of his life from the village idiot like it was nothing. After a victory cheer and a job well done by Jigoku, Naruto ran up the steps and was stopped by Hanada. N. Naruto kun, said the quiet Hayuga. Huh? Was up Hanada? asked the apparent slang talking boy. She presented him with a jar which confused him, huh? What's this? he asked. It's a healing ointment, answered Kuranai in a kind tone. I didn't ask you I was asking Hanada, snapped Naruto. This pretty much shocked all three of them. It, it is a healing ointment, Naruto-kun, said Hanada. She was now a little worried about Naruto's reaction to her gift. It's, for, you, Naruto-kun, she continued. Really? Thanks Hanada-chan, said Naruto as he accepted the gift and started to put it on one of his wounds. Just as soon as he put the ointment on the wound healed instantly. Wow this is really good. Hanada chan, shouted the excited blonde. As Naruto and Hanada were spending this time together, Neji was watching with his ice cold stare. Even though he was looking at Hanada, he couldn't help but keep glancing at Naruto as well. What is this kid's secret? He is obviously an idiot, but that fight with those three nin makes no sense. Uchiha Sasuke is this year's rookie of the year, but he was beaten easily by one of them. Yet this failure killed them like they were insects. What is he? thought Neji. Soon enough Hanada and Neji's match was called. The match started with Neji verbally attacking Hanada making her more uncomfortable. As he kept insulting her Naruto's blood was boiling. Finally Naruto couldn't take it anymore. He shouted as Neji for his harsh words and his fatalism. As he shouted at Neji he was giving Hanada courage to fight her cousin. As the two Hayuga fought many of the Chunin hopeful were amazed by how much of a beating Hanada was taking. Every time she was knocked down she got right back up. Naruto himself couldn't stop himself from watching the match. He felt this uncontrollable urge to kill Neji to protect Hanada. Naruto got his chance as soon as he saw Neji rush towards Hanada with the intent to deliver the killing blow. He jumped off the stands before any of the senseis, he got between the Hayuga cousins, grabbed Neji's arm, and flipped him over his shoulder. Neji was sent across the arena and he was pissed. Why did you interfere with our match you failure? demanded Neji. A match? You call trying to kill Hanada-chan a match? snapped Naruto. 
Before either of them can say anything else Hanada collapsed. Naruto managed to catch her before she hit the ground. Then Kurenai appeared next to them to help her injured student. Get the medics in here now, she yelled, out of fear for her student. When the medics arrived Naruto noticed that Neji has a smirk on his face. Without a word Naruto ran toward Neji with the intention to give him a very gory death. Luckily for Neji, Naruto was stopped by Lee and Hayate. Naruto, please do not let your flames of youth burn out like this. If you must face Neji do so when you are scheduled to face him, said Lee. Don't hand me your flames of youth, bullshit and let me at him, yelled Naruto. Oh no you won't. Since you interrupted the match you have disqualified yourself from the Chunin exam, said the sickly Junin. With that said Naruto and Lee were shocked. Naruto couldn't believe that one action could result in this. He was trying to grasp the concept, he got disqualified because he protected Hinata and can no longer compete. All hope seemed lost until someone new entered the arena. He was a quite noticeable man. He has a lean built wearing a grey business suit. His raven dark hair has a pillar-like appearance. His dark blue eyes look like they can see into your soul. He is obviously quite tall and with tanned skin. I don't see the problem with this boy's actions. He only did it to protect the Hyuga heiress. A job given to her own cousin who chose to end her life instead, spoke the man in a deep tone. Ah, Rio san to what do I own the pleasure of seeing you here? You know the finals aren't until next month, said the Sandame. Yes, but I wish only to visit and see a certain Genin's fight, but I guess I missed it, said Ryo. And now I find out that he is disqualified, he added. Well I think I can make one exception, said the Hokage. Naruto didn't even listen to any of this, because as soon as he saw Hanada being carried away he rushed toward her. He didn't hear what the meds said to him. All that mattered was Hanada. As he left the arena with Kurenai, and the meds carrying Hanada off Ryo was watching. There is no doubt about it he is indeed a berserker, and that girl may prove useful, Ryo as he watched them leave. While Naruto headed toward the hospital, Konoha got even more unexpected guests. It started with a certain dog boy's older sister getting groceries. Hannah was heading back home when she saw two guys arguing, loudly. You just had to kill that bartender when we were at Wind Country didn't you Jigoku, said one of the guys. Man. How many times do I have to tell you Ryoga? He just happened to consequently die after my spear was lodged into his head, explained Jigoku. Do you even remember what his last words were? Asked the aggravated swordsman. Of course his last words were, O oh Kami-sama! Help! He stabbed me with his spear, and then he dropped dead, answered the cat-eyed psycho. This loud and odd argument continued to attract attention simply because the spearman does not deny nor confirm that he killed someone. To Hannah, this cat-eyed male was quite a catch. He is in good shape despite being thinner than his sword-wielding friend. The way that his hair is in dreads makes him look a bit unstable in a very dangerous way. Lastly his red cat-like eyes makes him appear to be a little mysterious and terrifying at the same time. Before she could confront them, they left arguing over what sounded like the Jigoku stole something in some palace. After making sure Hanada was alright, Naruto left the hospital to clear his head or at least try to look like he was. In truth he was trying to ditch someone who has been tailing him. His senses told him that his pursuer is female and that she has a small hostile aura. For about 10 minutes Naruto tried to lose her in the village, succeeding only twice, but she manages to find him. Finally he stopped at a river in the forest area. All right, who are you and what do you want? Demanded the blonde. The female shinobi revealed herself to Naruto. Hey you're that sound girl with the head injury, aren't ya? He asked. Well you're obviously not as dumb as you look, answered the sound kunoichi. Before anything else could be said four tentacles appeared out of the river to attack them. The two genin managed to dodge the tentacles and saw a shinobi dressed similar to Kakashi minus the mask and forehead protector. He also has slick back red hair. He was standing on top of the water surprising the two young shinobi. I have to say you are indeed light on your feet boy, maybe that's why Vakur's team couldn't beat you. However, said the ninja as he got hit by Kin Sanban that she threw at him. The Sanban stuck to him, but slowly popped off. I'm not like them at all. Because I am in a league of my own, he continued as he grew for more tentacles on his back. His fingers started to grow in cups with teeth in them and fins on his legs. He grew to about six foot eight in an instant. For I, October Kill will be the one to defeat you Berserker 3, 
declared October Kill. Well then, come and get me October Kill, challenged Naruto not even wondering about being called Berserker 3 as he ran down beside the river to get some distance away from Kin. As October Kill gave chase, none of them noticed a man watching from a distance. Back with Naruto and October Kill they reached the waterfall which leads to the bathhouse. October Kill spat out ink right into Naruto's face. Naruto tried to shake the ink off, but October Kill rushed toward him. Naruto quickly delivered a quick kick to his head, but it did nothing. Then Naruto threw his right fist into October Kill's face. Again nothing really happened except October Kill's face caved in and moved back into place. Heh, heh, surprised. My body is soft and pliant. Which means I can absorb any blow that is aimed at me, so your taijutsu is useless, boasted October Kill. After hearing this Naruto tried to jump away from October Kill. Sadly October Kill used his tentacles to grab Naruto's limbs, his waist, his shoulders, and his neck. Then October Kill started to swing Naruto into a tree and then into the ground. As October Kill continued his assault, Kin reached them to see Naruto be slammed into the ground again. Ah ha ha! I've done it! I've defeated Berserker 3! shouted October Kill pleased with himself for beating Naruto. Damn it! If only I could summon my bloodline, thought Naruto. Then in a sudden red-orange flash, October Kill's tentacles were cut into pieces. Impossible! How did he? complained October Kill as he looked at the blonde berserker. When the flash cleared Naruto was seen kneeling with his chakra blades on his forearms. October Kill couldn't believe that Naruto had progressed this far. Kin was amazed by this turn of events. Unreal. That kid can make swords out of chakra. Is that even possible? thought Kin as she continued to watch. You, you bastard, shouted October Kill as he ran at Naruto with his end cupped hands straight out. I'll kill you, he yelled. Naruto ran towards October Kill and delivered a vertical slash with his left arm. They stood still four yards away from each other. Then October Kill turned and faced Naruto's back. No, this can't be, ah. Wind October Kill is split in half. Then the two halves fell to the ground with all his blood and intestines falling out. Naruto's blades stayed on his arms instead of vanishing like last time. He turned and faced Kin who was standing there with a look of amazement on her face. Hey, are you okay? Asked Naruto. Yeah, but that was unbelievable. Where did you learn that? Responded Kin completely forgetting about why she was following Naruto. Well uh, it's my bloodline but I can't really use it that well, answered Naruto. That's because it's being wasted on someone undeserving of our power, said a male voice. The two nin turned to face a tall man with cyan hair. He wore a black business suit and stood with his hands in his pockets. The two genin could feel no killing intent, but he still made them feel uneasy. Who the hell are you? demanded Naruto as he got into his stance. You've forgotten already? Oh well, it's no surprise, this is our first actual meeting. I am Risko, but I am also, battle clad, shouted Risko. What the two genin saw shocked them. Risko's suit was burned away. His skin peeled off his entire body, his manhood vanished and his toes fused together to form two toed feet. Then two long straight blades popped out of his forearms and went past his elbows. Then dark scale like skin covered his entire body. His chest formed two chest plates with hinges on the sides. He also has bone like spikes on the sides of his stomach. Finally a crystal with one point appeared on the center of his forehead. A berserker like you, he finished in a deep almost metallic voice. A berserker? asked Naruto. I've heard about them. They are said to be the most dangerous group of people, but I thought they were a myth, said Kin. Oh we're more that that little girl. We berserkers are blessed with great power by the first berserker. Those he attacked, he turned into warriors like him. Then our gift gradually developed into an actual bloodline. Many feared our power and wished for our extinction, but I've survived and found out about the first two purebred berserkers, explained Risko. Naruto had no idea what Risko was saying. It was too much for him to keep up with. Here he is being told that he's a berserker and this guy has pretty much explained his bloodline in a short way. Yet somehow Naruto felt that there is more to his bloodline. As he is being deep in thought Risko noticed Naruto's dazed look. I can see that history isn't your best subject. Simply put you, me, another guy are the last of our kind. But don't think that makes you special you're not even close to my level, said Risko. And why is that asshole? 
asked Naruto. Because you haven't reached our true form yet, answered Risko. Hey, don't listen to him he's just trying to scare you, encouraged Kin. Too bad it's working, Naruto mentally remarked. Oh right, there's still you to get rid of, said Risko as his crystal started to glow. Naruto moved in front of Kin when Risko shot at her. Naruto was momentarily stunned, but he managed to move again. I won't let you harm anyone just to get to me, declared Naruto as he ran back into the forest. Well then, I guess I'll have to give you a crash course on Berserker 101, said Risko as he gave chase. A minute later Risko caught up with Naruto easily. After he was right beside Naruto, Risko's crystal started to glow again. This crystal on my forehead lowers the temperature around me to paralyze my opponents, he explained as he fired at Naruto. Before the beam hit him Naruto flipped forward to dodge the attack and retaliated by throwing a kanai at Risko. Risko dodged the kanai and rushed toward Naruto and fire his crystal again. We call it the stun beam, said Risko as he continued to rush at Naruto again. Naruto dodged the stun beam and tried to slash at Risko with his chakra blades, but Risko dodged each of his attacks by side-stepping and then jumped into the air. He rolled in the air and then his blades flipped forward and started vibrating. These blades vibrate at high frequencies which allow them to cut through almost everything, explained Risko as he cut down two trees with his blades. Naruto managed to avoid the falling trees only to be kicked in the head by Risko's right leg. Naruto was sent flying to one of the fallen trees and hit it hard leaving a dent in the trunk of the down tree. It looks like you're not familiar with these, taunted the older berserker. Damn it! yelled Naruto as he lunged at Risko trying to strike him down with his chakra blade again. Unfortunately his arm was caught, Naruto tried to break free but Risko's grip was too strong. Looks like you failed the lesson, stated the elder berserker as he opened his right chest plate. Naruto could see the chakra gathering into Risko's chest right in front of him. The amount of chakra was enormous that if he didn't break free he would defiantly be dead. Off in the distance Kin saw a huge blast of chakra fly to the right about two miles in front of her. Holy shit. I don't know who fired that, but hopefully that kid got that guy, said Kin as she leapt toward the blast site. Back with Naruto he managed to the blast, but he was exhausted. As he tried to get up Risko walked up to him. Naruto saw that the spikes on Risko's sides moved outward and air blew out an ed in more air. Naruto also felt the chakra around him head toward Risko's stomach as well. He's absorbing the chakra around him. Does that mean he can use an infinite amount of chakra? Thought Naruto in shock. That was the Devastator, our kind's most powerful weapon. Its only drawback is that because it uses a large amount of chakra it cannot be used in repetition. Do you see now? The difference in power between your pre-battle clad form and the real deal. Now if we're done playing around I would like to take you back to Keke Cage HQ with me. As an important test subject that is, spoke Risko. Th, that's not going to happen, shouted the struggling young berserker. You don't get it do you? If you continue to resist you will, started Risko until his body froze up. To Naruto it looked like Risko's body was deforming. That was the last thing he saw before he blacked out. Ten minutes later Risko recovered from the strange pause. He looked around, but he could not find Naruto anywhere. He got away, but that's not important right now. Just what the hell just happened to me, Risko asked himself. Naruto ran as fast as his legs could carry him across the village. It was all the same, blood was everywhere. The bodies of the villagers were laying on the ground. Most were cut into pieces and others burned alive. He couldn't stand looking at these people's remains. When he reached the academy he saw the students were all hanging on the walls of the academy. Their faces had the forever look of fear on them. They were all hung by spears that pierced right into their throats. The senseis were all on the ground torn apart and or flayed. Then Naruto saw the one sensei he hoped to never see in these condition. He saw Aruka, his head was severed from his body. His face showing a look of shock and fear. No, it can't be. No, Aruka sensei said the disbelieving Naruto as he ran to the severed head hopping to at least hold him one last time. When he reached the head he saw a two-toed foot drop right on the head crushing Naruto's sensei's head. Naruto stopped to see the owner of the foot thinking that it's Risko, but the figure vanished. Enraged by this action Naruto ran to find Risko and kill him for what he has done. After he left the academy he saw the rest of the rookie nin, their senseis, and team guy facing the same figure who crushed Aruka's head. 
Asuma was the first to attack the figure. He rushed at the being with his trench knives, but his arms were cut off in a second. Before he had a chance to scream the dark entity grabbed his head and squeezed it like it was a grape. Blood poured out from where Asuma's head was and he dropped to the ground. Kuranai angered by her lover's death lunged at the killer only to be caught by it. The murderer grabbed her throat and started to crush it. Kuranai struggled to break free but she finally stopped moving. The figure dropped her lifeless body to the ground and jumped into the air and dropped right on top of her body. The force of the fall punctured through the corpse and left two foot-sized holes on her back. Naruto watched in horror as everyone tried to kill this monster. Kiba and Akamaru rushed at the creature, but they were cut in half before they even reached it. Vibration blades? But how? Asked Naruto, but no one answered it was like nobody could hear him. Then Shino used his bugs to attack the creature, but it dashed straight to him. Shino had no time to react as the killer grabbed him and threw him into a flaming ally nearby. Shino screamed in agony as the flames consumed him and his remaining bugs inside his body. Then this monster turned its head and looked at Ino and pointed right at her. Ino was shaking in fear as the monster walked towards her. Before it reached her Shikamaru caught him in his shadow possession jutsu, but it didn't stop the creature as he moved his left hand toward Ino. This caused Shikamaru to move his left arm as well. Suddenly a dark orb appeared from its hand. The murderous entity shot the orb as Ino, it moved so fast she didn't have time to dodge. The orb went right through her chest leaving a clean hole behind. Ino was coughing blood and finally fell to the ground. Then the monster did the same thing to Shikamaru and he too fell to the ground dead. Naruto was certain that this creature was Risko. He was the only one with this kind of killer instinct. Naruto tried to run to his surviving friends to save them but he couldn't move, it was like something was holding him back. He turned to see who it was and saw Risko holding him. What the? said the confused berserker. Then he heard someone yell and turned to see Choji get cut in half by the waist down. He saw Lee try his Konoha Senpu, but the mystery berserker caught his leg and swung Lee right into a wall. The poor boy's body took the impact and survived but the berserker swung him again into the ground and then the wall again. Lee was barely holding on by a thread, then Guy ran to save his student only to have the berserker throw Lee to him and fired another black orb at them. The orb went toward Guy's head and pierced right through Lee and then Guy. Neji and Tenten tried to attack the berserker, but it moved too fast for them to keep up with. Then Tenten's body split vertically in half and Neji's head was sliced from eyes up. Both bodies fell to the ground simultaneously. Then Kakashi rushed towards the killer with his Chidori but the berserker caught his right hand and twisted his arm breaking it off. Kakashi screamed in agony but it ended when the berserker ripped his jaw off and then snapped his neck. The murderous berserker turned to see the remaining members of its would-be opponents and smirked. It walked towards them. Sasuke lunged at the berserker throwing Kanai and Shuriken at it only for the berserker to ram its fist into his forehead and rip his brain out. Blood and bits of Sasuke's brain flew everywhere frightening Sakura and Hanada. The berserker walked towards the girls with the intent to do the same or worse to them. Sakura couldn't stand it anymore so she ran off leaving Hanada to defend herself. The berserker saw this and cut Sakura off from escaping. He grabbed Sakura's head and yanked it off her body with one pull. Sakura's spine was also ripped along with her head. The berserker then started walking toward Hanada. Hanada didn't move an inch, she too terrified of this berserker. As it reached her it stopped in front of her. Why? Why are you doing this Naruto-kun? Asked the Hyuga heiress. That one question shocked Naruto to the very core of his body. He turned away from Risko and looked at the berserker. He couldn't make out the details but he saw the face and indeed it was his face. This berserker Naruto's face was the same only this Naruto has a crystal with three spikes and a fox like smirk only a fox demon would have. No it can't be that's me, said the shocked Naruto. Then he heard the other Naruto to speak. Because it felt so good, said the other Naruto. His voice had an animal like sound to it as he spoke. Now the real question is this. What am I going to do to you Hanada chan? Teased the evil Naruto looking at her in a way that make even Risko feel uncomfortable. Please don't Naruto-kun, I.L., begged Hanada but the berserker Naruto grabbed her by her jacket. He lifted her up and brought her close to him. I know what you're going to say, but I prefer that we do it like this, yelled the evil Naruto as he ripped her clothes off her body. No, stop, 
yelled Naruto as everything started to fade. Stop! yelled Naruto as he shot out of the hospital bed he was on. His shout woke up everyone who was in the room. In the room was Kin who fell off the couch after hearing Naruto shout, and strange looking old man, Kuranai, a bandaged up Kiba and Akamaru, and a slightly startled Shino if that is even possible. The last person in the room was the still injured Hanada who had woken up before Naruto even yelled. Naruto saw Hanada look at him and he got out of the bed and ran out of the room. N. Naruto kun wait, said the wounded Hanada as she tried to get out of bed only to be stopped by Kurenai. As Naruto ran out of the hospital he didn't notice that he bumped into Uruka until Uruka grabbed him. Naruto. What are you doing running in the hospital when you should be in bed recovering? Asked Naruto's former sensei. Instead of answering Naruto just wrapped his arms around Uruka's waist as he started to cry. For Uruka this was big surprise. This is the first time he has seen Naruto cry in so long. He can remember the first time he saw Naruto cry. It was during a kanai throwing lesson, Naruto got himself stabbed by his own kanai when it ricocheted from the target and hit his shoulder. The rest of the students stood in shock, fear, and in a few cases amusement. The instructor was trying not to laugh, but was failing. Then Aruka came with a first aid kit and treated Naruto. After Naruto was treated he and Aruka grew very close after that incident. The two of them formed a bond that was like that of a bond between father and son. It's okay Naruto, you tell me what's wrong, said Aruka trying to calm the boy down. Sadly it wasn't working this time. No Aruka sensei I can't, muttered the upset blonde. Why not Naruto? Asked Aruka. I, I just can't, yelled Naruto as he let go of Aruka and continued to run out of the hospital. Naruto. Wait. Come back, called out Aruka watching the boy run. Just as he was about to chase after him Kin ran right by to catch up with Naruto. Meanwhile at another side of the village two certain foreigners were causing quite a disturbance. They were arguing once again over another strange incident or more. This time they caught the original Ino Shika Cho team. The three fathers were at a restaurant when the two entered very loudly. There is no way in hell am I going to get into a some crazy ass scheme to get some cash if I could just swipe some from some chump Ryoga, said Jigoku as he entered the restaurant. Oh come on Jigoku, it's not like I'm talking you into this, said Ryoga as he entered. Bullshit. You have talked me into crap like this, yelled the cat-eyed menace shocking a lot of people. Oh yeah, well name M, said Ryoga. You talked me into wearing a sumo wrestler's outfit. You talked me into steal from that Barnet's FA, Jigoku started. It's Bar Mitzvah, corrected Ryoga. You talked me into selling my kidney, Jigoku continued ignoring his friend and everyone's reaction to him. You talked me into gluing myself to that train when we were at the Western Continent. Remember that? he asked. Oh yeah, you ran pretty fast, answered Ryoga trying to suppress a chuckle. I had two, you son of a snapped Jigoku. Once again people could not help but look and listen to these two young men's strange conversation. For the three older men these two were unlike any other pair they've ever seen. The one in dreads called Jigoku was loud almost like Naruto and very rude with his vulgar language. The one called Ryoga on the other hand appears to be more calm and could apparently trick his friend into doing odd things. Their observation of them was cut short when Jigoku grabbed Shikato's sake drink. That was my drink, kid, complained Shikato without putting a lot of effort. And I care why. Countered Jigoku as he took a gulp of the sake. Then he belched and a small flame appeared from his mouth. Well I'm set let's get going Ryoga, he added as he started to leave. Not until you hear about the stuff I need you to get. I need you to get me some gallons of water, a hot tub, some cheerleaders, and meet me at that mountain with those faces. Come on, Torchy, said Ryoga as he left. I don't know why I'm calling all these weird names or why they're fire related but oh well, muttered Ryoga. What the, Ryoga? Come on man. Where am I going to get a hot tub and gallons of water? And how am I going to carry that all the up a mountain? Ryoga. I don't want to be in a hot tub with cheerleaders, wait a minute. Yes I do, Ryoga. Ah god damn it, yelled Jigoku as he followed his friend. Meanwhile deep under the Konoha village, Risko can be found lying down on examination bed. The reason for this examination is to find out about his strange pause from his battle with Naruto. He was being scanned by a cat scan, where they get the cat scan will most likely be a mystery. Well Risko-san we are unable to find the problem, 
but if I had to guess it could be a side effect from when we recovered you from your frozen encasement, said a doctor with a black blood drop on the back. I see so this is only temporary then? asked Risco as he got out off the bed. Why should it matter Risco? You had your shot now it's my turn, said a Y muscular man in standard shinobi gear. What makes you think you will succeed Zurus? challenged Risco. Because unlike you or those weak blood warriors, I am a hyper blood, my powers are beyond the boy's level, boasted Zurus. That's enough, yelled Rio as he entered the area. As he entered he had a grim face. We cannot afford to have another mishap. As you both know Uzumaki Naruto is the third and final berserker, but more importantly he is the second first generation as well, he added. Yes sir, but why must we focus all of our time on him? He's just a kid, questioned Zurus. I never said we were focusing on him only. We've had blood warriors track down the second berserker, but he has proven to be far too dangerous and unpredictable than any foe we've have ever faced, answered Ryo. Well then sir let me face the second one and I'll bring him here to you, said Risco. No you have already failed me, besides you are the only berserker we have. That makes you a trump card, said Ryo. Zurus, you will track down the Uzumaki boy tomorrow and don't you fail me, he ordered. Yes sir, replied Zurus as he left. Back with Naruto, he finally stopped running when he reached the training ground where he became a genin. He was an ironic sense sitting on top of the same post he was tied to. Anyway he sat there thinking about his nightmare and about what he is. It's still hard for him to believe that he is now fighting someone who could be a relative of his. Then without even looking he called out Kin who was hiding again. You can come out now I know you're there, said Naruto. How did you know I was here? Asked Kin as she moved away from her hiding spot. I sensed your chakra signature for quite some time. You're in that old guise, answered Naruto. After Naruto said that the weird looking kabuki old man revealed himself. He introduced himself as Jiraiya of the legendary Sanin and sadly his trade of being the author of Ichi Ichi Paradise. After the introduction Naruto tried to leave only to be halted by the old man. You know kid you still owe me for saving you two from that were creature, said Jiraiya. That caught Naruto's interest easily and for Kin that was one person she wants to forget about. What do you mean you saved us from Risko? demanded Naruto as he dashed in front of Jiraiya. For Kin this was just getting crazier and crazier by the minute. First she follows Naruto since Dosu wants to know if Orochimaru placed the curse mark on him as well. Then she was indirectly attacked by a tentacle freak, had to run and leap great distances to reach her target and see Risko freeze up. All in all things were way too interesting to get out of even if it's not her problem. The next day Naruto can found in his apartment sleeping throughout the morning. He would be sleeping peacefully if it weren't for two things. One Sakura was banging at his door and two his sides were killing him. What Naruto doesn't know is that his sides are growing four bone like spike much like Risko's. Anyway Sakura continues on pounding on Naruto's door, Naruto slowly got out of bed. He was very irritated with the noise, he went to open the door only to get hit in the head after he opened it. Ow! What the hell? yelled Naruto holding his head. Baka! There's no time for this you need to listen, said Sakura. Fine just make it quick, said an aggravated Naruto. What is with you? You've been acting weirder than usual, commented Sakura. Well let's see I'm pissed at that bastard Neji for nearly killing Hanada-chan. I've fought two guys who've tried to kill me and I've also been hit on the head by you. How would you feel, said Naruto in a sarcastic tone. Well anyway listen Sasuke hasn't been seen and, started Sakura. From there Naruto tuned Sakura out only hearing her say that his match is first and that his opponents is Shino. This put a damper in Naruto because he doesn't get to fight Neji first. Still all it does is give time to train since he still has a month before the finals. After Sakura left Naruto decided to go train somewhere he trained with his berserker bloodline. Sadly that was not the case, because he winds up getting some unwanted guest. The set of guests are root members ordered by Danzo to observe Naruto and to eliminate him if they feel that they should. Another is Kin who decided to meet up with Naruto to discuss about what he is up against and if they should keep this a secret. The last one is Zurus with two other blood warriors with him. When Naruto reached the area he wanted to train at he saw Kin. After their first meeting the two of them got along pretty well despite the insanity of the battles they've encountered. They quickly became good friends though they have never talked about each other's village. Hey Kin, so what's final verdict? asked Naruto as he reached her. Well, 
I think it's best that we let your Hokage know about these guys that are after you, answered Kin in a serious tone. Are you crazy? This isn't some simple invasion from some other village. These guys are attacking me from inside my hometown. There is no way we can get Hokage Gigi involved, explained Naruto. Are you listening to yourself? This is a life or death situation. These people will hunt you down and will continue unless we can get some help, argued Kin. Okay I get, you don't have to bite my head off, said the verbally defeated Naruto. Too bad you both won't be able to do just that, said a mysterious voice. The two turned toward the source of the voice, they saw two men stand in front of them. They started to change their forms into something similar to Reimo, but their bodies were more ape-like. The two blood warriors charged at the two genin. As that happened Naruto jumped forward and stomped on one's head. The amount of force Naruto applied was enough to smash into that blood warrior's brain. After Naruto landed behind his downed opponent he turned around and summoned a chakra blade and ran to the other one. The other blood warrior turned to charge at Naruto, but as he ran to the boy Naruto cut him horizontally in half. After defeating the two mutants Naruto walked toward Kin with a bore expression on his face. What's wrong? Things becoming too easy now? Asked the sound Kunoichi. Instead of answering Kin, Naruto leapt toward her, grabbed her by the waist and leapt out of the way before some sort or red liquid hit them. When the liquid hit the ground, the ground started dissolving. The two looked for the source and saw another blood warrior. This one was huge, his shoulders were large with spikes on them. His forearms were bulgy and had two gems like orbs on them. His body was very thick, the kind of thick that could walk away from being hit by a tank if any existed in Naruto's world. Damn. This looks a lot tougher than the others have fought, though Naruto as he set Kin down and rushed the blood warrior. Naruto threw a punch at the blood warrior but it had no affect on him. Wasting no time the new opponent swung his right arm, slugging Naruto away from him. This surprised the root members since they just saw Naruto kill two of these freaks easily, and now he is getting beaten by this one. Naruto got up, leapt into the air and started spinning to drop an axe kick on top of this blood warrior's head. But his attack was caught by his enemy and he was thrown across the area. I actually thought you were stronger than this berserker. You can't beat me, I am the hyperblood Zurus, boasted Zurus. Hyperblood? I've never would have though that there were different types of these things, whispered Kin watching from the sides. Soon enough the fight that was once head to head turned into a hit and run. Sadly the hit and run is not one of Naruto's strong suits. Every quick attack did had no affect on Zurus. Naruto tried to use his chakra blade, but he was caught by Zerus's left hook and spun around and was grabbed of behind. Ha ha ha. I can't believe that the Konoha branch couldn't beat a weakling like you. It's pathetic, taunted Zerus as he threw Naruto to the ground. Kin was about to jump in regardless of knowing she wouldn't stand a snowball's chance in hell. Oddly thought the root members jumped in to stop the assault. Sadly for them Zerus wasn't done playing with his prey. That's enough you. Leave that empty vessel alone now, ordered one of the roots. Why should I? asked Zerus not really caring. Because you are trespassing on our village and therefore you should ah. Started the poor fool before Zerus shot out the same red liquid from his tongue. The liquid quickly dissolved the root member. The second member was scared shitless. He turned away and ran, but he wasn't quick enough. Despite Naruto and Kin's pleas for Zerus to stop the other root member was also dissolved. He screamed in agony as his body dissolved by the liquid. You, you son of a, yelled Naruto as he got up and charged at Zerus and delivered a roundhouse kick to his side. The attack did nothing, then Zerus slugged Naruto into a tree. Damn it, none of my attack work. If only I can pierce through his thick body, said Naruto struggling to get up. As he got up he felt the gravity around him get lighter. What the, is this a new power from my bloodline? questioned Naruto as his arms automatically moved to his waist. From between his hands the black orb from his nightmare appeared. Naruto can feel the power from within the orb and knew that this will do the job. Kin watched in amazement at this new move that Naruto discovered. What the hell is that? asked Zerus feeling a little worried. Wasting no time Zerus moved his arms forward and his gems started to glow. Take this punk, he yelled as beams of energy fired from his gems. As the beams reached Naruto, the black orb was shot at Zerus. The beams hit the orb, but they were deflected from the orb and hit the ground. 
The orb was flying towards Zerus who moved to get away from it, but the black orb pierced his left shoulder easily. Zerus yelled in pain from the wound. What the hell? It's like Naruto fired some sort of ball of air pressure or something, commented Kin in surprise. Does his bloodline even have any limits? She asked herself. Why you little? Started Zerus. Enough. Retreat now Zerus. Huh. Ryo Sama. But why I can still take him? Whined Zerus. You were just hit by a gravity weapon. If you continue to fight you will be defeated so return now. Yes sir said Zurus as he jumped away from Naruto and disappeared into the forest. After Zurus left Kin walked up to Naruto, she could tell that he was both tired and upset. Still think we should tell Hokage Gigi about this? Asked Naruto in a dark tone. Two days after Naruto's battle with Zurus, Naruto has been trying to focus on his training. Too bad for him Kakashi was too busy teaching Sasuke and Kin's idea of letting Jiraiya teach him was not something he was looking forward to. The ones he wants to train him happen to be his so-called brothers, Jigoku and Ryoga. What Naruto doesn't know is that they are in the village doing hell knows what. So instead for now he and Kin are debating on a very important matter, lunch. I'm telling you Naruto. Ramen every day is not healthy for anyone, especially a growing shinobi who is competing in the finals, argued Kin. So what? At least it tastes better than that rotten sushi bar, countered Naruto. What did you just say? asked Kin with a growing killing intent. Oh shit, thought Naruto as he ran for his life. Get back here, Naruto, yelled Kin as she gave chase. Kin chased Naruto almost all over the village, by noon the stopped and agreed on eating at the Korean barbecue restaurant. The ate with little argument or much conversation either. Unknown to either of them, Naruto will be facing another challenge. Hey Kin, do you know who else is in the finals? asked Naruto. Well let's there's you, Dosu, but I haven't seen or hear from him, your opponent Shino, that lazy ass Shikamaru, those San Nin, your teammate Sasuke, and Neji. Why do you ask? Answered Kin then ask. So that asshole is still in the exam. Great because I want to tear him apart, said Naruto as his answer. Yeah well have you heard about what happened to that Lee guy? Asked Kin. Know what happened? Asked Naruto sounding a little worried. I've heard that he got totally thrashed by that Gara from Sand, explained Kin continuing to eat. Damn, I hope he'll be fine. Still the finals are less than a month away and I haven't gotten any training done, whined the blonde. Well why don't you ask your sensei to train you? Asked the older Genin. Hell no that perv is more interested in training Sasuke to even train Sakura, responded Naruto. How about Jiraiya-sama? Kin mentioned. I already have one pervert who barely teaches. Why do I want another? Commented the young berserker. Well who do you want to teach you? Asked the sound nin. Well I wish Aniki and Nissan were here they did great training me, answered Naruto. Before Kin could even ask who he was talking about a man in plain clothes appeared before them. I'm sorry, but I believe you'll have to cancel any plans on training, said the man. Just who the hell are you? Demanded Kin. Shit. Another Keke Cage Blood Warrior, said Naruto getting off his seat. Yes I am, and I would like for you to come with me. Also don't try to fight me here unless you want these people to be caught in the crossfire. I hate letting people suffer meaninglessly, said the Blood Warrior. How noble, mocked Kin. You think you people can just come here telling me what to do and expect me to obey like I have no choice, started Naruto. Uh, Naruto I hope you're doing what I think you're doing, asked Kin backing away. I'm sick and tired of you people constantly trying to capture me. This time I'm not going to back down, yelled Naruto as a sudden burst of red orange chakra engulfed him. Oh shit, yelled Kin getting away from the chakra. Everyone in the restaurant watched the flash of chakra and just as soon as it appeared Naruto and Kin were gone. The blood warrior just stood there looking at the hole in the window. It was cut in a perfect clean circle. I say one thing about him. The kid defiantly knows how to make a decisive choice. My Uzik, I've gotten his chakra signature. Trace it, locate it, and wait for me, said the man to nobody as he walked out. Meanwhile, about five buildings away Naruto leapt from one building to the seventh one after the first. He was carrying Kin as he did this. To any who could look, it seems like Kin was about ready to puke. The trip finally came to a halt as soon as they reached the unabandoned part of the village. I think that'll put enough distance between him and us, said Naruto. 
Yeah. But what the hell were you thinking? You can't just use your bloodline like that in front of so many people, yelled Kin. Would you do any different? Asked Naruto. No I guess I wouldn't, but that was still reckless, answered Kin. Yeah, sorry, it's just, huh? Started Naruto until he noticed something. What is it? Asked Kin. The air, it's vibrating, answered the young berserker. Just as soon as he said that a transparent orb was heading towards the two genin. They managed to dodge the orb in time only to see a crater on the ground they were at. Suddenly Naruto saw the man from before standing in front of them. Before he could react, he was hit by another orb. Naruto. Behind you. Yelled Kin moving away from the battlefield. Damn it, I hate being useless in this stuff, she thought. Behind Naruto was another man in plain clothing. Much like the other he was average looking. The only difference was that this one has a sadistic smirk on his face. The first man was first to speak to Naruto. You may have been able to beat Zurus, but we're not like Zurus, started the first man. That's right kid. This is a whole new ball game, finished the second as he and the first one started to mutate. Their bodies grew and expanded much like the other blood warriors. Their shoulders expanded in a similar manner as Vikor's, only more flatter. They grew horns on top of their heads as well. I'm the hyperblood Myuzik, yelled the second man. And I'm the hyperblood Noyes, yelled the first blood warrior. See you in hell kid, shouted Myuzik as his shoulders started vibrating and created two transparent orbs. Myuzik fired the orbs at Naruto who managed to dodge the attacks. Suddenly he was hit in back again, this time by Noyes as he generated two more orbs. The two hyperbloods continued their assault on Naruto while all he could do is run and dodge. The attacks were becoming more frequent from Myuzik who seems to be enjoying himself as he continued his attack. The attack became so intense that the area was covered in dust. It was so thick no one could see anything. Using this to his advantage, Naruto grabbed Kin and got them out of the area before the dust cleared. After the dust cleared all that was left was a demolished abandoned area, a confused Myuzik, and a pissed Noyes. They got away. Way to go Myuzik, we just lost the target. You need to learn to control yourself, said Noyes. Oh shut up. All I did was turn a boring mission into a fun game. Ha ha ha. Argued Myuzik as he leapt into the air. That moron. In theory we are capable of crushing anything with our sonic blasters. How did that brat survive our attack? Questioned Noyes as he followed his teammate. Meanwhile, inside an abandoned warehouse Naruto and Kin were discussing on a battle strategy. A sound wave attack. Asked Naruto. Yeah, it's similar to Zaku's but it's more advanced. Still it should have the same flaw as Zaku's, answered Kin as she started to draw a diagram on the ground. You if my theory is correct then their attack can only travel in a straight path. Also they should also have a delay just before they fire. Probably two or three seconds, she explained. Do you think you can beat them with small window of opportunity? She asked. Before Naruto could answer Myuzik can be seen charging towards them. His sonic blasters were charging up for another sound attack. Well I guess we'll find out, commented Naruto as he ran off to face Myuzik. Myuzik fired his sonic blasters at Naruto, but the attack was dodged easily. Then Naruto gathered the gravity around him to form the black orb he dubbed, Pressure Shot. He fired the pressure shot over Myuzik's head hitting a support beam of the warehouse. Myuzik thought Naruto missed completely. What the hell were you shooting at? Your aim s, taunted Myuzik. That's what you think, countered Naruto. After Naruto said that the second floor was collapsing on top of Myuzik. What? yelled Myuzik as debris was falling above him. Now's my chance, yelled Naruto as ran toward Myuzik with his chakra blades formed. Not so fast, shouted Myuzik as he fired another sonic blaster only for his attack to be blocked by the debris. Shit, he yelled. When Naruto got close enough he sliced off Myuzik's left arm off. Blood was spraying from the wound as Maiwik screamed in pain. His scream was loud enough that it attracted the attention of three young Kunoichi who were ironically walking to the same abandoned warehouse. Hey did hear that? Asked Ino. Yeah, what do think was? Asked Sakura. Anyo, maybe we should, go find out. Someone could be hurt, stuttered Hanada who just got out of the hospital. As the three leaf Kunoichi head towards the source of the scream Naruto stood ready for the next attack. Myuzik was not a happy hyper blood after losing his arm. 
Just above Myuzik stood Noyes and he was just as pissed. Well brat. Looks like we'll have kick it up a notch. Myuzik. Said Noyes as his horns started to glow. After hearing his teammate Myuzik's horns were glowing as well. Suddenly a large flash of white light appeared and Naruto stood in the middle of it. In that light Naruto couldn't hear a thing. It was like the sound in that light was ed out. This is not a good thing for Naruto since his opponents are using sound attacks. As Naruto stood there he was being hit by their sonic blasters repeatedly. As you can see kid, sound is comprised of vibrations in the airwaves. Namely the frequencies, our horns can locate these frequencies and create the same types of frequencies and cancel out the sound in a field of a 3 mile radius, explained Noyes. Do you see now kid, humans first sense danger by sound. With our horns we can get rid of the sound making you vulnerable. So in other words you can't fight what you can't hear, simplified Myuzik. As Naruto was being pounded by the sound attacks, Hanada, Ino, and Sakura arrived and saw Kin watching the battle. You. What are you doing here? Demanded Sakura remembering Kin from the forest of death. Huh. What now? Asked Kin as turned to see the three girls. Oh crap, we don't need this now, she thought while glancing at the battlefield. As Kin was being interrogated by the resident pink-haired freak, Naruto was having a painful experience. The sound assault was beating him almost into a pulp and it was deafening his hearing. The assault was too much for him, but suddenly Naruto opened his mouth and a deep low roar was emitted from his mouth. The roar started to raise in pitch and then it engulfed the white lighted area and returned to normal. Impossible. He negated my audio eraser, muttered Noyes in shock. As for Myuzik, he kept on attacking. Cut it out Myuzik were at a disadvantage here, ordered Noyes. Shut up, I don't care I'm going to kill the little bastard for cutting my arm. Yelled Myuzik, as he kept firing, Naruto moved his head to Myuzik's direction and fired another roar at him. The roar reached Myuzik and his head was starting to crack. Finally Myuzik's head shattered and he dropped dead. Myuzik. Yelled Noyes as his right arm was destroyed by Naruto's own sound attack. He managed to get away from Naruto to report his failure. Ryo sama I have failed you. Myuzik is, Noiz said mentally. That is not important, listen carefully. There are four girls west from your position. Capture the one with white eyes. A Hyuga? Yes sir, respond Noiz as he leaped towards the unsuspecting girls. Meanwhile back with Kin she was having a hard time getting the three leaf Kunoichi to leave. I'm telling you three have to get out of here now yelled Kin. No way, not until you tell us what you're doing here, demanded Sakura. Yeah, just what do you and your buddies want with Sasuke-kun, added Ino. I don't give a damn about your precious Uchiha. What I'm worried about is getting you three out of here right now, shouted Kin getting frustrated. Anyo, dot why? asked Hanada. The Hyuga heiress got her answer when Noyes appeared behind them. He was towering above them even with his injury. He was wheezing in pain from loosing his arm. He stood there for a few more seconds then he coughed up blood. His blood splashed onto all four girls' faces. The shock of seeing Noyes and having his blood on them was too much, so Sakura, Ino, and Hanada did what any girl their age and position would do. They screamed, and as they screamed Noyes grabbed Hanada and leapt away while Kin shouted at him demanding that let Hanada go. As she yelled Naruto appeared in front of the rest of the girls. Kin what's wrong? Asked Naruto surprising Sakura and Ino. Noyes kidnapped one of these girls, answered Kin. Who? He asked fearing for who it is. A girl with white eyes, respond Kin looking at Noyes's path. What? He took Hanada-chan, yelled Naruto as he gave chase. The two enhanced warriors leapt across the village with Naruto catching up with Noyes. The chase was long and tiring for a normal person or shinobi. Finally Noyes lost Naruto and landed at near a dark alley. He dropped Hanada onto the ground where she fell unconscious. Ryo sama I've captured the Hyuga as you ordered. Please send back up immediately sir, thought Noyes unaware of two dark figures approaching him. Suddenly one of the figures rammed his right hand into his back. Ga, groaned Noyes as he turned his head to see his attacker. N, no, you're, dot not, suppose, to, be, here, he groaned out. I don't know what's going on, but I doubt that little girl wants anything to do with you, said the dark figure as he ripped Noyes's spine out. Two minutes later Naruto appeared. Hanada-chan. 
yelled Naruto as he landed and saw Noyes's remains dissolve. Noyes? Naruto. Did you find her? asked Kin as she, Sakura, and Ino finally caught up with him. No, I haven't, huh? started Naruto as he saw two dark figure come close to them. When they reached a lit section, Naruto was beyond happy to see who they are along with Hanada. Aniki. Nissan. He yelled, running towards his brothers. Hey, Runt, what's up? said Jigoku, carrying an unconscious Hanada. Hanada chan! yelled the young berserker, picking up the pace. Don't worry, Naruto. Your girlfriend's fine, said Ryoga. This caused Naruto to blush a little. She's not my girlfriend, Nissan, argued Naruto. Hey, I thought I was the one who messes with him, Fangles, teased Jigoku, handing Hanada to Naruto. Well, see ya, runt, he added, turning around to leave. Matt, Aniki, Nissan, shouted Naruto, surprisingly not startling Hanada. I need help, he added. What do you mean, runt? asked Jigoku. I need help to prepare for the Chunin exam finals tats less than a month away and to confine to sensei that would teach me, said Naruto in a ridiculously fast pace. Huh, respond Jigoku and Ryoga, I need help to prepare for the Chunin exam finals tats less than a month away and to confine to sensei that would teach me, said Naruto again. Put spaces between you words, said Ryoga somewhat irritated. I need help to prepare for the Chunin exam finals that's less than a month away and I can't find a sensei that would teach me, said Naruto slowly this time. Sure, we got nothing better to do. Be ready tomorrow at a ridiculously early time, said Jigoku. What time is that? You're never up early, questioned Ryoga. One in the afternoon, answered Jigoku. This caused three of the four girls to trip on themselves, Naruto to look at Jigoku like he grew two more heads, and Ryoga to yell. Why didn't I see that coming? yelled Ryoga. The next day, in an abandoned training area inside the Konoha village, four figures can be seen training. One of them is Naruto dodging huge boulders that are suspended by ropes swinging on the trees. The figure watching him happens to be Jigoku who is swinging the boulders. Off to the side Ryoga and Kin were watching. Well Kin was. Ryoga was meditating. Naruto was dodging the boulders left and right until he was hit by one in the back. Naruto fell to the ground holding his head in pain. Oh for. Runt how hard is it to pay attention with your ears? Asked Jigoku. It's really hard Aniki. I've never done this kind of stuff, answered Naruto. Then what the have your teachers been teaching you kids? asked Jigoku. Well nothing really. Aruka sensei was the only one who would teach me, said the blonde. Oh. Well then we got a lot of shit to cover to get you ready to beat the living shit out of that Hyuga prick, said Jigoku as he was putting on a radiation suit. Jigoku. Where did you acquire that suit? asked Ryoga. Meanwhile, in another part of the world, a poor lab researcher in a nuclear power plant was suffering from high concentrations of nuclear radiation. The good news is that he was rushed into the decontamination room. The bad news is he needed a chemical bath. It was not a pretty sight. Hell if I know, answered Jigoku, putting the suit completely on. Sadly, he did not notice that three bees flew into his suit. As for Naruto, he wasn't listening, instead, his mind was on yesterday after he, Jigoku, Ryoga, and Kin brought Hanada back to the hospital. When they brought her in Kurenai, Hiyashi Hanada's father and Neji were there. Flashback as Naruto set Hanada down on the hospital bed, he could hear Kurenai and Hiyashi argue over Hanada. Jigoku and Ryoga went to get some drinks and Kin followed along. Just as Naruto watched Hanada, Neji came in. So, she's still alive. What a shame, said Neji with a smug look on his face. Before he knew it, he was hit in the face so hard he flew to the wall. You miserable son of a! yelled Naruto as he lunged toward Neji. Before he reached him, Ryoga came and grabbed him by his arm. Naruto! What is with you? yelled Ryoga, trying to hold the boy down. He's the asshole who nearly killed Hanada Chan in the exams, shouted Naruto, struggling to break his brother's grip. Dude, that's Ed up, commented Jigoku as he and Kin entered. So what? She is nothing but a weakling like him, said Neji as he recovered. Indeed, my first daughter is very weak. To be beaten by a branch member is an embarrassment to the Hyuga clan, said Hiyashi from behind Jigoku. But Hiyashi sama started Kurenai, but she was interrupted by Jigoku. Really then, so how about a little bet? asked Jigoku. Why should I agree to a bet and what are the wagers? asked Hiyashi. Simple. 
I would like to prove that a complete total loser with no talent whatsoever can beat the living ing shit out of a clan prodigy, answered Jigoku not knowing that he also insulted Naruto and Hanada or he didn't care about how he said it. Interesting, and the stakes? said Hiyashi. Oh that, well how about this? If my runt wipes the floor with your son, started Jigoku. Nephew, corrected Kurenai. Right. What did I say? commented Jigoku. Kurenai was about to tell him, but Jigoku continued. Anyway if the runt wins, he and your daughter can socialize together in public, you acknowledge that even wimps can become champs, and if they want to they can date each other. After hearing that Hanada who woke up to see Naruto being held back by a older guy in a Chinese shirt, she also heard the bet between her father and the strange man in dreads. When she heard the words he who she figured was Naruto, daughter aka her and date each other she let out a small squeak. Outside she was blushing badly, but on the inside she was happy beyond belief until her father asked for his wager. And if my nephew wins? asked Hiyashi. If the runt does lose, which I doubt, then when Ryoga and I leave he comes with us, answered Jigoku. This surprised everyone in the room. Why would you do that? asked Kurenai wanting to understand this young man's logic. You should know, answered Jigoku with a pissed tone. This scared her big time, since Kakashi described Jigoku to her, Asuma, and Guy in full detail. He has been treated like shit, has been ignored like he never existed and what's worse I hear people have actually tried to kill him and some raped him and some women who did that would say he was the one who did it, he continued. This got shocked looks from Hanada and Kin. They couldn't believe how horrible Naruto's life was. The way I see it taking him away from here and back to either Ryoga's village, the Fang K or mine, the Akuma Ryu would be better for him, he finished. End of flashback, runt. Snap out of IT, yelled Jigoku as he tossed him a pair of ox-tailed dao. Naruto caught the swords and looked at Jigoku in confusion. Aniki, what do you want me to do with these? asked Naruto fearing the answer. He remembered when Jigoku taught how to use the dao and he found them surprisingly easy. You'll see, said Jigoku as he walked toward a bee's nest with a sludge hammer. For this lesson I want you to dodge these bees and strike them with your dao. Since your first opponent uses bugs I figured this would work as training, he added as he got ready to strike the nest. Ah uh, Jigoku? Are you sure this is safe? Asked Ryoga as he and Kin hid behind a large tree. Of course it's safe. I'm the one in the radiation suit and you three are the unfortunate victims, answered Jigoku as he struck the nest. In an instant the bees left the nest and went straight to Naruto. Wasting no time Naruto ran for his life swinging the swords like they were fly swatters. Whatever Jigoku taught him about using broad swords was lost. The bees ironically dodged Naruto's attacks and struck him instead of the other way around. Jigoku was not happy in the slightest. No. Runt. I said dodge and strike. Dodge and strike, yelled Jigoku. Then he saw a bee in his suit's visor. What the, he said and two more appeared. Oh. This won't end well, he said as three seconds pass. Then he started screaming and was moving around frantically. He was moving like he was dancing around on fire. Get away from me you six-legged winged spawns of Satan, he shouted as he rammed himself to a tree. Die devil flies, he added as he jumped into a river with the suit still on. Meanwhile Naruto was still swinging his swords and running like a decapitated chicken. Hidden up in some trees Kurenai and Asuma were watching the event unfold. To them they feel that Kakashi might have meant the other young man after seeing that little display. At the same time Sakura and Inohu were curious about Naruto's training and his apparent relationship with Kin and saw the same scene and tried hard not to laugh, but failed. After the bees were done with Naruto, Jigoku climbed out of the river without the suit. I have two things to say. One, who put that waterfall there? And note to self never do that again, he said as he dropped to the ground. What the hell just happened? Asked Kin coming out from behind her hiding spot. Those bees must be tougher that Jigoku thought, said Ryoga coming out of the same hiding spot. You go to hell ryoga. You go to hell and you die. Yelled Jigoku as he gave his best friend the finger. This was pretty much the start of Naruto's hellish training session. After the bee incident, they switched to a sparing match between Naruto and Jigoku. They fought with bladed weapons, Naruto with the ox tail dao and Jigoku with his spears. The two berserkers fought with great skill, it was like watching two samurai testing each other's skills. Their attacks were carefully measured, 
Naruto moved with finesse that could put all Kunoichi to shame. His movements revolved around a dancer's rhythm. As for Jigoku his movements were more scattered. He moved almost like he was break dancing rather than actually fighting like other fighters. What type of taijutsu is that? Thought Asuma as he and Kurinai watched. As for Kin, she saw Ryoga sit cross-legged with his hand on his knees. Before she could say anything she saw an ice blue aura appear around him. She turned to see if Jigoku and Naruto were watching, but they were still sparing. She looked at Ryoga as he moved his arms to his mouth as the aura formed a ball and put into his mouth and swallow the aura. Suddenly a flash of light appear around him. Then Ryoga stood up and started to grab his sword and join in on Naruto's training. Matt. Ryoga-san. Yelled Kin getting Ryoga's attention. Yes what is it Kin? Asked Ryoga as he looked at her. Ryoga-san just what did you do with that weird ball of chakra? She asked. Ball of chakra. Said Ryoga looking confused. Yeah. And then this big flash of light appeared and boom you just got up. Explained Kin moving her around like Naruto would to prove a point. I know this may sound stupid but I know what I saw, she said after trying to explain what she saw. No way, this girl, five years my junior saw my key when even adults twice my age couldn't. Wait a minute didn't see Fudao say that was how I became his apprentice. I remember him saying that he never chose me but that I chose him because I could see his key. So I guess I've found my own student. Thought Ryoga. He turned to Jigoku's general direction. Hey Jigoku. I'm going to take Kin somewhere else for a bit. Called out Ryoga. Whoa dude, I didn't know you were into younger girls, joked Jigoku. That's not what I meant you combat happy lunatic, yelled Ryoga. After Ryoga's outburst he and Kin left, Jigoku and Naruto continued their training. Only this time at a much faster pace. Meanwhile Ryoga started to give Kin an explanation about what she saw. It was hard to believe that a person's own aura is able to determine their element as well. After the explanation Ryoga told Kin to get into a stance that had her holding her arms out slightly bent. Her legs a shoulder width apart and standing on the balls of her feet also bent slightly. Very good Kin. Now remember to breathe normally. In through the nose and out via the mouth. This stance is to bring out your focus despite the condition, said Ryoga. All I'm doing is standing, but it's really hard, mentioned Kin. Usually you have to stay in that stance for 30 to 50 minutes, said Ryoga. That long. Whined Kin. After hearing that response Ryoga chuckled. Well then how about I show you a simpler stance, said Ryoga as he got into a different stance. This stance had him standing forward with his knees bent and his arms spread out. Now in this one you start to move your arms in a circle. The left arm going counterclockwise and the right arm going clockwise, he said as he performed the technique. As Kin watched she saw the blue aura become water vapors, and then turn into water. Then Ryoga moved his arms to his stomach and the water turned into ice. Once you've reached a certain point you move your arms to your stomach and then by moving your left leg forward you throw your arms out, he finished as he did the move. The ice was hurled towards a tree and the tree froze on contact. Amazing, said Kin looking at the frozen tree. That was nothing, anyone can do it so long as they have the focus and the will to learn it, said Ryoga. Then again Jigoku and Naruto can't seem to do it. Maybe it's because of their bloodline, he added. Alright I'll give it a shot, said Kin as she got into the same stance. She moved her arms the same way as Ryoga, but instead of ice like Ryoga she got the sound of electricity. Ryoga saw the positive and negative charges trying to connect after Kin separated them. Once Kin moved her arms to her stomach she threw her arms out and a lightning bolt flew towards a bush and fried it. In a bizarre twist of fate or for comical reasons said bush was the one Sakura and Ino were hiding in. After the training session the four of them went to get something to eat. As usual Naruto picked ramen and Jigoku agreed. That proved to be a mistake, after seeing Naruto eat about 40 bowls of ramen in 30 minutes. Asuma and Kurinai were watching from a table away from them. Two electrocuted Kunoichi at another table, and lastly Team 8 entering the small ramen shop. Whose name escapes the author at this moment? Naruto noticed them and invited them over. Kiba was hesitant at first remembering the thrashing he got. Shino was also cautious because Naruto is his opponent in the finals. Hanada was happy to see him and moved to sit next to him. Well she would if her teammates gave her a push to get her moving. After seeing Hanada standing still Kin decided to leave her seat which was next to the blonde and guide Hanada to it. Don't worry just calm down and be yourself, 
whispered Kin as she set Hanada down in the seat. As Naruto and Hanada had another one-sided conversation, Ryoga noticed that the waitress was looking at him with a blush on her face. He knew what that meant, but it did not bother him since he was used to it. What caught everyone's attention was the chief leaving the back room yelling about some wild animal eating the ingredients. Ryoga looked at Jigoku and Jigoku knew what that meant. Oh hell no! yelled Jigoku trying to leave. Come on Jigoku you it might be fun, said Ryoga. Without another word Jigoku went in to look at the problem. He knew he could never win in an argument between him and Ryoga. When he got inside he saw the creature to be just a small dog. Well look at you ain't you cute, said the sarcastic Jigoku. You want a butt kicking little guy? Yes you do, you do, come on I'm gonna drop kick you to hurt town. Yes I'm, ah. He continued until the dog bit him. Jigoku was stumbling backward out into the open with the dog latched onto his hand. He hit the ground and start punching the dog. Get off of me you little! yelled Jigoku trying to fling the mutt. Jigoku tripped on a bowl and hit the ground. The dog let go of his hand and went for his dreads. Hey you're messing with my dreads! he yelled as he threw the dog only for it to lunge at him again. Jigoku kept trying to fling the dog while yelling profanity can make even the most vulgar person sound like a saint. Finally he threw the dog into a cabinet. The dog jumped out of the cabinet and lunged at Jigoku, but it was caught by none other than Kiba's older sister Hana. Akamaru what is wrong with you today? asked Hana trying to calm the dog. God damn oversized rat, I swear the next time I'm gonna turn it into a sweet and sour hot dog, muttered Jigoku. After hearing that Hana and Kiba were not happy. What did you say? demanded Hana as she turned to see Jigoku. Right when she saw him she was blushing. Here she was face to face with the same guy who caught her attention. What? You deaf or something? insulted Jigoku. Jigoku, just let it go man, said Ryoga. Why should I? asked Jigoku. Because you're paying the bill, answered Ryoga handing him the bill. Fine, let me see. What the ing hell? yelled Jigoku as he saw the bill. It was at least 1000 Ryu. How the hell did get this much for a bill? he asked. He then saw the amount of bowls and the damage. One more bowl please, said Naruto holding out an empty bowl. Oh hell no! shouted Jigoku after seeing one of the reasons ordering another bowl of ramen. But why Aniki? asked the younger berserker. Because I'm going to teach you and your friend a very important lesson, answered the elder berserker. Really? What is it? asked the blonde. How to run out on the check? Move itmeatbags, double time, move it move, ordered Jigoku as he dragged Naruto and Kin by their shirts and Ryoga followed. After the four left the bill was put on another person's tab. Sadly that tab was Asuma's so he lost a good chunk out of his paycheck. Kiba and Akamaru left for home with Hana who was pretty much daydreaming about Jigoku. Shino left to prepare for the finals. Kurenai escorted Hanada back home, for Hanada. She hoped with all her heart that Naruto will win in the finals. The days went by and the day of the finals was Fionla here. For Naruto he was stuck with Jiraiya after he persuaded Jigoku to let him train Naruto and Kin. This left Jigoku and Ryoga free time to do one thing. Get into a bar fight against the best this village has to offer. So far that plan did not go so well. For Kin, every time she tried to learn something Jiraiya was constantly looking at her like the pervert that he is. For Jigoku and Ryoga, they got their bar fight against the Anbu, but after they kicked their asses Ibiki joined in and totally messed with Jigoku's head during the fight and beat him down. Ryoga had to carry his friend out of the bar. Naruto, on the other hand got the worst part of the training day. Listen brat, your match is in two hours, so to get you ready I have not choice but to do this, said the Arrow Senen as he looked at the cliff they were close to. What are you talking about Arrow Senen? asked the blonde. Forgive me Yandaimi, thought Jiraiya as pushed Naruto off the cliff. As Naruto falls deeper into the cliff his red-orange chakra erupted. Naruto opened his eyes to see that he is no longer in the pit, but in what looks like a sewer. As he walked in the sewer looking for a way out he saw a figure appear. He was shocked to see who it is. It was his apparent evil side and looked like he was waiting for Naruto. Well, well look who's finally decided to show up, said the other Naruto. Who are you? asked Naruto afraid of the answer. Don't, who are you? Me. You know who I am, said the other. Well what do you want? asked Naruto. 
Oh that's easy. I want my power back, replied the other Naruto as he lunged at Naruto with his vibration blades extended. Naruto managed to dodge the attack and tried to use his chakra blades but couldn't. The other Naruto used this to his advantage as he continued to attack the real Naruto. All Naruto could do is run and avoid his other's attacks. It was no doubt a one-sided fight. The evil Naruto was enjoying himself. What's wrong? Can't do anything without my power. Huh? Taunted the evil Naruto. Then I guess I'll just have to put you out of my misery, he yelled as he swung his right blade down. Suddenly Naruto blocked the attack with his right arm only this time he too has a vibration blade. What? Yelled the shocked doppelganger. The real Naruto looked at his arm and saw the blade. Just behind the darker Naruto. He saw that he has unlocked his battle clad form. It was exactly like the evil Naruto's. This is the battle clad form. My battle clad, thought Naruto as he pushed the other's blade away. I get it now. He may look like me, because he's my dark side. Well he's not going to win, he mentally added. He pushed the other Naruto away and then performed a horizontal slash with his left blade. The other Naruto grunted in pain and then smirked at Naruto. Well looks you win this time, but remember I'm always with you, said the dark Naruto as he faded away. As Jiraiya looks down the pit he sees a ball of red-orange chakra head towards him. He tries to move away from the ball of energy, but the chakra move over his head and landed behind him and revealed a pissed off Naruto. What the hell is wrong with you Aero Senen, yelled Naruto. That's not important brat, right now you have a match to get to, said Jiraiya trying to escape the question. Oh shit, yelled Naruto as he ran to the stadium at speeds that make him look like a yellow blur. Meanwhile in the stadium Ryoga and Jigoku were sitting behind Hiyashi and his second daughter Hanabi. To the young Hyuga these two young men were quite strange. She has never seen anyone let alone two men who are as impulsive to each other over anything. They were basically blaming each other over a bad bar fight. Flashback inside one of Konoha's bars the Anbu were called in about two rowdy men. When they got in they saw two foreigners who have beaten eight Junin. Jigoku and Ryoga were standing with drinks in their hands. They were also laughing at the down ninjas. The Anbu wasted no time in trying to subdue them. Pray for the poor unfortunate doomed Anbu. As one of the Anbu moved in on Ryoga he got an elbow rammed to his face breaking the mask easily. Before the Anbu could recover he got knee to his gut. Two more Anbu tried to strike Jigoku from the sides, but Jigoku's side flipped over the one to his left and swept the Anbu's feet and threw a roundhouse kick to the Anbu's back. Then he slid toward the other and used a scissors grab with his legs on his other opponent's right foot and twisted the Anbu's foot. As the two friends were thrashing the so-called, best of the best, the senseis of teams 7, 8, 10, and whatever the hell guys came to the same bar that just became an arena. They saw an Anbu with a bird's mask get sent flying out the door, completely against his will too. They moved to the doorway to see what was happening. For Asuma, Kuranai, and Gaia they are witnessing the defeat of the Anbu Black Ops getting their asses handed to them by two guy who could be mistaken for civilians. When they watch Ryoga, they saw that he was using mostly his elbows and knee. He only threw at least three kicks and the sent two Anbu towards the walls and one that destroyed one of the walls. When they watched Jigoku he was using his strange fighting style taking down two male Anbu and one female member. Just what are they using? Demanded Kuranai still trying to understand this chaos. The one with the powerful kicks is using a style called Mui Tai. Whereas the other is using a mix of Kaperio for his movements and other martial arts styles for his attacks. Truly these two are masters of their own trade. Look at the wounds on the Anbu. The ones beaten by the Muay Thai fighter, they are knocked out by the attacks with possibly broken ribs. They are the lucky ones, while the rest are suffering from twisted limbs and other injuries that may take more time to heal. Whoever these two are they are not to be taken lightly, said Guy who for once did not speak the way he always speaks or else the author would have killed himself for typing it. Hey Jigoku, twofer. Asked Ryoga looking at the last standing Anbu who was shaking in fear. Double or nothing dog, answered Jigoku. The two rushed the last Anbu and tackled him. Ryoga attacked the front and Jigoku got the back. Then Ryoga kneed him in the gut while Jigoku elbowed him in the spine. Ryoga launched the Anbu up to the air with an uppercut and Jigoku jumped up before the uppercut and when the Anbu reached him the Anbu got a double hammer fist to his back. The Anbu hit the ground hard and wasn't getting up. 
The two outsiders were laughing as they went to their seat to drink after their playmates were done with. While the Junin watched they saw Anko, Aruka and Ibiki come by and saw the bar and the injured Anbu. What the hell? said Ibiki as he looked at the Anbu, the bar, and saw Jigoku and Ryoga. Hey you punks, did you two do this? he asked as Anko and Aruka checked on the Anbu with Kakashi and the other Junin. Well it looks like we got another taker Ryoga, said Jigoku. The main course if you ask me Jigoku, responded Ryoga. I'm ready to dig in, said Jigoku as he walked up to Ibiki. Say kid, shouldn't you be at home studying? taunted Ibiki. Yeah well, let's see what I've studied, said Jigoku as he lunged at Ibiki grabbing his coat and flipped Ibiki over. Instead of him hitting the ground Ibiki landed without his coat on. Ha! Huh. responded Jigoku as he saw Ibiki in a guard stance. What's the matter kid? Is class over? taunted Ibiki knowing that he got to Jigoku easily. Without saying another word Jigoku leapt into the air to deliver and flying sidekick then rotated his body to the left to do a spinning hook kick. Ibiki caught his left foot and threw him into a table. Jigoku leapt toward Ibiki again to perform a double axe kick to his head, but Ibiki moved back and uppercut Jigoku into gut. Now listen here kid. Beat it, said Ibiki who then back fisted Jigoku, and don't come back, he yelled after sending Jigoku over the bar counter. Jigoku wasn't down yet, because he jumped out and used his chakra blades to slash at Ibiki but missed. The Junin and Chunin couldn't believe what they just saw. A blade made out of chakra was one thing, but two that was something else. They watched as Jigoku swung his blades at Ibiki. Then Jigoku backed off to catch his breath. Ibiki noticed this and realized that Jigoku wasted too much chakra as he fought. Ibiki wasted no time and grabbed Jigoku and threw him towards the wall. He hit the wall hard and wasn't getting up. So what's your story kid? Do you always stand at the sides and watch your buddy get his ass handed to him? Asked Ibiki. Wrong. Jigoku and I follow an unspoken code that on one on one match that we never help each other. Regardless of the outcome, that's how we roll, answered Ryoga. Instead of ganging up on people like you cowardly bedtime killers, yelled Ryoga. Kurinai gasped as she saw Jigoku stood up with cuts and bruises and few bones dislocated. The other Junin and people in the bar turned to see Jigoku's injuries heal rapidly, but the chakra blades were gone. He stood there in his own stance that was similar to Naruto's one with his left hand up and he was standing. Jigoku's balance was slipping as he fought just to stand up. Ibiki saw this and couldn't help but respect him. I got to hand it to you kid. You've got more guts than any of our Anbu and Junin put together. Let's get out of here, said Ibiki as he and the Anbu left the bar. End of flashback as the two argued the time away, the remaining genin for the finals waited for two more competitors. The genin waiting are Shino, Neji, Shikamaru, Konkuro, Tamari, and Gara. They were waiting for Dosu, Naruto, and Sasuke who haven't shown up. The three of them have one minute left. As the minute passed the proctor Genma was about to announce the start of the finals until a loud voice interrupted. Hold your ing trap I'm coming, yelled Naruto as he leapt into the stadium. After he landed everyone took a look at the blonde who decided to change his wardrobe. Instead of his orange jumpsuit, he wore a dark blue t-shirt that says, never surrender, he also wore black pants with orange stripes on the sides, and instead of sandals he wore tabies on his feet. On his back was a scarab that held his ox-tailed dao. To the villagers Naruto seemed to bend in slightly, but he also caught the attention of a few girls in the stands. After his appearance and an apparent statement about starting the finals without Sasuke and Dosu being there and will give them time to arrive, mainly Sasuke. The matches now begin with Naruto versus Shino. As the two stood in the center hearing the rules Shino's bug were telling him to not face Naruto. Logically Shino would agree if not for a few things. 1. He remembered how Naruto was a failure and now he is almost at Sasuke's level if not higher. Second, he too wants to face Neji and make him pay for what he did to Hanada. Third, and more surprising he happens to like more than as a teammate. Genma started the match and Shino sent his bugs at Naruto. Naruto jumped back avoiding the first attack, then he ran toward Shino. The bugs flew to the blonde who backfisted the first amount away. This surprised everyone, because for matters that should be swarming all over Naruto. Instead they moved away from him and Naruto wasn't even phased. Before Shino could react Naruto threw an uppercut across his face. Shino was knocked back, but he moved back up to face Naruto. 
Up in the stands everyone was in awe. Many of the villagers could not believe that Naruto was competing, nor that he appears to be winning. For Kuranai, this was unexpected that two of her students would face Naruto and most likely lose. She never had anything against the boy, but she never bothered to find out anything more about him. Now she can see why Jigoku took pride in helping him. Naruto is more than empty vessels that failed in sealing Kiyubi. Naruto is a child that needed a family's attention and Jigoku took the role of big brother. Asuma who was right next to Kuranai also watched the match in shock. Naruto is fighting a bug user and is winning. He can't help but think that if Naruto's skills increase anymore that the boy would be too powerful and might take revenge on the villager for what they've done to him. Hiyashi did not like what he was seeing, because if Naruto wins and faces Neji and wins, then the bet he made with Jigoku will ruin the Hyuga clan's reputation. Back in the arena, Shino sent more of his bugs after Naruto. Naruto was dodging the attacks and pulled out his Dao as he jumped into the air. As the bugs swarmed around Naruto and engulfed him Naruto struck at the bugs rapidly without move around in the air. The bugs dropped to the ground sliced in half, this frightened Shino, because his colony was being destroyed by Naruto and his own rash judgment. This was a mistake he would never do again as he raised his hand up. I surrender, said Shino as he called his remaining bugs back. Genma nodded and announced Naruto as the winner. The next match was Neji vs Konkuro, but Konkuro decided to forfeit for his own reasons. The next match was called for Tamari and Shikamaru. Shikamaru was originally going to forfeit, but Naruto tired of his laziness literally threw the shadow user into the arena. The so-called match turned into a ridiculously long game of tag. Many people watched, except for one, Jigoku was sleeping and talking in his sleep. Kill all humans, must kill all humans, kill all the humans in the world, said Jigoku between snores. This caused many people close by to move away for the sleeping berserker whose kill lust is even in his sleep. The match finally ended with Shikamaru quieting after catching Tamari in his shadow possession. The next match was Gara vs Dosu, but Dosu still hasn't shown up and Gara won by default. The semi-finals were up with Naruto vs Neji, the two stepped into the ring and waited for the match to start. You really should forfeit. You are destined to fail against me, said Neji believing that he will win. You think you're so smug don't you? Well I'm not quieting, because you're the asshole who nearly killed Hanada-chan, growled Naruto. Hanada-sama is nothing but a pampered main branch brat who is far too weak, she will never change, responded Neji. Naruto rushed for Neji after hearing that. The two genin attacked each other rapidly. Neji was able to close off all of Naruto's chakra points and knock him down. As Neji walked away Naruto got back up and was standing. Everyone was shocked to see Naruto get back up except for his brothers, who knew he can do it. Why? Why do you hate Hanada-chan so much? Demanded Naruto with his eyes slit. Neji then started to explain why, about his father, the kidnapping, the decision to use his father as a sacrifice to save Hiyashi. More importantly he showed the curse seal to prove his point. To Naruto, the Hyuga clan is warped, but the fact that Neji took it out on Hanada decided everything. Okay so your family is Ed in the head. So what you still have no right to hurt Hanada-chan, yelled Naruto as he activated his bloodline. To Neji this was not possible, but Naruto was summoning so much chakra through the spike as they opened up releasing the chakra in him and taking in more. Then Naruto formed his chakra blades and a crystal with three points appeared on his forehead. Everyone was shaking as they saw the blades. Sakura was trying to think of a jutsu like it, but found nothing. Hanada watched in awe while Kiba and Akamaru were shaking in fear. Kin smirked knowing her buddy was going to win. Ino, Choji, Tenten, and Lee were all shocked by this turn of events. Shikamaru and Shino were standing on edge as they watched. The sand genin were shaking in fear, even Gara, who has never felt fear. As for Naruto, he was laughing in a sinister way. He moved his head up and showed a demonic smirk on his face. He moved forward, scaring everyone, because he shouldn't be able to move. So now I get to have my fun, said Naruto as he chuckled. He vanished from sight and reappeared in front of Neji. Neji tried to strike at Naruto, but he moved to the side and kneed Neji in the gut, cracking a few ribs. Neji jumped away as Naruto charged him. Neji performed the katan as Naruto tried to use his right blade. Naruto flew back, but landed on the wall. Neji hurled shuriken at him, but Naruto yelled at the flying weapons and they burst into pieces. 
Neji was shocked as well as his teammates and uncle. How do you like my hell siren? Has a nice ring to it huh? Taunted Naruto. Naruto's behavior was shocking everyone, he has never been so evil to anyone. Now try this, trust me you'll love it, he added as he formed the pressure shot. He shot the attack and Neji performed the katan again, but the shot went right through it. The shot missed Neji, but it served its purpose. The pressure shot pierced the Hyuga clan's former perfect defense. Before anyone could say anything Naruto attacked the shocked Hyuga. Neji couldn't defend himself because as soon as Naruto reached him Naruto grabbed his left arm and snapped it. Then Naruto kicked his right knee out forcing it to bend in the opposite direction. He was then thrown into the air and Naruto appeared behind him and he grabbed Neji's shoulder so hard his fingers dug into his flesh. Naruto threw Neji to the ground and caused more of Neji's bones to break. Naruto landed perfectly on the ground and walked towards Neji who tried to back away. Street, stay away from me you monster, yelled the terrified Hyuga as he tried to back away. Now if I do that then I wouldn't be able to play with you, taunted Naruto as he threw Genma out of his way. And we don't want that, he added as he lifted Neji and suddenly drove his left blade up cutting Neji's right eye. Neji screamed in pain as he clutched his bleeding eye. Naruto laughed at his opponent as he prepared to cut Neji's head off. Stop it Naruto! yelled Sakura, but was ignored and received a kanai lodged into her left shoulder. Hanada who was watching couldn't stand it anymore ran to the ledge of the arena. Naruto-kun stop! yelled the Hyuga heiress. Suddenly Naruto dropped Neji and grabbed his head and yelled in pain. What? But how? How could she reach him? What makes her so special Uzumaki Naruto? yelled, Naruto. Naruto finally stopped yelling as the chakra around him moved away from him and formed Naruto's battle-clad form. Naruto and Hanada looked at each other while everyone else looked at the battle-clad Naruto. It faded after it appeared while Hanada ran toward Naruto and caught him before he collapsed. Twenty minutes later Neji was at the hospital with his uncle. Back at the stadium the exam was halted, because the council decided that enough was enough. That's it. We've had it with that boy. He is no longer a part of our village, said Homura. I agree, the boy is too dangerous to keep, he must be taken care of, replied Kaharu. This was how it started for Naruto before he ran out of the stadium. Neither Hinata or Kin could try to comfort him, because he moved way too fast to keep up. As he ran the next match came with Gara vs Sasuke which takes about two hours to even start. As Naruto stopped he saw an old man walk toward him. Hey you mind leaving, I'm not in the best of moods, said the blonde. Well that's too bad yelled the old man as he changed into a ten-foot wolf like being with a monkey-like tail with a sharp spike. Time to meet your death. For I am Apok, yelled the beast as it struck at Naruto. Apok rammed his right claw into Naruto's chest. The young berserker screamed in pain as he tried to break free. He managed to only aggravate Apok who tossed him away. The puncture wounds were filled with some type of acid that was eating Naruto's insides. Before Naruto could say anything Apok lunged at him again but Naruto used his right chakra blade to cut his hand off. Naruto noticed that his arm was being eaten by the same acid-like substance. As Apok approached Naruto, he formed the pressure shot and fired it at Apok's head. The gravity weapon blew half of the mutated beast head off. Apok fell to ground with a huge thud. Damn, he was a hell of a lot tougher than the others, said Naruto as he walked away. Sadly he noticed that Apok was moving again. What? yelled the shocked Genin as Apok rose up again. No way, he yelled. Because of Naruto's shock Apok lunged at Naruto and bite down on his arm. Naruto screamed in pain as Apok tore the boy's arm off. As the severed arm fell to the ground Naruto clutched onto the stub that his arm used to be attached to. Blood was flowing out of him like a river. Things were not looking good for Naruto as Apok used his tail to grab Naruto and started constricting the poor boy. Aniki. Help me, said Naruto through his telepathic bond to Jigoku. Sadly he got no answer because just as soon as Jigoku heard Naruto the invasion of the Konoha village began and Jigoku and Ryoga got drafted into helping the village. As Naruto struggled to break free from Apok, he was thrown to the ground. Immediately after his fall Apok stabbed Naruto with his tail in the boy's gut. Naruto fell to the ground and he was going into shock. Then Apok rammed his remaining hand into Naruto's chest piercing his heart. Naruto stopped moving as Apok removed his hand from the boy. Then two shinobi appeared next to Apok looking at Naruto. 
Then one of them started talking on a small communications radio. Ryo Sama, Berserker 3 is confirmed dead. We are now preparing to take the body back to the base, said the ninja as he and his partner moved to the boy. Suddenly Naruto stood up like a zombie and lunged at Apoc. Naruto bit into his killer's stomach trying to take him down. Apoc growled in pain and annoyance as Naruto continued to chew on him. Ryo Sama, the berserkers still alive, yelled the second ninja. You were indeed useful Danzo but no more farewell. Suddenly Apoc burst open spraying the zombie Naruto with the acid blood all over him. Naruto's body was only slightly dissolved but mostly intact. After the body stopped moving again the two ninjas took the body and disappeared. Konoha, a shinobi village that is one of the greatest. That is until 20 minutes ago when the sound and sand invaded. Many leaf shinobi fell to the invasion, but for Jigoku and Ryoga the fun is just starting. Two sound nin leapt at Jigoku, but Jigoku threw his spears right into their heads. Ryoga on the other had froze his attackers then shattered them with his sword. The Junin instructors fought alongside the two warriors while Kakashi ordered the Genin that were not affected by the Genjutsu to stop Sasuke from fighting Gara. The Genin were Sakura, Shikamaru, Hanada and Kin who decided to help after changing her allegiance. Meanwhile deep underneath the Konoha hospital Naruto's remain are been studied by the Keke cage. His body was placed on an examination table. Two researchers were observing the body while the battle goes on above them. As for the Hokage he now faces Orochimaru who finally revealed himself while Ryo watches. Right beside Ryo are Risko and Zurus, both rivals watched Jigoku kill another group of ninjas who tried to kill him. Then Jigoku left the area to their annoyance. Zurus, go after the second berserker, said Ryo. At once Ryo Sama, replied Zurus as he turned into a more enhanced version of himself. But Ryo Sama, shouldn't I go face him? questioned Risko. No, you have failed me once. Now make yourself useful and make sure those troublesome Anbu don't interfere, ordered Ryo. Yes sir, said Risko as he went battle clad in front of Orochimaru, the Sandame, the Sound 4, the assembled Junin, and Anbu. As Risko jumped into the battle, the Genin who went after Sasuke arrived to see him facing what looks like Gara. He had changed into his demon-like form and was lacing out at all of them when he saw more Genin. Meanwhile back in the research lab, Naruto's body started moving. The researchers watched the lifeless body move. What the hell? It's moving? Asked the first researcher. Look. The body is regenerating, said the second. Indeed Naruto's body was regenerating. His severed arm was growing back from bones to muscle tissue. Then all of Naruto's skin peeled away and was replaced with the same scale-like skin that Risko has. From his forearms grew out two curved blades and his chest formed into the chest plates for the Devastator. Finally the crystal formed on his forehead. Naruto stood up from the table and grabbed one of the researchers and crushed his throat. The second tried to leave to call for reinforcements, but Naruto lunged at him and sliced him in half with his vibration blade. After killing the researchers Naruto left the lab with no direction in mind. As for the Junin and Ryoga they were faring well against the enemy ninjas. Then some of the civilians started standing and started to change into blood warriors. Most turned into Rainbow types, some into Vakor types, and a few turned into Bregule types. Inside the village more civilians turned into different types of blood warriors. The Junin were shocked by this, they have never faced enemies like this. One of the Bregules charged at Ryoga and rammed him out of the stadium. The two started to wrestle on the ground as more blood warriors attacked the Leaf Nin. What started as a war judged by skill turned into a massacre decided by brute strength. The shinobi despite all of their skills could not match the false bloodline humans. As the battle went on the Hokage watched in horror as his own people fought to kill each other. As this went on no one noticed that Risko vanished from sight. Meanwhile inside the hospital blood warriors that were inside were being slaughtered by the new and improved berserker Naruto. A Reimo type tried to attack him from behind but Naruto turned and sliced him in half. Blood flew everywhere as lizard-like blood warrior tried to grab him only to be stabbed in the ribs. The doctors and nurses watching were in a state of shock seeing all this blood flying that would make Tsunade stay away from the country if she ever saw a berserker. More blood warriors ran towards Naruto only for the resurrected boy to head towards them blades ready. As for Zurus he was pursuing Jigoku only to be stopped by Risko. For Zurus he believes that now is the time to put Risko in his place, since he has been modified to combat the berserkers. 
Zerus's change were that now he has a vibration claw in his right hand, a more powerful chakra beam blaster on his left hand, and a barrier field that can negate the pressure. So Risco, have you come to watch me capture Berserker too? taunted Zerus. Actually, I'm here to make sure you don't, answered Risco. Ha! Huh. Like you can stop me! shouted Zerus as he activated his vibration claw and charged at Risco, who also ran towards his rival. As Ryoga crashed into the ground he got back up to avoid an attack from the Bregule. Ryoga threw an uppercut to Bregule's jaw and knock him back. Then he formed an ice blade on his hand. Bregule lunged at him again, but Ryoga plunged the ice blade into his head and decapitate Bregule. As he went to enter the stadium he saw that the Junin were done fighting the ninjas, but were getting beat by the blood warriors. Wasting no time he rushed in to join the battle, and enjoying it. Meanwhile, Zerus was trying to stab Risco with his vibration claw, but Risco dodged each strike. Zerus was pissed that Risco was evading his attack and used his chakra blaster at him. Risco jumped into the air to dodge the blast as it went through a wall and hit another building. Risco looked at the damage, then turned to face Zerus. How do you like that? Your puny little devastator got nothing on this, boasted Zerus as he charged his blaster again. Wasting no time Risco rushed toward Zerus before he could fire again. Seeing his rival run towards him Zerus shot out his acid liquid. Risco dodged the attack and activated his vibration blades and cut Zerus's left arm off. Zerus yelled in agony as Risco sliced the other off too. Zerus jumped back in time to gain distance to use his barrier field to block a pressure shot from Risco. Seeing the barrier Risco growled as he started pounding at it with his fists. After three minutes Risco noticed that Zerus was getting tired. Finally the barrier gave way and Risco raised his right arm and sliced Zerus's head off. Risco. Ack! Yelled Zerus for the last time. Hey, to think that fool believed that he was my rival. What a joke. Now to find the other two berserkers and prove myself as the only true berserker, said Risco as he left to find his family members. Back in the forest the Genin were trying to avoid all of Gara's attacks as he lashed out at them. Soon enough his focus changed from Sasuke to Hanada as he lunged at her. Seeing Gara heading towards her reminded her of how he was back at the forest of death and of the mutant that grabbed him before. Fear was all over her as Gara he suddenly stopped. Gara turned to see a new foe holding his tail. All the Genin looked at the new comer and saw what looks like to them a humanoid demon. Kin took a good look at the demon and smiled. Naruto! yelled Kin in joy seeing friend in his battle clad form. The other genin looked at the demon and saw that it is Naruto. To Sasuke it was impossible for this thing to be Naruto. For Sakura she was shaking in fear because Naruto just stopped Gara when Sasuke couldn't even slow him down. To Tamari she was thinking that Naruto also has a demon inside him. Hanada stood the in shock and awe seeing her crush in this form. Suddenly Naruto flung Gara to the ground without putting any effort into it. Gara hit the ground hard and glared at Naruto, but had little to no effect because Naruto opened one of his chest plates and charged his devastator. Sensing the intense power coming from Naruto, Gara immediately went to sleep to allow Shukaku to fight Naruto. The demon rose up in his sandy form just in time to get hit by the devastator. The blast vaporized his lower half, but it reformed itself. Shukaku fired an air bullet towards the berserker, but it was blocked by the pressure shot. The genin clinging onto whatever they could find watched in horror as two nearly invincible forces face each other. As the two face off Hanada tried to stop Naruto from getting killed. But before she could reach him Naruto jumped into the air to reach Shukaku. The demon fired another air bullet, but Naruto dodged the attack and threw a punch at Gara. Back at the village Jigoku was spotted with the Kiba's mother, Sume and sister Hana. Next to them are the original Inoshika Cho team and Hiyashi Hayuga and his second daughter Hanabi. They were facing many Reimo type blood warriors, but sadly Risco decided to join in. So I've found you Berserker too, said Risco. Do I know you or something? Asked Jigoku knowing that Risco was talking to him. No, but we are alike just like that kid, answered Risco. Jigoku realized he was talking about Naruto. What have you bastards done to him? Demanded Jigoku. Oh nothing he's alive. Right now he's facing a demon in the forest, but that's not important, said Risco. And why is that? Asked Jigoku. Because I want to fight you, answered Risco. Why? Asked Jigoku. Simple I want to test my abilities on another berserker. 
Besides, the world doesn't need three berserkers, one is more than enough, answered Risco. With that said the two faced each other the clan heads watched them. Risco fired his stun beam three times, but Jigoku backed flip to avoid all three shots then ran toward him. Jigoku threw a roundhouse kick to Risco's head, but the elder berserker dodged it and threw his own. Jigoku blocked it and summoned his chakra blades and swung his right arm at Risco. The clan heads watched in awe at Jigoku seeing him continue to fight Risco. Hana was watching Jigoku with hearts in her eyes as she watched him dodge another attack by moving his right leg back and moved his arms out like a dancer. For Hanabi, she was in total awe seeing someone who wasn't a Hyuga fight. To her Jigoku moved like it was second nature to him and saw him smile as he fought Risco. Jigoku and Risco struck at each other with their blades, but neither had the advantage. Finally Risco jumped back to the top of a building. I must say you are indeed stronger than the young one, but don't think for a second that you can beat me, said Risco. Oh don't worry. I know I can't beat you, but I can slow you down, said Jigoku as he moved his left palm forward as he formed a pressure shot. Before Risco could react Jigoku fired five pressure shots at his feet. The roof collapsed and Risco fell into the building. As for Naruto and Gara, Naruto slammed his fist at Gara's head and that woke him up. The sand lost its form and Gara fell to the ground. Before he hit the ground he was caught by Tamari. The two landed on the forest floor and watched in horror as Naruto landed without getting a scratch or sprain. Naruto moved toward them with his blades ready. No. Stay back. Get away from us you monster. Begged Tamari watching in fear as their executioner advanced to them. Naruto-kun. Screamed Hanada who was scared of what her crush has become. After Hanada's scream Naruto stopped as his crystal glowed a bright white light. Naruto stood still for 10 seconds then he moved his right hand to his head. Hi, Hanada-chan. Said Naruto as he turned to see her, he saw her looking at him in fear. Naruto. Shouted Kin as she Sakura, and Sasuke caught up with them. I can't believe it. You finally reached your battle clad form, she added. What are you talking about Kin? Asked Naruto until he looked at his body. What the? How did I get like this? He asked. You don't know, mentioned Kin as the other looked at them. No all I remember was fighting this blood warrior called Apoc and he bit my arm off and then everything went blank, answered Naruto as he looked at his arms. Wait. Does this mean that I died? Asked Naruto fearing the answer. I don't know, but maybe you reached battle clad like that because your bloodline reanimated you kinda like a zombie or something, responded Kin. A, a zombie? Stuttered Naruto as he continues to look at himself. Naruto-kun, said Hanada who tried to get close to him, but he moved away when he saw twelve blood warriors arrive to their location. You assholes really picked a bad time to piss me off growled Naruto as he ran towards them with his vibration blades out. A couple of hours later Team 7, Hanada, and Kin reached the rooftop to see the Hokage and Orochimaru fight with the Sound 4 acting as guards. Also inside the barrier was Ryo looking at Naruto almost daring him to get in. Naruto was more than happy to oblige. Everyone cover your eyes, ordered Naruto as he opened his chest plates. The other genin didn't listen but watched him fire the devastator at the barrier. The blast grazed the barrier, but it was enough to shatter it. Naruto leapt towards Ryo and landed six yards away. The Hokage and Orochimaru stopped to look and the Sound 4 look at Naruto in horror. Very impressive boy, commented Ryo. Shut up, I want to know why the your people are after me, demanded Naruto. Very well, I will tell you about your kind, said Ryo catching everyone's attention. Thousands of years ago, a warlord ordered many of his scientists to create the ultimate warrior and then create the strongest army based on that warrior. This resulted in bloodline limits. Through trial and error your bloodline was created, but it was unstable and ran wild. Despite that your power is more than enough to breed a new race of humans. Think about it, you are more gifted, more powerful than any other bloodline user. All of these second-rate bloodlines and blood warriors are child's play compared to a berserker. Join me and we can create a new world said Ryo as he extended his hand out to Naruto. Now why would my runt want to do that? Asked Jigoku who appeared out of nowhere. You bastard, who do you think you are? Demanded Ryo glaring at Jigoku. Jigoku the Hellbreaker, answered Jigoku. So what will you do now? Asked Ryo. Simple I'm gonna kill ya, answered Jigoku as he lunged at Ryo only to go right through him. 
Before he or Naruto could react a devastator blast came at them. They dodged the attack, but Jigoku was too far to the ledge and fell off. Naruto looked to see Risko was the one who fired. That bastard, growled Risko, then he saw Naruto. Well well if it isn't the undead wonder, he added as he jumped towards Naruto. The building started shaking which caused Orochimaru, the sound for, the Hokage and the genin who moved in to help the old man get away to safety. You and I will settle things right here, right now, said Risko. Are you crazy? This whole place is falling apart, yelled Naruto. I don't care, said Risko as he jumped into the air. Why should we fear anything if we are immortal, he added as dive kicked at Naruto. The attack barely missed, but it was enough to knock Naruto off balance as he slid on the ground. Naruto got up and glared at him. Risko smirked at Naruto clearly toying with the boy. Let's see if you've improved, commented Risko. Naruto charged at Risko swinging his vibration blades left and right. Risko simply moved backwards clearly not impressed. Is this a joke? You haven't changed at all. Yelled Risko as he grabbed Naruto's right arm and slammed him onto the cement. Then Risko jumped into the air to deliver a knee into Naruto's gut. He got off the boy and stood over him. If you stop moving you leave yourself open to attacks, advised Risko as he fired his stun beam at Naruto. Naruto rolled away from the beam and picked himself up to fire his own stun beam. Risko dodged the attack and jumped behind Naruto. Naruto turned around and got punched in the gut. Then Risko punched him in the face and again in the gut. Risko kept attacking Naruto like this at least seven more times. Suddenly he grabbed Naruto by the neck and threw him across the roof. He opened his chest plates to fire his devastator again, but this time at close range. Naruto was struggling to get up. But was having a hard time. Disappear forever, little berserker, shouted Risko as he charged his devastator. But the chakra faded and his crystal was acting up again. What's going on, ah? groaned Risko as his body started to bulge out. Naruto finally got up to see Risko's body change and saw that his crystal was glowing wildly. Without a second thought, Naruto leapt at Risko and punched him in the crystal. The crystal shattered and Risko tried to grab his head. Then his body started to dissolve. And, no, how, could this, happen, I'm, I'm invincible, ah, groaned Risko as he said his final works. The building started to collapse and Naruto jumped off the building. As he reached the ground, Naruto flipped forward and landed perfectly on the ground. He saw his teammates, Kin, Hanada, the Hokage, the Junin Sensei with the few clan heads and Ryoga. He saw that the Sandame was injured badly. Hokage Gigi yelled Naruto as he ran to him. As he ran his body removed his battle-clad skin and regenerate his skin and lower area. The kunoichi there blushed or in Hanada's case faint. Naruto checked the Hokage hoping he's okay, but he was dead. Naruto cried for what felt like hours until Ryoga put a hand on the boy's shoulder. Don't worry Naruto. He risked everything to save the village and all who live here, said Ryoga as he comforted Naruto. But, he's, gone, Nissan, sobbed Naruto. He won't be forgotten Naruto. He will live for inside the hearts of those he cares for, said Ryoga. This was indeed a touching moment if not for one person who was falling from the sky. Ah, somebody fat. Get the hell in my way, yelled the one and only Jigoku as he fell. Hey I am not fat, yelled Shuza. Ironically Jigoku landed on Shikato and Inoichi. It was a rainy day in Konoha as many villagers headed toward the Sandame's funeral. Everyone was wearing black formal clothes, except for one person. That person happens to be Jigoku, but he was wearing black clothing though. As the speech about the Sandame began Naruto was having a hard time understanding if he too was dead as well. Next to him were Kin, Ryoga, and Jigoku who watched the boy in silence or so many thought. Why? Why did this have to happen? I should be the one in that damn coffin not Hokage Gigi, thought Naruto as he looks at the body of the man who was like a grandfather to him. Calm down runt, what the hell is with you today? Said Jigoku through their telepathy. Aniki I was killed too, but now I'm right here, alive. I even lost my arm and look at me. I grew a whole new one, I don't even know if this is my real arm. I'm some sort of monster, responded Naruto in sorrow. So what? Just because you cheated death doesn't mean you're a monster, said Jigoku. Really Aniki? Asked Naruto. Of course, would I lie to you? And please don't answer that. We both know the answer to that, answered Jigoku. 
Before the two berserkers could continue it was Ryoga's and Jigoku's turn to pay his respects. Even though they had never met, Ryoga respected the late Hokage for always trying to protect Naruto. Ryoga was the first to speak to the corpse. Even though we had never met, I want to thank you for protecting Naruto, said Ryoga loud enough for everyone to hear him. Many of the villagers did not understand why he would be mentioning Naruto until they felt a large wave of killing intent focused at them. The Anbu and other older shinobi found that the source was coming from Jigoku. He looked at all the older shinobi with the desire to brutally murder them and bathe in their blood. I promise that Jigoku and I will take care of him for now on, added Ryoga as he walked towards his friend. Don't you have anything to say Jigoku? he asked. Nope, I got nothing, answered Jigoku as he walked away only to be grabbed Ryoga holding his shirt. Hey, he yelled. Give the dead old man back his stuff, ordered Ryoga. This surprised everyone attending the funeral. They have no idea what was going on with these two. What are you talking about man? Complained Jigoku. He got no answer as he was being shaken by his best friend. All sorts of stuff that belonged to the late Hokage dropped onto the ground. Some scrolls, pictures, books, the forbidden scroll, and even the old man's robe. Everyone was shocked beyond belief that this outsider who indirectly saved their home would actually steal the belongings of the Sandame. Ryoga on the other hand was not happy with Jigoku's behavior. How could you steal all of the Hokage's stuff and feel no remorse? Have you no shame? Yelled an enraged Ryoga. Hey the guy's dead. There's no crime against grave robbing, whined Jigoku who tried to justify his action. He doesn't have even a snowball's chance in hell. Yes there is you grave robbing, combat happy, unstable dumbass, shouted Ryoga. Really? asked Jigoku looking really surprised, and yes he is truly surprised. Instead of answering Ryoga dropped a law book on his lap. Hey! I was wondering where my doorstop went, said Jigoku. This caused people to be more shocked or in some cases fall on their faces as Ryoga yelled at his buddy. A week later the village returned somewhat back to normal. It was hard for many to continue on after losing so many loved ones again. For Naruto he was trying to come to grips with his apparent resurrection. He walked aimlessly throughout the village not even looking at what's in front of him. Suddenly Naruto bumped into an older Chunin and just kept walking. The Chunin was not going to let Naruto off easily. The Chunin grabbed Naruto's shoulder tightly, but Naruto grabbed his hand and twisted it. The Chunin yelped in pain and pulled out a kanai. The people watching gasped as the Chunin tried to stab the boy only to have the kanai stopped by Naruto's older brother, Ryoga. The Chunin tried to pull back but bumped into Jigoku who was right behind him. Without a second thought Jigoku threw the Chunin into a nearby dumpster. Before either of the brothers could cause more harm Jiraiya appeared. What the do you want you old goat? Demanded Jigoku. Simple you rude punk. I'm going on a journey to see an old friend of mine, said the perverted Sanin. That's nice, but what does that have to do with us? Asked Ryoga. I just want to let you boys know answered Jiraiya as he grabbed Naruto and ran off. The two warriors stood there in confusion. What the hell just happened? Asked Ryoga. A 50-year-old perverted writer who looks like a reject from a kabuki theater just ran off with our runt. Where the ing hell were you the last five ing seconds? Yelled Jigoku as they ran after the arrow senin. Meanwhile in training ground number seven, Kin, wearing the Konoha forehead protector was practicing her lightning attack she called Raiko Dan. She got into her stance and started to move her arms in a circular motion. The lightning started to appear as she continued to perform her technique. Off to the sides were Konoha's Kunoichi Genin watching. Hanada and Tenten watched in amazement while Sakura and Ino hid behind a large rock. As Kin moved her arms to her right side, the lightning bolt followed and stopped between her palms. Kin closed her eyes as she held the lightning bolt in place. Rai Ko Dan! yelled Kin as she threw the lightning bolt at a tree. The lightning bolt hit the tree and left a huge scorch mark on the trunk. Kin opened her eyes and frowned at the damage. Damn it, still not good enough, muttered Kin. What do you mean Kin? Asked Tenten still impressed by the former sound nin's attack. It's still missing something, answered Kin as she grabbed a bottle of water that Hanada handed to her. Thanks, so any luck talking to Naruto? She asked the Hyuga heiress. Hanada blushed after hearing that question. Well. Uh not really, answered Hanada twiddling her index fingers. Really? Well don't worry about it, 
he'll come around even if I have to ban him from ramen for life, joked Kin trying to get Hanada to laugh. I still don't see what's so special about him, said Ino as she and Sakura left their hiding spot. I mean come on. Sure he has gotten stronger, but he's still an idiot with too much energy, she added. Maybe, but that's why I like about being his friend. He makes life interesting and worth fighting to protect, replied Kin. How? asked Sakura as all four girls leaned in to hear Kin's answer. Simple, he's fun to be around with, answered Kin. Before any of the girls could continue their conversation Jiraiya appeared with Naruto along. The girls took a look at Naruto and noticed a slight change in his clothes. He was wearing the same type of clothes he wore at the Chunin exams along with a red jacket with a skull design on the back and his forehead protector refitted onto a fingerless glove on his right hand. Hanging from his left pocket were his headphones. Right when Hanada saw Naruto she immediately hid behind Kin. For Kin this was normal, she could tell that Hanada was practically in love with Naruto. She also knows that Naruto was starting to notice Hanada just as well, but she was also getting tired of them not even getting closer to each other just because they're scared of Naruto's bloodline. Kin turned her head and saw Ino looking Naruto up and down with what she could tell was lust in her eyes. This was something that Kin didn't plan on to happen. Fearing for any more unwanted romance obstacles she looked at Tenten was also looking at Naruto the same way. Damn it. Are all of Konoha's girls this shallow? Thought Kin not liking her plan to hook up Naruto with Hanada compromised. Ah, there you are my second apprentice, said Jiraiya breaking Kin's train of thought. What the hell are babbling about you perverted old goat? Snapped Naruto who finally got out of his daze. Meanwhile, inside the council chamber the clan heads and the late Sandame's teammates were discussing about an important issue about a certain out-of-control bloodline. Among the members are Hayuga Hiyashi, the original Ino Shika Cho who are still wounded by Jigoku, who landed on two of them. Shino's father Shibi and Kiba's mother Sume. As all of you are aware, not that Jiraiya has left to find Tsunade we can now focus on our other topic, said Kaharu. Ah yes, this Keke Cage organization and the combat bloodline called Berserker, said Hiyashi. Yes and as all of you know during the sound and sand invasion some of our villagers turned into those abominations and have slain many of our shinobi, said Hamaru. This caused numbers within the council. Indeed, but I and many others have witnessed a young man face them and defeated them all by himself. Afterwards a man named Risko appeared and called himself and the young man berserkers. As they fought I have seen them use bladed weapons of two different kinds, but they both had them on their arms. The young man used blades made out of chakra while the other used blades that vibrate, said Hiyashi. Don't forget about that black orb he shot out of his hand, added Sume. Or how he landed on us, complained Inochi. But doesn't the Uzumaki boy use the same attacks? Questioned Shibi. Back with Jigoku and Ryoga they had no luck finding Jiraiya in the village. They searched for the old man for hours with no luck. So instead they did what they always do make other people miserable and wish they had never seen them, especially Jigoku. They found the perfect victims, Kakashi, Kurenai, and Asuma. That was until they saw two cloaked ninjas in front of the three Junin. The taller ninja had blue skin, shark-like teeth and was carrying a huge sword. The shorter one looked like an older version of Sasuke. They both have purple nail polish on for some bizarre reason and a ring too. Wasting no more time the two warriors jumped in to get in the fight rather than help out. Jigoku jumped in and threw a left hook right at the Sasuke-looking ninja. The said ninja was caught off guard by this as well as his partner. Itachi! yelled the shark-looking man as he was being attacked by Ryoga. As Itachi recovered he looked at his new opponents and saw Jigoku head straight for him and tried to counter him. Itachi activated his Mangekyo Sharingan and glared at Jigoku. Jigoku being a complete dumbass looked into Itachi's eyes and became trapped in his genjutsu. In Itachi's genjutsu Jigoku looked around him only to see that the entire area was in different colors, mostly red and black. He tried to walk, but found that his legs were chained to the ground. He tried to pull the chains off, but they would not budge. Seeing that he couldn't break free Jigoku tried to use his chakra blades, but they did not appear. What the? shouted Jigoku in disbelief. Can break free, not surprising since you're in my Mangekyo. Now you will have the pleasure to suffer the torment of being stabbed by a thousand katana for 72 hours, said Itachi as the said katana appeared and thrust itself into Jigoku's gut. The sword pierced Jigoku's stomach slowly as it went deeper in. 
To Jigoku it felt like something was trying to take something out of him. The second berserker yelled in pain as he struggled to break free from his chains, but failed miserably. After what seemed like hours Itachi showed himself to Jigoku holding the katana. Now you have 71 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds to go, said Itachi in a monotone voice. What? shouted Jigoku as his torture continued. Back in the real world Ryoga and the Junin listened to Jigoku yell in agony as they can't do anything but listen. For Ryoga he sensed great evil coming from Itachi that reminded him of Jigoku almost perfectly. Hearing his best friend frightened him, because if Itachi can do this to Jigoku then how can he fight someone with those eyes? As the shouting continued Itachi stopped using his Mangekyo Sharingan and Jigoku fell into the water he was next to. Itachi and his partner looked at the water for a few seconds and moved towards their next opponents. Hey Itachi can I have some fun with these guys? asked the shark man. Fine, but make it quick Kisame, answered Itachi. No problem, said Kisame as he moved towards Ryoga and the Junin. As the mist nin approaches his targets, Itachi sensed someone coming from below. He leapt away from where he was and saw Jigoku launch himself into the air. Jigoku's body was engulfed by fire and he wasn't getting burned the slightest. The Junin looked up to see their ally literary burn in the sky. Ballistic burning impact! yelled Jigoku as he descended toward Itachi with the intent to kill him. That's it! This guy is so ing dead! First he put me in some damn illusion and now I'm wet as a ing fish. Well let's see how he liked my burning impact. As I leapt into the air, I felt the warm comfort of the heat being ignited by my ki as I burst into flames. Up in the air I saw him, the guy who looks like the runt's teammate only older and more of a pretty boy. God I ing hate pretty boys, they always get the damn chicks. As I glare at him, he stares at me with those black eyes. I am seriously gonna wipe that look off his god damn mothering face. Ballistic burning impact. I shouted as I dived towards him. When I reached the ground the bastard leapt out of the way. I was kneeling on the pavement as I glared at him again. He put his hands together and was making weird gestures with them. I think Fangles said they were called hand seals or something like that. Then he put one of his hands to his mouth and spat out a huge flame at me. Without a second thought I spun my body out at random direction with my legs out and my arms switching on the ground. Rapid killer dragon flame. I shouted to block his attack. Every one of the ninjas watched in awe as I cancelled out this guy's attack. Using this as an advantage I unleashed another burning impact on him. But he pulled out a katana and stabbed me in the gut. Now this asshole is talking about some bullshit I can't hear, then he kicked me into the air and I landed into a ing tree. I really hate this asshole, and I don't even know his ing name. Ryoga's Pav. As I watched my best friend become engulfed by his own fire, I knew that whoever this guy is, he has to be strong to get Jigoku to go all out. I turned to look at the Genin instructors to see their reactions to Jigoku. They have a hard time understanding Jigoku, and I can't blame them. Jigoku was always a loose cannon when it comes to fighting. He loves combat more than anything else, and if his enemy is stronger than him, then he's happy. How can this guy keep going? He's using too much charka with those fire jutsu if they can even be called that, said Kurenai as she watches him. I have a hard time remembering which kids she teaches, but I think that pale-eyed girl that Naruto likes is one of her students. Regardless I felt like I should answer her question so I did. That's one of the things about Jigoku no one tries to understand. Jigoku lives for combat, almost like that's his purpose in life or something, I answered in somewhat of a riddle. We all watched Jigoku use a second burning impact only to see Jigoku get stabbed by a katana and then get kicked into the sky. I watched him land into a tree and suddenly I sensed an increase in ki surrounding Jigoku. During my time with him I learned to fear this attack. Jigoku. Don't use that. I yelled as I ran toward him followed by the curious Junin. Normal Pav. As Jigoku got out of the tree his left hand was engulfed in fire again. This time the fire was larger, it was like the flame was growing as Jigoku got angrier. The flames reacted to Jigoku's rage like it was lighter fluid, growing larger by the second. Not only is his power rising, but it was being felt by one person who can't stand the pain it's giving him. As Naruto, Kin, and Jiraiya leave the gate of Konoha, Naruto suddenly dropped to the ground holding his head groaning in agony. Kin and Jiraiya moved to Naruto's side trying to calm him down. Naruto. What's wrong? Yelled a frightened Kin as she tried to grab her partner in crime, but he moved away from her. 
Naruto's shouting caught the attention the Kunoichi genin who followed the trio to the gate. Out of the four girls Hinata was the most worried about her crush. Naruto clutched his head tighter as the pain grew after every shout. He could barely hold out much longer as his crystal started to form on his forehead in front of everyone. As his crystal formed on his head a small cyclone surrounded him to prevent anyone from getting closer to him. Caught off guard by the cyclone, Jiraiya and Kin were blown away from Naruto and flew five yards from where they were. What's going on? Screamed Sakura as she watched Naruto continue screaming. How should I know, he's your teammate right? Yelled a just as shocked Ino who was trying to keep the sand away from her eyes and hair. Naruto-kun, whispered Hanada as she watched in worry and wishing something would happen to help him. We can't just stand here doing nothing we have to help him, said Tenten trying to get the other girls to react. Before any of them could even think of something Naruto was floating in the air because of the cyclone. He was still holding his head in pain and was still shouting getting everyone's attention as they watched the blonde berserker float in the air. Not only was he shouting at unbelievable levels his chakra was rising at high levels affecting everyone in the village. In the Hyuga manner, both main and branch members felt his power and used their Byakugan. The Inazuka's dogs were whimpering as they felt Naruto's uncontrolled power and the Aburame clan's Kakaichu also felt the immense power from the young berserker and are flying around wildly. Sasuke who was trying to find Naruto, who felt Naruto's chakra signature and ran to the source. Meanwhile back with Jigoku, he was still charging up his attack, until he felt Naruto's ki rising at a dangerous level. Jigoku stopped charging his ki just as Itachi came to see him. The two glared at each other for a few seconds, Itachi sensed that Jigoku was debating with himself between fighting him or leaving. Both men felt a rise in power coming from the main gate and Jigoku dashed to that direction with Itachi following. As Sasuke reached the main gate he saw Naruto floating in midair and Jiraiya, Kin, and the Kunoichi Genin there watching Naruto. Suddenly Naruto let go of his head and started falling toward the ground. Everyone was shocked and Sasuke and Jiraiya tried to reach Naruto before he hit the ground, but they couldn't reach him in time. Before Naruto reached the earth Jigoku leapt into the air from behind Sasuke, caught Naruto and skidded forward when he touched the ground and then tripped and started rolling. Amazingly enough he stood up hold an unconscious Naruto who was unharmed. The Konoha shinobi were surprised by Jigoku's sudden appearance and willingness to put himself in harm's way for Naruto. Before they could say anything Itachi caught up with Jigoku and stared blankly at Jigoku holding Naruto. So, that's where the Yandaimi's legacy is, said Itachi as he continued to stare at Jigoku. Itachi! yelled Sasuke when he saw his brother as he went through hand seals and started forming lightning into his left hand. Dai! Chidori! he yelled as he ran towards his brother with the intent to kill him. When he reached Itachi, Sasuke's Chidori was blocked by his brother. That was pathetic little brother, said Itachi as he threw Sasuke towards the genin. He turned his attention back to the two berserkers. Now hand me the boy and I may let you live, he said as he moved towards Jigoku. Jigoku glared at Itachi, then turned his head and looked at Hanada. Hey Pipsqueak come here and watch over my runt for me, will ya? Said the older berserker. Hanada who was shocked by the nickname obeyed regardless and moved towards Jigoku. Jigoku handed Naruto to Hanada who propped the boy's head onto her lap despite her nervousness. After seeing his brother safe Jigoku turned his attention back to Itachi. All right Mr. Hishi this time the kid glove come off, insulted Jigoku who has basically given everyone in the area a horrible mental image of Itachi. Jigoku moved his arms to the sides and formed his chakra blades in front of everyone. No way. He's a berserker too. Thought Kin as she saw Jigoku use his bloodline for the first time. That's impossible. Naruto's an orphan. How can this guy have the same bloodline as him? Pondered Sakura as she looked at the older berserker. What is this guy? Wondered Tenten staring in awe at Jigoku's chakra formed blades. This is insane. How can he do that without making any hand seals? Thought Jiraiya trying to find the answer to this problem. Where did the Dobi and this freak get this kind of power? Pondered Sasuke as he stared at Jigoku with his Sharingan trying to see if he can copy it, but sadly for him, he can't. I remember seeing Naruto use the same blades. So if this guy can use them and if it's a bloodline then all I have to do to get it in my family is to have either his kids or Naruto's. That shouldn't be a problem, plotted Ino thinking of how her clan's jutsu can be combined with the berserkers. 
interesting, but I doubt it will make a difference, said Itachi who was not impressed. Well then I guess I'll have to give you a demo on what I can do with these babies, responded Jigoku as he dashed towards Itachi. Jigoku attacked Itachi with his right blade swung downwards at Itachi's head. Itachi dodged the attack, and saw that Jigoku's blade cut a nearby tree in two easily. Then Jigoku swung his left blade horizontally at Itachi's gut, but Itachi jumped back to avoid the attack. Itachi stared into Jigoku's eyes and saw that Jigoku was not afraid of him or his Sharingan. All he saw in those cat-like eyes is desire. Desire to kill him and it scared him, because during another dodge Jigoku almost decapitated Tenten who barely ducked from the attack. Suddenly Jigoku jumped into the air and form a pressure shot and fired it at Itachi's head. Itachi lunged forward and fire a huge fireball at Jigoku who was still in the air. Jigoku dodged the attack from midair and landed two feet away from the shinobi and tried to strike at him with his blades again. Just as they continued to fight Kisame came with the Konoha Junin and Ryoga close behind. Itachi. We have to get out of here. Everything's been compromised, yelled Kisame as he dodged one of Ryoga's ice attacks. I agree Kisame, we must leave now, said Itachi as he vanished in a swirl of leaves and Kisame disappeared in a sudden fog. When the fog cleared Jigoku stood there pissed that his opponent bailed out on him. One day after Jigoku and Itachi's first encounter with each other, Jigoku has decided to do the unthinkable, train. Sadly for everyone around his age he has no idea how to actually train. So he does what he does naturally, raise hell of the poor village of Konoha. His first target was the same bar where he fought Ibiki and lost. When he entered the bar he saw a poster with his picture on it with the words, refuse to serve, on a wall. He also saw six Anbu members watching him. The leader who was wearing a bird mask walked up to Jigoku. The two faced each other looking into one another's eyes. Jigoku can tell the Anbu was trembling. Listen you. You're not welcome here. So you better just leave and not cause any trouble right now, said the bird Anbu trying to sound confident. Jigoku just smirked after hearing the Anbu talk. Well sorry but I'm not really here for a drink. In fact I was hoping to find some tough guys to spar with, but all I find are a bunch of wimps in reject Halloween masks who can even put up a fight, taunted Jigoku with the intention to get a rise out of the Anbu squad, it worked. Why you little son of a bai, said the bird Anbu, but Jigoku elbowed him in the gut and did a back flip with his knees hitting the Anbu in the chin. The Anbu hit the ground and his teammates rushed at Jigoku with their killing intent flaring only for Jigoku to smirk and summon his chakra blades. Meanwhile on the road Jiraiya, Kin, and Naruto were on their way to find Sunday. For Jiraiya this journey was going to be harder than he originally thought. Ever since they left Naruto and Kin have been arguing over the most mundane things to pass the time. Just three hours ago those two were fighting over which comic manga hero is better. Now they are fighting over which they think is the best movie of the year. It's Transformers that's the best kin, yelled Naruto. Yeah right, Resident Evil, Extinction is way better than Transformers, countered kin. Can't you two brats get along for once today, yelled Jiraiya having too much of their arguments. Shut up, yelled Naruto and kin as they punched Jiraiya and groan. Jiraiya dropped into the ground holding his manhood while the two continued to argue over their favorite movies. At that same time, Orochimaru who is bedridden is alone with Kabuto and Keke Cage leader Ryo discussing on their next move. Behind Ryo are three figures, two were male and wearing standard shinobi gear. The third was female and was wearing an outfit similar to Anko only less skin is exposed. Her hair was a flaming red color and her eyes were a hazel brown. Her figure could match Sunday's own figure easily. Her teammates were basically one tall muscular guy and a short slightly chubby guy. So Orochimaru, you're going to find your old teammate to take care of your arms? Asked Ryo. Of course, Sunday is the best at the medical arts. Only she can restore my arms, answered Orochimaru as he remembered his former teacher sealing his arms. Well then I guess I should let these three assist you on your quest, said Ryo referring to the three people behind him. Why should I have them help me? Asked Orochimaru. Simple. My sources say that your other teammate Jiraiya has brought not only one of your former shinobi, but also Berserker 3 with him, answered Ryo. Are you still going on about that ridiculous bloodline? Remarked Kabuto who was obviously not impressed with the Berserker bloodline. Apparently you don't pay attention to details, said the female. Regardless of your opinion, you are not capable of defeating a Berserker, not even a child, 
she added to infuriate Kabuto. Oh and you can? taunted Kabuto hoping to put the female in her place. By myself no but with the aid of Nair and Lichid I'm sure we can at least slow him down, countered the female. That is enough Morpha, you and your team have your orders. Now prepare for your mission immediately, ordered Ryo. Yes sir, replied the three blood warriors as they left. As they leave Orochimaru turns his attention to Ryo again. Are you sure it is wise to let them go with me? You told me that they are failed prototypes after all, mentioned Orochimaru. I don't expect them to crush the berserker, but I do expect the lost blood unit to keep the boy busy while you get your arms checked. Besides they are quite useful if you know how to use them, and if they fail it's of no consequence to our plans, answered Ryo. Whose plans? Keke Cage or yours? asked Orochimaru with a smirk on his face. Back in Konoha, Jigoku has just thrashed the six Anbu in the bar and was bored. So he went after some other poor bastards to train with. As he searched Jigoku came across Kiba's sister Hana who ran straight to him with her three dogs. Said dogs were growling at Jigoku, but they were ignored. Hey there cutie, shouted Hana as she reached Jigoku. Do I know you? And if I do it wasn't me that burned down that flower shop said Jigoku trying to save himself from sort of problem that he caused. What? No I'm Hana, the one who got my little brother's dog off of you during that ramen shop incident, said Hana trying to jog Jigoku's memory, sadly for Jigoku at work. Oh yeah, you're that one hot chick who likes dogs, answered Jigoku causing Hana to blush. So any reason why you're here? I'm in the middle of trying to get some sort of training, he continued. Well I was hoping we could have lunch together. You know to get to know each other, requested Hana praying that Jigoku would say yes. I don't know, will any that you know that would try to kill me if I refused? Asked Jigoku in a serious tone. My mother might, answered Hana. Well then, my answer just basically died. Sure where at? Responded Jigoku out of the simple fact that you never anger a girl's parents. I know the perfect place, cheered Hana as she grabbed Jigoku's arm and led him off. The two reached an open field in one of the forest areas of Wella village hidden by you guessed it forest. Hana was watching Jigoku eat some dangos she gave him and her dogs were sleeping nearby. Jigoku finished his sixth dango and reached for a bottle of water when Hana decided to ask him a question. Hey, uh Jigoku, are you and that other guy a couple? She asked. The answer she got was Jigoku spitting his drink out and a small rainbow appeared over the spray of water. What? yelled Jigoku. Where did you get a warped idea like that? He demanded. Well, it's just that you two are always together, so I thought you two were gay, answered Hana, thinking that she ruined her chance to win Jigoku's heart. Ryoga's my best friend. Nothing more, nothing less. Damn, what is wrong with this world nowadays? Is it a law that two guys who hang together have to be gay or something? I swear, there has to be something wrong with women these days to be asking questions like that, ranted Jigoku. Well I'm glad that's case. Anyway why are you trying to get some training? Aren't you already strong enough? Asked Hannah. True, but I finally found someone stronger than me and I can't stand the fact that he ran out on me like I wasn't worth his time, answered Jigoku. Who? Asked Hannah again. Some bastard that looks like that Uchiha brat, replied Jigoku. Itachi. Are you okay? Did he hurt you? Panicked Hannah checking for any wounds on Jigoku. I'm fine. But do you know him? asked Jigoku. Yes, Itachi was the captain of our village's Anbu squad and the one who murdered his entire clan except his brother Sasuke. Why do you want to know? answered Hana. Simple, his bloodline is at a higher level and I want to fight him on equal grounds, said Jigoku, remembering his fight with Itachi. Flashback Jigoku looked around him only to see that the entire area was in different colors, mostly red and black. He tried to walk, but found that his legs were chained to the ground. He tried to pull the chains off, but they would not budge. Seeing that he couldn't break free Jigoku tried to use his chakra blades, but they did not appear. What the? shouted Jigoku in disbelief. Can't break free, not surprising since you're in my Mangekyo. Now you will have the pleasure to suffer the torment of being stabbed by a thousand katana for seventy-two hours, said Itachi as the said katana appeared and thrust itself into Jigoku's gut. The sword pierced Jigoku's stomach slowly as it went deeper in. To Jigoku it felt like something was trying to take something out of him. The second berserker yelled in pain as he struggled to break free from his chains, but failed miserably. 
After what seemed like hours Itachi showed himself to Jigoku holding the katana. Now you have 71 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds to go, said Itachi in a monotone voice. What? shouted Jigoku as his torture continued. End of flashback. I need to get stronger to beat that guy and also so I won't be left behind, muttered Jigoku. Hana watches Jigoku wondering about what he said. Back with Naruto, Kin, and Jiraiya, they have managed to find Tsunade along with Shizune, and their pig Tauntin. They tried to convince her to come back to the village to be the Godem. Sadly their request fell on deaf ears, so Naruto decided on making a bet with Tsunade to get her to agree. The bet was that Naruto could master the Yandaimi's most powerful move the Rasengan in less than a week. Ironically Naruto had no interest in learning the jutsu. So to fix this problem Kin made a bet with Naruto that she could master it before he does. That got Naruto to work on the jutsu, both of them were getting the Rasengan almost down, but still had some problem. As the week nearly reached its end Tsunade decided to meet with Orochimaru and we know how most of that turned out until Naruto, Kin, Jiraiya, and Shizune arrived. When they arrived Orochimaru and Kabuto suddenly called out 30 Auto Nin. They were armed with all sorts of ninja weapons. One of them was even armed with a Zanbato. All of the Auto Nin looked ready to attack at a moment's notice. Everyone looked at the ninjas and didn't like the odds. Except for Naruto, he was overjoyed. A trait he picked up from Jigoku no doubt. This could take forever to fight them. We better retreat now and head for cover, advised Shizun. Nah, that's not necessary, said Naruto as he took off his jacket. What are you talking about Gaki? Asked Jiraiya. I'm saying this will only take five minutes tops, answered Naruto as he walked towards the auto nin. Is he insane or something? Asked Shizun as she watched Naruto walk forward. No. What you're all about to see is Naruto's real power and trust me it's something you'll never forget no matter how much you want to, said Kin. What are you saying? Asked Tsunade. Battle clad, yelled Naruto as a large flash appear around him. Naruto's skin started peeling off his body the same way as Risko's. To Naruto the feeling was painful and exciting at the same time. The vibration blades popped out of his forearms felt like being cut by a katana. Quick and sudden and his chest plates took form and his skin was replaced with the same dark scale of a true berserker. The auto nin watched in horror and amazement as Naruto's battleclad was finished. The Sanin were shocked at seeing Naruto's new body. Shizune and Kabuto were terrified by the fact that Naruto just went against all medical science with this transformation. Well what are you waiting for an invitation or something? Taunted Naruto. The Auto Nin wasted no time in rushing Naruto, but Naruto leapt at them. He rammed his right knee into one ninja's chest so hard the ninja's chest had knee-sized hole in it. Naruto used his left vibration blade to cut another sound nin's right arm off. Blood was flying everywhere and then Naruto used the same shinobi to propel himself to another. He land on the other ninja and stabbed him with his right vibration blade in the head and pulled it out. The other sound ninjas threw their kanai at Naruto who grabbed two kanai that had explosive tags on and threw them back. The two kanai exploded when they reached the Oto Nin and when the dust cleared Naruto was in the air and fired two pressure shots at two Oto Nin and then back flipped away from them. Naruto landed on the ground doing a single hand stand and twisted himself away from the ninjas. Naruto saw one ninja rushing toward him and fire a stun beam at the ninja freezing him in his tracks. Naruto then saw the ninja with the Zanbato and decided to borrow it. Naruto lunged at the shinobi and ripped his head off and grabbed the large sword with one hand. Naruto jumped into the air and land beside three Oto Nin and plunged the sword into their stomachs. After toying with the cannon fodder, Naruto decided to head for the main course. He sprinted towards Orochimaru and Kabuto, but the ground suddenly grabbed onto him. At the same time as Naruto was tearing apart the Oto Nin, at a far off distance the three blood warriors that Ryo assigned to Orochimaru watched and waited. Morpha, should we attack now? Asked the tall man. In a minute Litkid, we need to wait for the right time, said Morpha. Then the shorter male started groaning. Gra, the pain I can't stand it, groaned the short male. Zanair's right, to the rest of Keke Cage were nothing but guinea pigs to those bastards. Especially you Morpha. You're one of the few females who survived the experiments. 
So because of that they decided to fulfill their sick pervert fetishes on you because you're one of us failures, stated Litkid with the hint of venom in the word failures. Yes, but this is our chance to prove ourselves that we are more than just lab rats. I know that we may die facing the boy, but we will succeed no matter what. Let's go, ordered Morpha as Zanair began to change into a humanoid frog-like being while Litkid melted into the earth. What the hell? shouted naruto as he tried to free himself from the ground only to see a face form on the earth as he struggled morpha and zanair walked straight to him feeling stuck kid well don't be shocked liquid is designed to merge with the earth after turning into liquid so he can create a battlefield that is to our advantage explained morpha why you pieces of shit yelled naruto as he moved his arms to form the pressure shot his attack was stopped by zanair shooting a strange mucus at the boy's arms Naruto's arms got stuck to his chest and the mucus hardened instantly. What the, glue, he said in shock. Not just glue kid, it can merge with any living being and hold it fast. So you can say it's a snare for your death, boasted Zanair. Had enough Berserker 3, you have no hope of beating me. For I too am a, said Morpha as her body started to change. Lost blood, she finished as blades appeared on her forearms like Naruto's. Her skin got thicker and a circular gem formed on her forehead. Naruto was in shock at what he saw. It can't be, whispered Naruto. The overall form was nearly identical to his only female obviously. A berserker, he said in shock. There's a fourth berserker, how is that even possible? He thought in fear. Until now you have killed many blood warriors. Now you will die facing your match another berserker. Ha 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 laughed Morpha as she fired her stun beam at Naruto. Naruto dodged the attack as best he could. As for his allies, they watched in shock after seeing a woman turned into something like Naruto. For Kin she took a long hard look at the female berserker. She looked hard at the overall body and noticed a few things missing. Her devastator was missing as well as the rib-like spikes on the stomach. This made her realize that this so-called berserker is a fake. Naruto. Listen she's not a real berserker, shouted Kin trying to get his attention. What? asked Naruto then he looked closely at Morpha's gem. You don't have a crystal at all. Kin's right you're not a real berserker at all, he said as he tried to break free. So what you're good is dead now, said Morpha as she used her blade to attack Naruto. Luckily Naruto broke free of Lichid's hold, jumped away from Morpha's attack and kicked her chin as he back flipped away. Once he landed Naruto was trying to rip his arms free from the glue. Fool if you try to get out by force your body will be torn to shreds, warned Zanair as he watched. I don't care, if I lose this battle now who will stop you freaks? Who's going to bring Oba-chan to Konoha? And more importantly, who will protect my friends? Who's going to protect Hanada-chan? Yelled Naruto as he finally ripped the glue from his body and arms. The blood warriors watched in horror as Naruto moved toward them. None will ever understand. This is a battle I can't afford to lose. He shouted as he opened his right chest plate. Chakra was forming around his chest and he fired his devastator at the two lost bloods. Morpha, shouted Zanair as he pushed Morpha away from the devastator. The blast vaporized Zanair as Morpha looked in horror. Zanair, licked you dumbass. Why did you let him go? Demanded Morpha. I didn't. The brat broke free, explained Litkid, but Naruto rammed his vibration blade into the ground and Litkid was swinging around in agony. Lit QID, no, yelled Morpha as she ran to her teammate only for Naruto to use his hell siren to shatter her left arm. Ah, she screamed. Save, me, Morpha, begged Litkid as he reached out to her. Litkid, whimpered Morpha as she tried to grab his teammate's arm. Sadly her alley's form dissolved as so as they grabbed each other. Litkid, no, she muttered in sorrow. She looked at Naruto in rage. You bastard, she yelled as she ran toward him. Their blades collided with each other's, but Naruto's cut right through Morpha's. That's enough, Ryo-sama, thought Morpha. Retreat Morpha that's an order. But sir, she tried to convince. Those are my orders, retreat now. Yes sir. But remember this Uzumaki Naruto I will kill you one day soon I swear it, threatened Morpha as she leapt into the air. Two days after the battle with Lost Blood Unit, Tsunade finally agreed to Hokage for Konoha. 
When Jiraiya tried to grope Tsunade during the walk only to, to get two Rasengan sending him flying by Naruto and Kin. The rest of the Konoha Genin were glad to see their new leader and their friends back. All except for Sasuke who was more interested in beating Naruto. As Tsunade got herself settled in as the new Hokage by drinking a lot of sake, Naruto was out on a walk with Hinata. To both of them this was great because they wanted time to themselves away from their teams and to be in each other's company. They headed towards a nice restaurant that Kin told Naruto about. Normally Naruto would say screw it and go for ramen, but this time he was with Hinata and he wanted this to be special. Just behind them were Kin following them about four yards away. Even further away was Sasuke who was making himself known by marching towards the couple. Not wanting Naruto's and Hinata's chance at happiness ruined Kin tried to intervene, but luckily Ino came by. To add more to her luck Sakura and Tenten also came. What she saw next was not what she expected nor liked. Sasuke-kun there you are! Yelled Sakura as she lunged for him only for Sasuke to sidestep away. Where's Naruto? Demanded Sasuke. I don't know. I was looking for him to ask him if he wanted to train with me, said Tenten. Why would he want to train with you? When he can spend time with someone as great as me, said Ino showing herself off. Yeah right like someone like Naruto would want to be seen with an immature slut like you, insulted Tenten. What did you say you hussy? Yelled Ino who attacked Tenten. What the hell is this about? Asked Sasuke as he watched the catfight a little turned on as he watched. Well after talking to Kin about why she always hangs out with Naruto and seeing him in different clothes they can't stop thinking about him, explained Sakura. That also means I finally can have Sasuke to myself. Cha. Then they are fools if they think they have a chance now, said Sasuke. Eh, said Sakura not understanding. Naruto's now completely in love with Hinata and everyone knows she's been in love with him. So now Naruto's not going to let anything get between him and her, explained Sasuke. Too bad I want to have a word with him, he added as he marched the couple in the restaurant. Sasuke entered the restaurant and found the table Naruto and Hinata were seated at. He walked up to them ignoring the waiters and waitresses. When he got to the table he looked straight at Naruto, who saw Sasuke and looked back at him. Hinata noticed the tension between the two teammates and was worried that they might start a scene. What do you want Tam? Asked Naruto, obviously not happy his date just got ruined. I want to fight you right now Dobi, demanded Sasuke in his usual tone. Can't it wait until after my date? Hanada-chan and I are still waiting for our food, asked Naruto. No it can't, said Sasuke as he grabbed Naruto and dragged him outside the restaurant. They were followed by Hanada, who was worried about Naruto getting in trouble for Sasuke's reckless action. Both teammates stood away from each other in front of the restaurant collecting a crowd. Among the crowd were Kiba and Akamaru, Shino, Shikamaru, Choji, Kin, Sakura, Ino and Tenten, both looking a little roughed up. Civilians and shinobi of all ages were there and once the saw Sasuke standing in front of Naruto they figured a fight was going to start. None of the shinobi tried to stop it since they want to see Sasuke beat Naruto. Sasuke rushed towards Naruto who dodged the first attack. Sasuke threw an impressive string of combos but Naruto moved away from the movement similar to Jigoku. Sasuke threw a left hook at Naruto, but Naruto ducked from the punch and performed a spinning hook kick with his left foot. The kick connected with Sasuke's jaw, this caused cries of protest from the spectators. Angered by this Sasuke activated his Sharingan and leapt towards the rooftops with Naruto following. When Naruto reached the roof he saw Sasuke form the seals needed for the Chidori. The sound of birds chirping caught everyone's attention. What the, are those birds chirping? Asked Kin. It must be the Chidori, said Sakura. Chidori, asked Kin. It's Kakashi Sensei's only original jutsu. He taught it to Sasuke-kun for the finals of the Chunin exams, explained Sakura. His only original jutsu, he must not be very creative then, commented Kin. So what, as long Sasuke-kun has the Sharingan, he can't lose, boasted Sakura. You sure, take a better look, stated Kin pointing at the fight. Just as Sasuke reached Naruto with the Chidori something unexpected happened. Naruto sidestepped to the right and grabbed Sasuke's left arm and twisted it behind Sasuke's back. Naruto placed Sasuke's hand away from both of them so neither would be harmed. 
The look in Naruto's face showed that he was not happy with this so-called fight. Are we done now Sasuke? Snapped Naruto still holding the Uchiha's arm in place. In case you haven't noticed things are different now. The gap between us are switched and larger. I've been way out of your league ever since I've unlocked the true form of my berserker bloodline so don't even bother trying to fight me again, he continued in an almost berserker-like snarl. Naruto, let Sasuke go now or should you try putting your claim to the test against me? Ordered Kakashi who just arrived. Naruto looked at his teacher with disgust as he let go of his teammate's arm. Like you can even beat either of my brothers. You're even more pathetic than Sasuke, Kakashi, growled Naruto who didn't even bother calling him sensei. What makes you think I can't? Questioned Kakashi not liking Naruto's attitude. He means that you're so useless without that Sharingan that facing Ryogarami would be nothing but a cruel joke, said Jigoku who decided to pop up. Oh, how so? asked Kakashi. Well let's see, not once have I've ever seen you put any effort into a fight. Your smug attitude shows that you have a huge ego. And let's not forget my favorites. You are not very creative if you have to copy others' hard-earned moves and you show a willingness to pick favorites, listed Jigoku without a second thought on thinking if any of this is true. Maybe I have a reason to choose who to train, replied Kakashi. Oh like what? To get that brat strong enough to face Itachi. Forget it the kid's got no chance in taking his brother down, countered Jigoku. And you do, asked Kakashi. More than you ever did, stated Jigoku. Two weeks later, Sasuke left the village with the Sound 4 and Shikamaru was ordered to form a team to retrieve him. His team consists of his buddy Choji, Kiba and Akamaru, Neji, himself, and Naruto. They gave chase but they had no choice but to split up as they kept facing members of the Sound 4. One by one the team grew smaller, until it was just Naruto and Sasuke at the valley of the end. The fights against the Sound 4 or 5 whichever works for all of you ends the same way as the actual series. Only Neji won his with only one eye. You knew it would come to this dobi, said Sasuke. What makes you say that Tem? Asked Naruto. Simple this is where the Shodime fought my ancestor Madara fought in this same valley. And now here we are about to make their fight come full circle, answered Sasuke. Fine but how about we spice up this fight at a different level, commented Naruto as he went battle clad. You've read my mind, said Sasuke as he went level 2 on his curse mark. As the two former teammates rushed towards each other, Baruka got an unwelcome guess in his apartment. He entered his apartment to find it vandalized with all of his belongings broken. He saw a dark figure in the center and took a defensive stance. Who are you and what are you doing in my apartment? Demanded Aruka. Oh, just waiting for you to show up, said the figure who started shifting his form into a large mutant form. What are you? Asked Aruka as he tried to get away from the blood warrior. Back with Naruto and Sasuke, the fight grew more vicious than ever before. Sasuke flew into the air and hurled fire balls at Naruto, who dodged them with ease. Naruto jumped into the air and delivered a strong roundhouse kick to Sasuke's right wing hand thing. Sasuke spun to the left wildly, but regained control and flew at Naruto and tackled him to the water. Before they hit the water's surface Naruto grabbed the Uchiha's right arm and flipped him into the water. Naruto stood on the watery surface and glared at where his former teammate hit the water. Sasuke grabbed the young berserker's left ankle and pulled him in. Sasuke pushed Naruto under him and tried to drown Naruto by choking him while underwater. Unknown to him, Naruto's spike on his stomach opened up and allowed oxygen to flow into Naruto like a pair of gills. Using this to his advantage Naruto double-kicked Sasuke away from him and both of them leapt to the air. They both landed away from each other and stared each other down. Why can't you just let me go? If you're doing this because you promised Sakura that you would bring me back. Forget it I'm not coming back, ever, demanded Sasuke as he prepared to use the Chidori. Ha, huh, yeah right, like I'm going to even waste my time promising to that stuck up anything. I'm only doing this because I can't stand it when someone as strong as me ditching me without telling me the reason, replied Naruto as he got his Rasengan ready. Nani, said Sasuke, Sakura came up to me when Shikamaru and the rest of us were leaving. She begged me to bring you back. Can you believe it? 
I thought she finally lost it when I told her that I'm not keeping any promises if it meant that the team might get killed just to bring you back. And all she said was, who cares what happens to them so long as Sasuke comes back to me, I swear that girl is Ed in the head. It's no surprise you want nothing to do her, I'm glad I got over her too or else I might not have had a chance with Hinata, explained Naruto. You've always had a chance with Hinata you dope, she's in love with you, in fact I think out of all the three girls, Hinata's is the most genuine when it comes to love, interrupted Sasuke. True, but my love life and your non-existent one are not the point. The point is I'm not here to actually bring you back for her, but just so I can have a decent person to fight, continued Naruto. Too bad I'm not coming back, not until I kill my brother Itachi, said Sasuke. You have a brother, asked Naruto. Yes, it was he who murdered my clan and left me to suffer, answered Sasuke. So you're going to Orochimaru just so you can gain more power to kill your own brother to avenge your family, muttered Naruto. Then to Sasuke's surprise Naruto dispersed his Rasengan. Okay Sasuke, get out here, ordered Naruto. Huh, responded Sasuke. Go to Orochimaru, get the power you want and come find me so we can finish up where we left off. Then you can go look for your brother and kill him before Aniki fights him again, explained Naruto as he started to walk away. Why are you doing this Naruto? demanded Sasuke. Simple, if you get stronger I can fight you and enjoy it before you face your brother. Besides Nissan told me everyone has to chose how they want to live their lives and how they want to die. So I'm letting you keep your choice, said Naruto. Sasuke looked at Naruto and to their surprise smiled. Thank you Naruto said Sasuke. Yeah well get going. Oh and you might want to check up on that girl with the flute. She seems to be your type, rude and a pain in the ass. Better hurry or she might end up dead, said Naruto. And I care why, commented Sasuke. Hey you said your second goal is to revive your clan right. Well you need to start somewhere and she seems to be strong. Plus if that doesn't work out, you know that it's surprisingly legal for a guy like you to have plenty of wives, joked Naruto. I'll keep that in mind, but I'm only going for strong women, replied Sasuke. Just stay away from Hinata-chan and Kin or I'll tear your nuts out and feed them to Akamaru. Since you said you're going for strong women I should warn you. Keep your distance from that Anko lady, she's very scary, warned Naruto as they both shivered at the thought of being near the snake mistress. With that Naruto left to retrieve his teammates leaving Sasuke alone. Maybe I should check to see if Tatuya is okay. Besides she's got a nice ass, though Sasuke as he left thinking about Tatuya's assets. Naruto returned to the Konoha village and got a rude welcome back from Sakura and every villager who hates his guts with a passion. He was being yelled at by Sakura for not bringing back Sasuke like she asked. Finally Naruto had enough and punched Sakura in the face. Everyone was shocked by Naruto's actions. Hanada tried to get between her crush and his teammate, but Kin stopped her. Hanada you need to trust Naruto. Everything he does is for a reason, said Kin as they watched. Sakura when will you get it through your thick skull? Sasuke wants nothing to do with you and neither do I anymore. You need to get your head out of the clouds and face the facts. Sasuke doesn't love you and I seriously doubt you did either, said Naruto in a neutral tone. How dare you Naruto, you don't know anything about love so how could you understand how I feel? Screamed Sakura as she glared at Naruto. You're right I don't know anything about love because you know what, I've felt never love before. Remember I'm an orphan, so how would I know what love is when I've spent my life being ignored and harmed? I've only recently felt love in my life from a small group of people so it's new to me, said Naruto as he walked away. Hanada I think it's best you go talk to him. He needs you more than ever right now, said Kin as she pushed Hinata in Naruto's direction. As Naruto walked down the streets of the village he found himself in front of his old teacher's apartment. Deciding on seeking some fatherly advice from his father figure, Naruto knocked on the door to find it open. He entered the apartment to find it totally thrashed. Fearing for the worst Naruto rushed in to find his former teacher, but could not find him at all. Looking for someone, asked a threatening voice. On instinct Naruto grabbed the nearest object a stool to use as a weapon when he saw a civilian looking man in front of the door. What, is some sort of a sad joke? Taunted the man as he started to change. 
His shoulders grew strange tube-like funnels coated in black fur. His hands turned into two-fingered claws and two serrated whip-like tails appeared on his back. He grew to be at least six foot ten with a bulk built. You're gonna need more than that to beat the hyper-blood nitrodime, boasted nitrodime. Shit, how did this blood warrior manage to get in the village? All the blood warrior in R should have been killed during the invasion, thought Naruto as looked for an escaped route. Nitrodime used his whips to stop Naruto, but Naruto jumped out the window and landed in the streets. As he tried to keep his distance from the hyper blood, Naruto met up with all five Kunoichi Genin. Apparently Sakura still wanted to add her two cents after Naruto snapped at her. Before any of that could happen Hinata screamed as she saw flames appearing in the distance. More specifically in the direction of her home. Everyone saw her fearful expression and they all went to the Hyuga Manor to find it in flames. Hanada saw her father, but she couldn't find her sister anywhere. Oto-san, where's Hanabi-chan? Asked Hanada almost begging for her sister's safety. I don't know. I've ordered everyone to find but they haven't seen her and for some reason the Byakugan won't work to see through the fire, explained Hiyashi just as worried. Without thinking about any other options Naruto ran into the burning home to search for Hanada's baby sister. The Hyugas tried to stop him but couldn't reach him in time. Berserker! Yelled Naruto as he entered the building to protect him from the fire. He looked everywhere until he found her in her room trying to stay away from the fire around her. There she is! Declared Naruto as he broke into the room and grabbed Hanabi. Outside everyone was worried for Hanabi's safety and for Hanada and Kin's case Naruto. A part of the manor exploded and Naruto leapt out and landed in front of the Hyuga clan with Hanabi in his arms. Everyone who's never seen Naruto in battle clad were scared thinking he was a demon. Even Ino and Tenten backed away, while Hanada went up to Naruto who handed her Hanabi. The Hyuga sisters hugged each other closely while Naruto looked at them smiling at their safety. Then he turned his attention to the source of the problem. Kin, make sure everyone's fine. I'm gonna have a little talk with a certain hyper blood ordered Naruto as he ran towards Nitrodime. What? Hey wait! said Kin, but it was too late Naruto was already gone. Up at the rooftops Nitrodime was enjoying himself causing mayhem. Ha ha ha! Burn baby burn! He yelled as he fired strange liquids that mixed together and caused everything they touched to explode. Stop it! yelled Naruto as he sprinted to his enemy and firing his stun beam. Nitrodime dodged the attack and fired his liquid at Naruto who dodged the attack. Sadly the shinobi who followed Naruto got caught in the liquid's path. One of them was hit by the liquids and was engulfed in flames and exploded. The flames flew at the others and they too were engulfed in the fires. The two enhanced warriors chased each other on the rooftops being watched by everyone. Did you really think that your pathetic little village was safe just because Keke Cage no longer occupies it? Fool our organization is worldwide said Nitrodime as he jumped to the academy's roof. Nani! said Naruto as he caught up. Nitrodime then leapt away from Naruto and landed at another building. That's right we have a base in every hidden village, every city, and even in small towns, added Nitrodime as he fired his liquids at the roof Naruto was going to land on. Naruto fell into the building that caught on fire. Not only that, but we also have a surprise for you old teacher Aruka who's now being taken to our main headquarters in Mount Gyo. Good luck trying to rescue him kid you'll need it, bragged Nitrodime as his body started to dissolve. Instead of screaming in pain, Nitrodime was laughing as he died. A few hours later the flames were extinguished and the able-bodied genin were searching for Naruto. They looked at the last area where he was at and searched. Kin, Hanada, and Hanabi were looking at one side while Sakura, Ino, and Tenten looked at the opposite. Their search was cut short when Naruto pushed himself out of the rubble he was under. The girls saw him and Ino and Tenten went into a guard stance while Hanada, Hanabi, and Kin rushed toward him. As for Sakura she was debating on whether to go up and hit him or back away. Naruto. You okay? Asked Kin as she helped her friend up. Hanada and Hanabi also tried to help since Naruto's a lot heavier in his battle-clad form. Ino and Tenten were shocked to see that the so-called demon is Naruto. Forget about me. We got to save Aruka sensei yelled Naruto as he struggled to get up. Anyo. What do you mean Naruto-kun? Asked Hanada as she tried to help him. Keke Cage kidnapped him, yelled Naruto as he ran off to the village gates. The girls watched him leave and felt like something terrible will happen. 
Inside Tsunade's office Kurinai, Hanada, Ino, Tenten, Kin, and Sakura were standing in front of Tsunade's desk. The seemingly young-looking Hokage had told them about Aruka's capture and wanted them to rescue him and stop Naruto from causing more harm than good. Even though I believe we should act now, I need to know one important thing, said Tsunade as she looked at the Kunoichi in front of her. What would that be Tsunade-sama? asked Kurinai. I need to know more about this berserker bloodline limit. I've read the reports the village has about it, but they're useless. There isn't enough data on it at all, answered Tsunade as she placed the files she was talking about on her desk. That's not surprising, since the only person who knows enough about the berserker bloodline hasn't even written a report, commented Kin. You mean Naruto never bothered to tell anyone about it? asked Ino. Well he told me that he wouldn't and made me promise not to either, replied Kin. Kin I need to know more about Naruto's bloodline. Can I ask you to tell me everything you know, stated Kin. And I am giving you a direct order, she added. All right, but I should probably start from when I've first seen it. And keep in mind this is from my side of the story. I don't know how long Naruto's known about his bloodline. Flashback back with Team 7. Well things are not looking up for them. First they were attacked by Mist Nin, then by Orochimaru, and then the Sound Nin. Lee jumped in to help Sakura while Sasuke and Naruto were out cold. After he was beaten Team 10 jumped in. Sasuke finally awoke with the curse mark activated. He beat Zaku and started to rip his arms off until three other nin came in. Hey Vikor, who are we after again? Asked one of the nin. Who knows, all I know is that it's a boy with a powerful bloodline, answered Vikor. Are they after Sasuke as well? Thought Dosu. Hey Bregule. Why don't you play with these kids? We'll find the right one that way, suggested the third nin. Great idea Ramo, responded Bregule as his body started to shift. His muscles started to expand, he grew taller, past the seven-foot mark. His skin got thicker and he grew tusk under his jaw. The young genin were freaked out by Bregule's appearance. Sasuke charged at him and backfisted him, but it did nothing. Sasuke gasped in shock because his power boost did nothing. What was that? taunted Bregule as he backfisted Sasuke, sending him flying right into a tree. Sasuke! yelled Sakura and Ino. As Bregule started walking toward them, he stopped when he saw Naruto walk toward him, glowing red orange chakra. I don't know who you think you are, but you're dead, said Bregule, throwing his fist at Naruto. Naruto caught Bregule's arm and pushed it back. Everyone was shocked, especially Sasuke, Neji, Dosu, and Shikamaru. The two grabbed each other's hands and were trying to overpower each other. Then Naruto twisted Bregule's arms breaking them. Blood started spraying out as Bregule yelled in pain. Who are you? asked Bregule. He got no answer it was like Naruto wasn't even awake. You bastard, he yelled as he charged at Naruto. He lifted Naruto off the ground. All was silent until a spray of blood erupted. Bregule dropped to the ground with his neck snapped. Vakor and Reimo were shocked the genin there were shaking. They just saw a man more than twice their size get killed by a short 12-year-old kid like he was nothing. No way. That brat killed Bregule, yelled Ramo. Well don't just stand there, take him down, ordered Vakor coming out of his shock. Without another word Ramo's body expanded like Bregule only slightly smaller and then he formed two more of himself and they attacked Naruto. Two of the three Ramos grabbed both of Naruto's arms. Naruto managed to slide his arms out of their grip and thrust his left hand into one's chest. Once he pulled his hand back, that Ramo's chest burst with blood as he fell to the ground. Suddenly Naruto did a jump kick right into the other Ramo's head. The second Ramo's neck snapped and he too fell to the ground. No way, when did Naruto get so strong? Thought Sakura as she and everyone else watched Naruto grab the last Ramo by his arms and pull them behind his back impaling him with his own shoulder blades. So now it's my turn, yelled Vikor as his shoulders started to enlarge about two head sizes wide. But I'm not like Bregule or Ramo. I'm in a class of my own, he added as his shoulders started to open and start gathering chakra and he fired at Naruto. Luckily Naruto dodged the blast by getting in between the beams. How do you like my high output chakra cannons? They're not equipment either, they are a part of my very flesh. I am a chakra blasting killing machine explained Vakor as he fired again only for Naruto to leap out of the way. Quick on your feet aren't ya, commented Vakor as he kept firing and missing. Hold still damn it, he yelled. 
What the hell is going on? Asked a frightened Kin. How the should I know? Answered a just as frightened Zaku as he watched the battle. Suddenly Vikor stopped shooting when he noticed Choji and smirked. Well then, if you're not going to stay still. Then I'll just have to vaporize your fat little friend here, threatened Vikor as he turned to face Choji. Hey. I'm not, yelled Choji, but he stopped when Vikor aimed his chakra blasters at him. Before he fired Naruto gathered his chakra into his hands after he jumped between Vikor and Choji. What the bloody hell? Yelled Vikor before he fired his blasters. As he fired his chakra beams, Naruto fired the gathered chakra from his hands. The two energy beams collided, Naruto's blast overpowered Vikor's own and engulfed him. The blast started peeling his flesh off his bones as he yells in agony. Then the blast moved on to his bones vaporizing them. Afterwards the blast continued forward and wasted everything in its path. Naruto turned and looked at the gathered genin. Choji started backing away until Naruto spoke. End of flashback, that was when I've first seen Naruto use his bloodline. At first I though Orochimaru put his curse mark on him, but I later found out as wasn't, narrated Kin as she continued strolling down memory lane. Flashback again. There are going to be a lot of flashback mainly as a recap and so the 50 year old big breast woman will know what she has on her side. Alright, who are you and what do you want? Demanded the blonde. The female shinobi revealed herself to Naruto. Hey you're that sound girl with the head injury, aren't ya? He asked. Well you're obviously not as dumb as you look, answered the sound kunoichi. Before anything else could be said four tentacles appeared out of the river to attack them. The two genin managed to dodge the tentacles and saw a shinobi dressed similar to Kakashi minus the mask and forehead protector. He also has slick back red hair. He was standing on top of the water surprising the two young shinobi. I have to say you are indeed light on your feet boy. Maybe that's why Vakor's team couldn't beat you. However said the ninja as he got hit by Kin's senbon that she threw at him. The senbon stuck to him, but slowly popped off. I'm not like them at all. Because I am in a league of my own, he continued as he grew for more tentacles on his back. His fingers started to grow end cups with teeth in them and fins on his legs. He grew to about 6 foot 8 in an instant. For I, October Kill will be the one to defeat you Berserker 3, declared October Kill. Well then, come and get me October Kill challenged Naruto not even wondering about being called Berserker 3 as he ran down beside the river to get some distance away from Kin. As October Kill gave chase, none of them noticed a man watching from a distance. Back with Naruto and October Kill they reached the waterfall which leads to the bathhouse. October Kill spat out ink right into Naruto's face. Naruto tried to shake the ink off, but October Kill rushed toward him. Naruto quickly delivered a quick kick to his head, but it did nothing. Then Naruto threw his right fist into October Kill's face. Again nothing really happened except October Kill's face caved in and moved back into place. Heh, heh, surprised. My body is soft and pliant. Which means I can absorb any blow that is aimed at me, so your taijutsu is useless, boasted October Kill. After hearing this Naruto tried to jump away from October Kill. Sadly October Kill used his tentacles to grab Naruto's limbs, his waist, his shoulders, and his neck. Then October Kill started to swing Naruto into a tree and then into the ground. As October Kill continued his assault, Kin reached them to see Naruto be slammed into the ground again. Ah ha ha! I've done it! I've defeated Berserker 3! shouted October Kill pleased with himself for beating Naruto. Damn it! If only I could summon my bloodline, thought Naruto. Then in a sudden red-orange flash, October Kill's tentacles were cut into pieces. Impossible! How did he? complained October Kill as he looked at the blonde berserker. When the flash cleared Naruto was seen kneeling with his chakra blades on his forearms. October Kill couldn't believe that Naruto had progressed this far. Kin was amazed by this turn of events. Unreal. That kid can make swords out of chakra. Is that even possible? Thought Kin as she continued to watch. You, you bastard. Shouted October Kill as he ran at Naruto with his end cupped hands straight out. I'll kill you he yelled. Naruto ran towards October Kill and delivered a vertical slash with his left arm. They stood still four yards away from each other. Then October Kill turned and faced Naruto's back. No, this can't be, ah! Wind October Kill is split in half. Then the two halves fell to the ground with all his blood and intestines falling out. 
Naruto's blade stayed on his arms instead of vanishing like last time. He turned and faced Kin who was standing there with a look of amazement on her face. Hey, are you okay? Asked Naruto. Yeah, but that was unbelievable. Where did you learn that? Responded Kin completely forgetting about why she was following Naruto. Well uh, it's my bloodline but I can't really use it that well, answered Naruto. That's because it's being wasted on someone undeserving of our power, said a male voice. The two nin turned to face a tall man with cyan hair. He wore a black business suit and stood with his hands in his pockets. The two genin could feel no killing intent, but he still made them feel uneasy. Who the hell are you? Demanded Naruto as he got into his stance. You've forgotten already? Oh well, it's no surprise, this is our first actual meeting. I am Risko, but I am also battle clad, shouted Risko. What the two genin saw shocked them. Risko's suit was burned away. His skin peeled off his entire body, his manhood vanished and his toes fused together to form two toed feet. Then two long straight blades popped out of his forearms and went past his elbows. Then dark scale like skin covered his entire body. His chest formed two chest plates with hinges on the sides. He also has bone like spikes on the sides of his stomach. Finally, a crystal with one point appeared on the center of his forehead. A berserker like you, he finished in a deep, almost metallic voice. End of flashback, that was how we met Risco, who was referred as Berserker One, finished Kin. Berserker One, said Tenton, who was captivated by the story. Yeah, because he was the oldest of the last berserkers, replied Kin as she continued. Flashback, a berserker? asked Naruto. I've heard about them. They are said to be the most dangerous group of people, but I thought they were a myth, said Kin. Oh, we're more that that little girl. We berserkers are blessed with great power by the first berserker. Those he attacked, he turned into warriors like him. Then our gift gradually developed into an actual bloodline. Many feared our power and wished for our extinction, but I've survived and found out about the first two purebred berserkers, explained Risko. Naruto had no idea what Risko was saying. It was too much for him to keep up with. Here he is being told that he's a berserker and this guy has pretty much explained his bloodline in a short way. Yet somehow Naruto felt that there is more to his bloodline. As he is being deep in thought Risko noticed Naruto's dazed look. I can see that history isn't your best subject. Simply put you, me, another guy are the last of our kind. But don't think that makes you special you're not even close to my level, said Risko. And why is that asshole? Asked Naruto. Because you haven't reached our true form yet, answered Risko. Hey, don't listen to him he's just trying to scare you, encouraged Kin. Too bad it's working, Naruto mentally remarked. Oh right, there's still you to get rid of, said Risko as his crystal started to glow. Naruto moved in front of Kin when Risko shot at her. Naruto was momentarily stunned, but he managed to move again. I won't let you harm anyone just to get to me, declared Naruto as he ran back into the forest. Well then, I guess I'll have to give you a crash course on Berserker 101, said Risko as he gave chase. A minute later Risko caught up with Naruto easily. After he was right beside Naruto, Risko's crystal started to glow again. This crystal on my forehead lowers the temperature around me to paralyze my opponents, he explained as he fired at Naruto. Before the beam hit him Naruto flipped forward to dodge the attack and retaliated by throwing a kanai at Risko. Risko dodged the kanai and rushed toward Naruto and fire his crystal again. We call it the stun beam said Risko as he continued to rush at Naruto again. Naruto dodged the stun beam and tried to slash at Risko with his chakra blades, but Risko dodged each of his attacks by side-stepping and then jumped into the air. He rolled in the air and then his blades flipped forward and started vibrating. These blades vibrate at high frequencies which allow them to cut through almost everything, explained Risko as he cut down two trees with his blades. Naruto managed to avoid the falling trees only to be kicked in the head by Risko's right leg. Naruto was sent flying to one of the fallen trees and hit it hard leaving a dent in the trunk of the down tree. It looks like you're not familiar with these, taunted the older berserker. Damn it! yelled Naruto as he lunged at Risko trying to strike him down with his chakra blade again. Unfortunately his arm was caught, Naruto tried to break free but Risko's grip was too strong. Looks like you failed the lesson stated the elder berserker as he opened his right chest plate. Naruto could see the chakra gathering into Risko's chest right in front of him. 
The amount of chakra was enormous that if he didn't break free he would defiantly be dead. Off in the distance Kin saw a huge blast of chakra fly to the right about two miles in front of her. Holy shit. I don't know who fired that, but hopefully that kid got that guy, said Kin as she leapt toward the blast site. Back with Naruto he managed to the blast, but he was exhausted. As he tried to get up Risco walked up to him. Naruto saw that the spikes on Risco's sides moved outward and air blew out and ed in more air. Naruto also felt the chakra around him head toward Risco's stomach as well. He's absorbing the chakra around him. Does that mean he can use an infinite amount of chakra? Thought Naruto in shock. That was the devastator, our kind's most powerful weapon. Its only drawback is that because it uses a large amount of chakra it cannot be used in repetition. Do you see now? The difference in power between your pre-battle clad form and the real deal. Now if we're done playing around I would like to take you back to Keke Cage HQ with me. As an important test subject that is, spoke Risco. Th. That's not going to happen, shouted the struggling young berserker. You don't get it do you? If you continue to resist you will, started Risco until his body froze up. To Naruto it looked like Risco's body was deforming. That was the last thing he saw before he blacked out. End of flashback, after that it was just one battle against Keke Cage after another, said Kin. You get the idea right about now when Naruto reached the area he wanted to train at he saw Kin. After their first meeting the two of them got along pretty well despite the insanity of the battles they've encountered. They quickly became good friends though they have never talked about each other's village. Hey Kin, so what's final verdict? Asked Naruto as he reached her. Well, I think it's best that we let your Hokage know about these guys that are after you, answered Kin in a serious tone. Are you crazy? This isn't some simple invasion from some other village. These guys are attacking me from inside my hometown. There is no way we can get Hokage Gigi involved, explained Naruto. Are you listening to yourself? This is a life or death situation. These people will hunt you down and will continue unless we can get some help, argued Kin. Okay I get, you don't have to bite my head off, said the verbally defeated Naruto. Too bad you both won't be able to do just that, said a mysterious voice. The two turned toward the source of the voice. They saw two men stand in front of them. They started to change their forms into something similar to Reimo, but their bodies were more ape-like. The two blood warriors charged at the two genin. As that happened Naruto jumped forward and stomped on one's head. The amount of force Naruto applied was enough to smash into that blood warrior's brain. After Naruto landed behind his downed opponent he turned around and summoned a chakra blade and ran to the other one. The other blood warrior turned to charge at Naruto, but as he ran to the boy Naruto cut him horizontally in half. After defeating the two mutants Naruto walked toward Kin with a bore expression on his face. What's wrong? Things becoming too easy now? Asked the sound Kunoichi. Instead of answering Kin, Naruto leapt toward her, grabbed her by the waist and leapt out of the way before some sort or red liquid hit them. When the liquid hit the ground, the ground started dissolving. The two looked for the source and saw another blood warrior. This one was huge, his shoulders were large with spikes on them. His forearms were bulgy and had two gems like orbs on them. His body was very thick, the kind of thick that could walk away from being hit by a tank if any existed in Naruto's world. Damn. This looks a lot tougher than the others have fought, though Naruto as he set Kin down and rushed the blood warrior. Naruto threw a punch at the blood warrior but it had no affect on him. Wasting no time the new opponent swung his right arm, slugging Naruto away from him. This surprised the root members since they just saw Naruto kill two of these freaks easily, and now he is getting beaten by this one. Naruto got up, leapt into the air and started spinning to drop an axe kick on top of this blood warrior's head. But his attack was caught by his enemy and he was thrown across the area. I actually thought you were stronger than this berserker. You can't beat me, I am the hyperblood Zurus, boasted Zurus. Hyperblood? I've never would have though that there were different types of these things, whispered Kin watching from the sides. Soon enough the fight that was once head to head turned into a hit and run. Sadly the hit and run is not one of Naruto's strong suits. Every quick attack did had no affect on Zurus. Naruto tried to use his chakra blade, but he was caught by Zerus's left hook and spun around and was grabbed of behind. Ha ha ha. I can't believe that the Konoha branch couldn't beat a weakling like you. It's pathetic, taunted Zerus as he threw Naruto to the ground. 
Kin was about to jump in regardless of knowing she wouldn't stand a snowball's chance in hell. Oddly thought the root members jumped in to stop the assault. Sadly for them Zurus wasn't done playing with his prey. That's enough you, leave that empty vessel alone now, ordered one of the roots. Why should I? Asked Zurus not really caring. Because you are trespassing on our village and therefore you should ah. Started the poor fool before Zurus shot out the same red liquid from his tongue. The liquid quickly dissolved the root member. The second member was scared shitless. He turned away and ran, but he wasn't quick enough. Despite Naruto and Kin's pleas for Zurus to stop the other root member was also dissolved. He screamed in agony as his body dissolved by the liquid. You, you son of a, yelled Naruto as he got up and charged at Zurus and delivered a roundhouse kick to his side. The attack did nothing, then Zurus slugged Naruto into a tree. Damn it, none of my attack work. If only I can pierce through his thick body, said Naruto struggling to get up. As he got up he felt the gravity around him get lighter. What the? Is this a new power from my bloodline? Questioned Naruto as his arms automatically moved to his waist. From between his hands the black orb from his nightmare appeared. Naruto can feel the power from within the orb and knew that this will do the job. Kin watched in amazement at this new move that Naruto discovered. What the hell is that? Asked Zurus feeling a little worried. Wasting no time Zurus moved his arms forward and his gems started to glow. Take this punk. He yelled as beams of energy fired from his gems. As the beams reached Naruto, the black orb was shot at Zurus. The beams hit the orb, but they were deflected from the orb and hit the ground. The orb was flying toward Zurus who moved to get away from it, but the black orb pierced his left shoulder easily. Zurus yelled in pain from the wound. What the hell? It's like Naruto fired some sort of ball of air pressure or something, commented Kin in surprise. Does his bloodline even have any limits? She asked herself. Why you little, started Zurus. Enough, retreat now Zurus. Huh. Ryo sama, but why I can still take him, whined Zurus. You were just hit by a gravity weapon. If you continue to fight you will be defeated so return now. Yes sir, said Zurus as he jumped away from Naruto and disappeared into the forest. After Zurus left Kin walked up to Naruto, she could tell that he was both tired and upset. Still think we should tell Hokage Gigi about this? Asked Naruto in a dark tone. Another flashback meanwhile, about five buildings away Naruto leapt from one building to the seventh one after the first. He was carrying Kin as he did this. To any who could look, it seems like Kin was about ready to puke. The trip finally came to a halt as soon as they reached the unabandoned part of the village. I think that'll put enough distance between him and us, said Naruto. Yeah, but what the hell were you thinking? You can't just use your bloodline like that in front of so many people, yelled Kin. Would you do any different? asked Naruto. No I guess I wouldn't, but that was still reckless, answered Kin. Yeah, sorry, it's just, huh? started Naruto until he noticed something. What is it? asked Kin. The air, it's vibrating, answered the young berserker. Just as soon as he said that a transparent orb was heading towards the two genin. They managed to dodge the orb in time only to see a crater on the ground they were at. Suddenly Naruto saw the man from before standing in front of them. Before he could react, he was hit by another orb. Naruto. Behind you. Yelled Kin moving away from the battlefield. Damn it, I hate being useless in this stuff, she thought. Behind Naruto was another man in plain clothing. Much like the other he was average looking. The only difference was that this one has a sadistic smirk on his face. The first man was first to speak to Naruto. You may have been able to beat Zurus, but we're not like Zurus, started the first man. That's right kid. This is a whole new ball game, finished the second as he and the first one started to mutate. Their bodies grew and expanded much like the other blood warriors. Their shoulders expanded in a similar manner as Vikor's, only more flatter. They grew horns on top of their heads as well. I'm the hyperblood Myuzik, yelled the second man. And I'm the hyperblood Noyes, yelled the first blood warrior. See you in hell kid, shouted Myuzik as his shoulders started vibrating and created two transparent orbs. Myuzik fired the orbs at Naruto who managed to dodge the attacks. Suddenly he was hit in back again, this time by Noyes as he generated two more orbs. The two hyperbloods continued their assault on Naruto while all he could do is run and dodge. 
The attacks were becoming more frequent from Mayuzik who seems to be enjoying himself as he continued his attack. The attack became so intense that the area was covered in dust. It was so thick no one could see anything. Using this to his advantage, Naruto grabbed Kin and got them out of the area before the dust cleared. After the dust cleared all that was left was a demolished abandoned area, a confused Mayuzik, and a pissed Noyes. They got away. Way to go Mayuzik, we just lost the target. You need to learn to control yourself, said Noyes. Oh shut up. All I did was turn a boring mission into a fun game. Ha ha ha. Argued Mayuzik as he leapt into the air. That moron. In theory we are capable of crushing anything with our sonic blasters. How did that brat survive our attack? Questioned Noyes as he followed his teammate. Meanwhile, inside an abandoned warehouse Naruto and Kin were discussing on a battle strategy. A sound wave attack. Asked Naruto. Yeah, it's similar to Zaku's but it's more advanced. Still it should have the same flaw as Zaku's, answered Kin as she started to draw a diagram on the ground. You if my theory is correct then their attack can only travel in a straight path. Also they should also have a delay just before they fire. Probably two or three seconds, she explained. Do you think you can beat them with small window of opportunity? She asked. Before Naruto could answer Mayuzik can be seen charging towards them. His sonic blasters were charging up for another sound attack. Well I guess we'll find out, commented Naruto as he ran off to face Mayuzik. Mayuzik fired his sonic blasters at Naruto, but the attack was dodged easily. Then Naruto gathered the gravity around him to form the black orb he dubbed, Pressure Shot. He fired the pressure shot over Mayuzik's head hitting a support beam of the warehouse. Mayuzik thought Naruto missed completely. What the hell were you shooting at? Your aim s, taunted Mayuzik. That's what you think, countered Naruto. After Naruto said that the second floor was collapsing on top of Mayuzik. What? yelled Mayuzik as debris was falling above him. Now's my chance, yelled Naruto as ran toward Mayuzik with his chakra blades formed. Not so fast shouted Mayuzik as he fired another sonic blaster only for his attack to be blocked by the debris. Shit, he yelled. When Naruto got close enough he sliced off Mayuzik's left arm off. Blood was spraying from the wound as Mayuzik screamed in pain. His scream was loud enough that it attracted the attention of three young Kunoichi who were ironically walking to the same abandoned warehouse. Hey did hear that? Asked Ino. Yeah, what do think was? Asked Sakura. Anyo. Maybe we should, go find out. Someone could be hurt, stuttered Hanada who just got out of the hospital. As the three leaf kunoichi head towards the source of the scream Naruto stood ready for the next attack. Mayuzik was not a happy hyper blood after losing his arm. Just above Mayuzik stood Noyes and he was just as pissed. Well brat, looks like we'll have kick it up a notch. Mayuzik, said Noyes as his horns started to glow. After hearing his teammate Mayuzik's horns were glowing as well. Suddenly a large flash of white light appeared and Naruto stood in the middle of it. In that light Naruto couldn't hear a thing. It was like the sound in that light was ed out. This is not a good thing for Naruto since his opponents are using sound attacks. As Naruto stood there he was being hit by their sonic blasters repeatedly. As you can see kid, sound is comprised of vibrations in the airwaves. Namely the frequencies, our hours can locate these frequencies and create the same types of frequencies and cancel out the sound in a field of a three mile radius, explained Noyes. Do you see now kid, humans first sense danger by sound. With our horns we can get rid of the sound making you vulnerable. So in other words you can't fight what you can't hear, simplified Mayuzik. As Naruto was being pounded by the sound attacks, Hanada, Ino, and Sakura arrived and saw Kin watching the battle. You. What are you doing here? demanded Sakura remembering Kin from the forest of death. Huh. What now? asked Kin as turned to see the three girls. Oh crap, we don't need this now, she thought while glancing at the battlefield. As Kin was being interrogated by the resident pink-haired freak, Naruto was having a painful experience. The sound assault was beating him almost into a pulp and it was deafening his hearing. The assault was too much for him. But suddenly Naruto opened his mouth and a deep low roar was emitted from his mouth. The roar started to raise in pitch and then it engulfed the white lighted area and returned to normal. Impossible, he negated my audio eraser, muttered Noyes in shock. As for Mayuzik, he kept on attacking. Cut it out Mayuzik were at a disadvantage here, ordered Noyes. Shut up. 
I don't care I'm going to kill the little bastard for cutting my arm. Yelled Mayuzik. As he kept firing, Naruto moved his head to Mayuzik's direction and fired another roar at him. The roar reached Mayuzik and his head was starting to crack. Finally Mayuzik's head shattered and he dropped dead. Mayuzik. Yelled Noyes as his right arm was destroyed by Naruto's own sound attack. He managed to get away from Naruto to report his failure. Ryo sama I have failed you. Mayuzik is, Noyes said mentally. That is not important, listen carefully. There are four girls west from your position. Capture the one with white eyes. A Hyuga? Yes sir, respond Noyes as he leaped towards the unsuspecting girls. Meanwhile back with Kin she was having a hard time getting the three leaf Kunoichi to leave. I'm telling you three have to get out of here now, yelled Kin. No way, not until you tell us what you're doing here, demanded Sakura. Yeah, just what do you and your buddies want with Sasuke-kun, added Ino. I don't give a damn about your precious Uchiha. What I'm worried about is getting you three out of here right now, shouted Kin getting frustrated. Anyo, dot why? Asked Hanada. The Hyuga heiress got her answer when Noyes appeared behind them. He was towering above them even with his injury, he was wheezing in pain from loosing his arm. He stood there for a few more seconds then he cough up blood. His blood splashed onto all four girls' faces. The shock of seeing Noyes and having his blood on them was too much, so Sakura, Ino, and Hinata did what any girl their age and position would do. They screamed, and as they screamed Noyes grabbed Hinata and leapt away while Kin shouted at him demanding that let Hinata go. As she yelled Naruto appeared in front of the rest of the girls. Kin what's wrong? asked Naruto surprising Sakura and Ino. Noyes kidnapped one of these girls, answered Kin. Who? He asked fearing for who it is. A girl with white eyes, respond Kin looking at Noyes's path. What? He took Hanada chan yelled Naruto as he gave chase. The two enhanced warriors leapt across the village with Naruto catching up with Noyes. The chase was long and tiring for a normal person or shinobi. Finally Noyes lost Naruto and landed it near a dark alley. He dropped Hanada onto the ground where she fell unconscious. Ryo sama I've captured the Hyuga as you ordered. Please send back up immediately sir, thought Noyes unaware of two dark figures approaching him. Suddenly one of the figures rammed his right hand into his back. Ga! groaned Noyes as he turned his head to see his attacker. N, no, you're, dot not, suppose, to, be, here, he groaned out. I don't know what's going on. But I doubt that little wants anything to do with you, said the dark figure as he ripped Noyes's spine out. Two minutes later Naruto appeared. Hanada chan yelled Naruto as he landed and saw Noyes's remains dissolve. Noyes? Naruto. Did you find her? asked Kin as she, Sakura, and Ino finally caught up with him. No, I haven't, huh? Started Naruto as he saw two dark figure come close to them. When they reached a lit section Naruto was beyond happy to see who they are along with Hanada. Aniki. Nissan. He yelled running towards his, brothers. End of flashback. Around the end of the Chunin exams the invasion started and at some point Naruto unlocked his battleclad form, said Kin. Last flashback back in the forest the genin were trying to avoid all of Gara's attacks as he lashed out at them. Soon enough his focus changed from Sasuke to Hanada as he lunged at her. Seeing Gara heading towards her reminded her of how he was back at the forest of death and of the mutant that grabbed him before. Fear was all over her as Gara he suddenly stopped. Gara turned to see a new foe holding his tail. All the genin looked at the new comer and saw what looks like to them a humanoid demon. Kin took a good look at the demon and smiled. Naruto! yelled Kin in joy seeing friend in his battle clad form. The other genin looked at the demon and saw that it is Naruto. To Sasuke it was impossible for this thing to be Naruto. For Sakura she was shaking in fear because Naruto just stopped Gara when Sasuke couldn't even slow him down. To Tamari she was thinking that Naruto also has a demon inside him. Hanada stood the in shock and awe seeing her crush in this form. Suddenly Naruto flung Gara to the ground without putting any effort into it. Gara hit the ground hard and glared at Naruto but had little to no effect because Naruto opened one of his chest plates and charged his devastator. Sensing the intense power coming from Naruto, Gara immediately went to sleep to allow Shukaku to fight Naruto. The demon rose up in his sandy form just in time to get hit by the devastator. 
The blast vaporized his lower half, but it reformed itself. Shukaku fired an air bullet towards the berserker, but it was blocked by the pressure shot. The genin clinging onto whatever they could find watched in horror as two nearly invincible forces face each other. As the two face off Hanada tried to stop Naruto from getting killed, but before she could reach him Naruto jumped into the air to reach Shukaku. The demon fired another air bullet, but Naruto dodged the attack and threw a punch at Gara. Naruto slammed his fist at Gara's head and that woke him up. The sand lost its form and Gara fell to the ground. Before he hit the ground he was caught by Tamari. The two landed on the forest floor and watched in horror as Naruto landed without getting a scratch or sprain. Naruto moved toward them with his blades ready. No. Stay back. Get away from us you monster. Begged Tamari watching in fear as their executioner advanced to them. Naruto-kun. Screamed Hanada who was scared of what her crush has become. After Hanada's scream Naruto stopped as his crystal glowed a bright white light. Naruto stood still for 10 seconds then he moved his right hand to his head. Hi, Hanada-chan. Said Naruto as he turned to see her. He saw her looking at him in fear. Naruto. Shouted Kin as she Sakura, and Sasuke caught up with them. I can't believe it. You finally reached your battle clad form, she added. What are you talking about, Kin? Asked Naruto until he looked at his body. What the? How did I get like this? He asked. You don't know, mentioned Kin as the other looked at them. No, all I remember was fighting this blood warrior called Apoc and he bit my arm off and then everything went blank answered Naruto as he looked at his arms. Wait, does this mean that I died? asked Naruto fearing the answer. I don't know, but maybe you reached battle clad like that because your bloodline reanimated you kinda like a zombie or something, responded Kin. A, a zombie? stuttered Naruto as he continues to look at himself. Naruto-kun, said Hanada who tried to get close to him, but he moved away when he saw twelve blood warriors arrive to their location. You assholes really picked a bad time to piss me off, growled Naruto as he ran towards them with his vibration blades out. A couple of hours later Team 7, Hanada, and Kin reached the rooftop to see the Hokage and Orochimaru fight with the Sound 4 acting as guards. Also inside the barrier was Ryo looking at Naruto almost daring him to get in. Naruto was more than happy to oblige. Everyone cover your eyes, ordered Naruto as he opened his chest plates. The other genin didn't listen but watched him fire the devastator at the barrier. The blast grazed the barrier, but it was enough to shatter it. Naruto leapt towards Ryo and landed six yards away. The Hokage and Orochimaru stopped to look and the Sound 4 look at Naruto in horror. Very impressive boy, commented Ryo. Shut up, I want to know why the your people are after me, demanded Naruto. Very well, I will tell you about your kind, said Ryo catching everyone's attention. Thousands of years ago, a warlord ordered many of his scientists to create the ultimate warrior and then create the strongest army based on that warrior. This resulted in bloodline limits. Through trial and error your bloodline was created, but it was unstable and ran wild. Despite that your power is more than enough to breed a new race of humans. Think about it, you are more gifted, more powerful than any other bloodline user. All of these second-rate bloodlines and blood warriors are child's play compared to a berserker. Join me and we can create a new world, said Ryo as he extended his hand out to Naruto. Now why would my runt want to do that? Asked Jigoku who appeared out of nowhere. You bastard, who do you think you are? Demanded Ryo glaring at Jigoku. Jigoku the Hellbreaker, answered Jigoku. So what will you do now? Asked Ryo. Simple I'm gonna kill ya, answered Jigoku as he lunged at Ryo only to go right through him. Before he or Naruto could react a devastator blast came at them. They dodged the attack, but Jigoku was too far to the ledge and fell off. Naruto looked to see Risko was the one who fired. That bastard, growled Risko, then he saw Naruto. Well well if it isn't the undead wonder, he added as he jumped towards Naruto. The building started shaking which caused Orochimaru, the Sound 4, the Hokage and the Genin who moved in to help the old man get away to safety. You and I will settle things right here, right now, said Risko. Are you crazy? This whole place is falling apart, yelled Naruto. I don't care, said Risko as he jumped into the air. Why should we fear anything if we are immortal, he added as Dive kicked at Naruto. The attack barely missed, but it was enough to knock Naruto off balance as he slid on the ground. Naruto got up and glared at him. 
Risco smirked at Naruto clearly toying with the boy. Let's see if you've improved, commented Risco. Naruto charged at Risco swinging his vibration blades left and right. Risco simply moved backwards clearly not impressed. Is this a joke? You haven't changed at all. Yelled Risco as he grabbed Naruto's right arm and slammed him onto the cement. Then Risco jumped into the air to deliver a knee into Naruto's gut. He got off the boy and stood over him. If you stop moving you leave yourself open to attacks, advised Risco as he fired his stun beam at Naruto. Naruto rolled away from the beam and picked himself up to fire his own stun beam. Risco dodged the attack and jumped behind Naruto. Naruto turned around and got punched in the gut. Then Risco punched him in the face and again in the gut. Risco kept attacking Naruto like this at least seven more times. Suddenly he grabbed Naruto by the neck and threw him across the roof. He opened his chest plates to fire his devastator again, but this time at close range. Naruto was struggling to get up, but was having a hard time. Disappear forever little berserker, shouted Risco as he charged his devastator. But the chakra faded and his crystal was acting up again. What's going on ah? groaned Risco as his body started to bulge out. Naruto finally got up to see Risco's body change and saw that his crystal was glowing wildly. Without a second thought Naruto leapt at Risco and punched him in the crystal. The crystal shattered and Risco tried to grab his head. Then his body started to dissolve. And, no, how, could this, happen, I'm, I'm invincible, ah. Groan Risco as he said his final works. The building started to collapse and Naruto jumped off the building. As he reached the ground, Naruto flipped forward and landed perfectly on the ground. He saw his teammates, Kin, Hanada, the Hokage, the Junin Sensei with a few clan heads and Ryoga. He saw that the Sandame was injured badly. End of flashbacks, and that's all I know, finished Kin as she concluded the story. Oh Kami-sama. To think that such a bloodline could bring so much pain to one person. Kin, thank you for telling us all that you know. We should be able to use this to prepare us for anything Keke Cage could throw at Naruto, said Tsunade in a caring tone. But Tsunade-sama, Naruto's the one who's protecting all of us from them. This is his and Jigoku sensei's battle. We can't do anything to interfere in it, replied Kin. Anyo, what do you mean Kin-chan? Asked Hanada. I mean if any of us interfere both Jigoku and Naruto would never forgive any of us, because they want to fight Keke Cage by themselves, answered Kin. Inside a massive mountain called Mount Gyo lies the Keke Cage base. Inside the mountain is their largest research lab which studies a large strange double helix-like structure. Below that is the development labs, which is responsible for creating more newer blood warriors. Far from it are the prison cells for the new test subjects. Inside the one cell holds seven captives, one of which is the person six of them failed to rescue, Aruka. The other happened to be Kuranai, her charge Hanada, the weapon mistress Tenten, former Otto Nin Kin, mind swiping Ino, and split personality Sakura. A few days ago they managed to reach Mount Gyo before Naruto did, because Naruto never bothered to learn where Mt. Gyo is located at. When they arrived they were immediately captured by a squadron of blood warriors. During their time captured, the Konoha shinobi were losing hope despite Hanada and Kin trying to encourage everyone that Naruto will come and get them out. As soon as Aruka heard that he became more worried because the two Kunoichi said that he'll most likely be coming alone. To calm his mind Kin for the second time broke her promise about keeping Naruto's bloodline a secret. She told Aruka everything that she told Tsunade and her teammates, sadly Aruka became more concerned about Naruto. And that's the whole story, finished Kin who just finished her story to Aruka, who took it quite well. My heart goes out to him. How can this happen? How could something like this happen to a good kid like Naruto? It's like some sort of bad dream, muttered Aruka as he took everything to heart. No, it's not a dream. Because dreams eventually end, this is more like a nightmare, said Hanada as she remembers the hyperblood Noyes and Naruto in battle clad form. We're all seeing Naruto kun's nightmare, she added as she broke down into tears and was being comforted by Kurenai. Meanwhile, the prison guard saw someone walk towards him. He noticed that the person walking over to him in a strange manner. Before he could respond, the intruder rushed toward him and rammed a serrated short spear right into his gut. The captured ninjas saw this and were shocked to see that it's Jigoku. Was up dogs? Asked Jigoku as he looked at each of the ninjas. I must say I'm impressed. 
I would have never have thought about letting myself get captured by my enemies just so I could find the hostage and then wait for the guard to get careless and then escape, commented Jigoku who smirked when he saw Kuranai lower her head down knowing that she never planned that at all. Oh well let's get the hell out of here, he said. What do you mean? asked Aruka. What? You thought the runt was the only berserker? I'm hurt, joked Jigoku as he activated his chakra blades. Only this time the blades were actually vibration blades to everyone's surprise including himself. Well that's new. Anyway stand back, he added as he cut the cell door into pieces. After getting the shinobi out of their cell, Jigoku led them to what they hope was an exit. Of course they had to go through an army of blood warriors first. At first Jigoku faced only a small number of Ramos, but Jigoku soon enough were fighting swarms of all types of blood warriors. As Jigoku lay waste to all that stood in his way he was being watched by both Ryo and an old man via monitor. So this is one of the last two berserkers? I must say I'm a little impressed by his performance, said the old man. Indeed, he is more of a threat than the boy. So Dr. Minakami, do you think your prized hyperbloods have a chance at beating him? stated Ryo. Don't underestimate the power I put into making the elite, hyperblood team 5 feet Ryo. They are more than enough for this punk, warned Dr. Minakami. Hum, what's that? said the doctor as he watched Jigoku's left arm was engulfed in flames. Hellbreaker, shouted Jigoku as he threw his left ear out. After killing the blood warriors chasing them, Jigoku launched a very powerful fire attack from his left hand at the tunnel they used to escape. The shinobi he was with are still amazed at how Jigoku can face these mutants on equal footing and not be exhausted. He has been using every attack he's got in his arsenal, but they could never have imagined that he had this attack. The fire attack destroyed the tunnel making it impossible for anyone to dig through it. Just when Aruka was about to ask him why he did that everyone saw that his left arm was torn and shredded with a large amount of blood spraying out. Aruka and Kuranai were about to move to his side when Jigoku stopped them. Don't worry about me. This is just a side effect after using my hellbreaker, said Jigoku as his bloodline began healing his arm. Amazing. Even after using an attack like that, he's still able to keep going, thought Kin as she watched Jigoku's arm repair itself. With power like that this guy could easily beat all three Sanin by himself, thought Kuranai. If this is how strong this guy is, just imagine how Naruto will turn out when he gets older, whispered Ino to Tenten. Yeah. To be honest I wish I had that kind of power, responded Tenten. So, does that I get to have Naruto, asked Ino. Hell no he's mine, snapped Tenten. Before the argument could get larger Jigoku sensed that they weren't alone. Five of them huh? Said Jigoku who turned to the path they were heading toward. Why don't you show yourselves so we can play you oversized sewer rats, taunted Jigoku. Just up ahead of everyone stood five figures. Four of them are males and one of them is female. One male was tall and thin with a shaved head, the other next to him was huge with loads of muscles and dark skin. Another was average height and built with a mohawk and the last male looks like an older version of Shino only without the sunglasses. The female of the group had a built similar to Anko with brown hair and a ponytail. All five of them were dressed in shinobi attire save the Abarame looking guy who looks like well every Abarame. Hey, lucky me. I was worried that this would be too easy. Thank God we ran into some more playmates, said Jigoku who was making everyone question his sanity. You're gonna wish that's what we are after we're done with you, stated the Abarame as he and the others changed their forms. The Abarame looking guy's body expanded and changed into some sort of human bug hybrid similar to a beetle of some kind. The dark skinned man grew taller and grew an extra pair of arms under the first pair. The tall guy had four tentacles sprout out from his lower back and strange gel like glands forming on his stomach and on top of his bald head. The one with the mohawk, his shoulders expanded like vacors only with spikes and the mohawk turned into horns. The female's hands turned into vibration claws and no real changes after that. Jigoku smirked at seeing the transformations. And here I thought I was in trouble. My bad, boasted Jigoku as he threw a punch at the one with four arms but his fist was caught by the blood warrior's left lower hand. What? yelled the shocked Jigoku. The hyperblood with more arms threw three punches at Jigoku at the same time and the elder berserker was sent to a wall. As Jigoku recovered the hyperblood with spikes fired two of his spikes at him. Jigoku leapt to the left and the two spikes exploded when they hit the wall. Everyone was shocked to see the explosion except these hyperbloods. 
Before anything was said the spike hyper blood fired more explosive spikes at Jigoku. Jigoku tried to dodge the attack but was hit in the back. The impact caused him to roll toward the shinobi, he tried to get back up with his ki rising. Son of A, cursed Jigoku as he prepared to use his hellbreaker again. Fool! shouted the spike hyperblood who fired another spike straight at Jigoku's arm. The spike struck Jigoku in the arm and exploded causing to have his arm blown off. Jigoku's arm flew away from him as his blood sprayed freely into the air and he screamed in pure agony from it. How do you like my high explosive bio darts? taunted the hyperblood. Do you see now berserker too? We're not like the other blood warriors you've ever faced, said the bug type hyperblood. Indeed, even if you are a berserker, you are only one human with limits, unlike these five specially made hyperbloods of personally created, boasted Dr. Minakami who walked towards them with Ryo. Everyone was shocked to see Ryo alive. You mean they're hyperbloods? asked Kin looking at each one. Correct little girl, answered the female hyperblood, but we're not like the others. We are the elite of the core, she added. That's right and allow us to introduce you to your executioners. My name is Tall ZX, said the beetle type hyperblood. I'm Blasker, said the spike one. The name is Thrasher, said the four armed one. I'm called Elegon, said the tentacle one. And I'm Zenkla and we are, finished the female. The hyperblood team five, yelled all of them. Hyperblood team five, thought all the shinobi as they looked at each of the dangerous looking mutants. Tall ZX show them your power and finish them, ordered the doctor. Yes sir, replied Tall Zex as the horn-like crest on his head split open to reveal a strange lens that start gathering chakra. Before Tall ZX could fire his chakra beam at the shinobi. The ceiling collapsed above them and debris and dust covered the area. When the dust cleared everyone saw Naruto standing between the two opposing forces and he looked pissed. To the Kunoichi there Naruto was as close to a guardian angel they were going to get. To the Hyper Blood Team 5 this was their chance to get rid of both berserkers. To Kuranai seeing Naruto in his battle clad form was like looking at a demon in a human's body. For Aruka, seeing Naruto like this is a shocker. Is that really Naruto? That thing is my favorite student? thought Aruka as he looked at the young berserker. Runt, be careful, these bastards, aren't like, dot the others, weave, face, said Jigoku in a raspy voice. Aniki? said Naruto as he looked at his wounded brother holding onto his stub of an arm. I'll teach you to turn you back on us, yelled Zenkla as she charged at Naruto. Reacting quickly enough Naruto managed to barely dodge each of her attacks. He moved back into a wall and duck when Zenkla impaled her right hand into the wall. Gur, I'll say this you're pretty fast but, said Zenkla as she pulled her hand out of the wall. Not fast enough, she added as slash marks appeared on Naruto's body. What? said a shocked Naruto as he looked at his cut up body. Surprised. Well don't be, my claws produce the same high frequency vibrations like your elbow blades, answered Zenkla as she prepared for another strike. This time Naruto used his right vibration blade and collided with Zenkla's vibration claw. Zenkla jumped back in surprise as the vibration weapons reacted to each other causing a screeching feedback effect. Impossible. The vibration weapons were reacting to each other, she mentioned as she looked at her claws. Look! yelled Elegon who was watching Jigoku use his hell siren to create a tunnel in the walls. Runt! Grab your teacher and let's get the ing hell out of here! yelled Jigoku as he limped his way towards the tunnel. Right! shouted Naruto as he dashed towards Aruka, grab on Aruka sensei. Okay, said Aruka as he grabbed Naruto's hand. Oh no you don't all, ah! yelled Blasker who was interrupted by Jigoku using the hell siren on him, but Jigoku couldn't even kill him. Damn it I can't get a good fix on him. I'm too drained, complained Jigoku as he was helped up the tunnel by Kuranai much to Jigoku's discomfort. As the shinobi escaped with the berserkers, the hyperblood team 5 were about to give chase. Just as they reached the tunnel, Naruto collapsed the tunnel with his hell siren to block the path. A pissed off tall ZX was about to dig his way through, but Dr. Minakami had other plans. Tall ZX don't continue the pursuit, ordered the aged man. But why doctor? asked tall ZX. Yes please explain why, demanded Ryo. Because I have something special in store for those two, monsters, in the form of that man, replied Dr. Minakami as he started laughing. You are a cruel old man, commented Ryo as he too started laughing. 
As the shinobi and berserkers rushed back to Konoha, the girls spotted the gate and ran towards it. Kuranai was by Jigoku's side making sure he doesn't drop to the ground like he should be. As for Aruka and Naruto, things were a little awkward for the older man as he looked at the boy who is like his own son. Eh? Naruto, called out Aruka. Yes Aruka sensei, asked Naruto. Well uh, I guess the get up would make it hard for you to blend in the village right? Asked Aruka trying to break the silence. Eh, not really. I can change back, answered Naruto. Right, I guess so, but it must be hard take a bath in, joked Aruka. Yeah I guess so, laughed Naruto. What am I saying? Can't I think of anything normal to say? But what is normal anymore? Now that I just saw Naruto looking like some demon fighting those monsters, thought Aruka. I want to say something, but I don't think now is the right time, thought Naruto as they entered the gate seeing Tsunade, Shizun, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Asuma, Gai, Ryoga and the male Genin. I'll tell him everything when he's settled in, he finished as he walked towards Jigoku. Man Jigoku you look like shit, joked Ryoga as he extended his hand trying to help his buddy out. Off yelled Jigoku as he smacked Ryoga's hand away from him. Suddenly Jigoku's flesh started cracking all over him. What the? He yelled in pain and his body was being engulfed in flames. The flames were turning his flesh into ash and started to fall off. The ninjas around him moved away in shock and fear as they watch him burn in agony. His eyes burst into flames and fire was coming out of his mouth as he yelled. His left arm started growing back but it was just bones. In a huge flame Jigoku was going through a transformation unlike Naruto's. When the flames cleared what stood there was not the Jigoku they all know and either tolerate or fear. He was slightly taller, with a strange ninja-like outfit. His pants were black traditional ninja pants and his top was black with a blood-red vest cloak thing draped over his shoulders and moved towards his stomach forming a cloth that goes between his legs covering his crotch. He has two toed feet with spiked shin guards and gauntlets with four small spikes facing forward. One spike on top, bottom, and on the sides on each gauntlet. Also on his gauntlets are long spike like blades that look like vibration blades. Covering his head was a hood and mask that covers his mouth and nose. Around his waist is a triple wrapped chain with an emblem of a skull with fangs in the center. Picture Scorpion's Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 outfit only with crazy spikes. The gathered ninjas were frightened with this Jigoku's new look and saw him move his right hand. They got ready to attack if he struck, but were shocked to see him ram his fist into his own face. Suddenly his body shattered and revealed Jigoku in his own battle-clad form. The only things different about his compared to Naruto's is that he has two vibration blades on each arm. The second pair are about 30 degrees away from the first set. The second difference is that his dreads are like flexible spikes. Also on his head was a two-spiked crystal in the form of a V. Now this is more like it, said Jigoku as he looked himself over. Two weeks have passed and things seem to have returned to normal. Jigoku after gaining his battle-clad form continued to cause trouble. This time it's on his target or the Hyper Blood Team 5 who hunted him down when Jigoku left the village. Meanwhile Aruka and Naruto were spending some so-called father-son time, together. Instead of eating ramen at Ichiraku like always they had their ramen to go. They went to eat at the same location in the forest where Naruto defeated Mizuki and where Naruto learned the cage Bushin no Jutsu. So Naruto, said Aruka as he finished his ramen. Yes Aruka sensei, responded Naruto after slurping his ramen. Your bloodline. Does it hurt when you change? Asked the older man. Naruto looked down on the ground after hearing the question. Every time, answered the boy. May I see you transform into it? Aruka asked curious about the transformation. I don't think that a good idea Aruka sensei, replied Naruto scared of how Aruka will react to it. Naruto, I've known you since you were my student. I will never think of any less of you if I see it, reasoned Aruka. Okay, said Naruto worryingly. Berserker, he yelled. Aruka watched Naruto's skin burned off his flesh and the vibration blades pop out. Seeing this happen in front of him was unbelievable. When Naruto's transformation was complete all Aruka can see is the same superhuman he saw before. For Naruto he was not really comfortable about his former teacher seeing him like this at all. Well Naruto, I have to say watching you change into something like this is a shock. But I know that despite what others may think about you now it will never change my opinion of you, said Aruka trying to cheer Naruto up. Really Aruka sensei. 
asked Naruto. Of cower, started Aruka until he felt a sudden surge of pain within him. Aruka sensei, shouted Naruto as he ran to his teacher only to halt when he saw Aruka transform. Aruka's back burst open revealing spider-like limbs. His hands turned into claws and his body expanded to about 13 feet. His head morphed into a wolf-like form with spider fangs. Aruka's body was covered in fur and his eyes glowed blood red. To Naruto this form was horrible and strangely familiar at the same time. No, they turned Aruka sensei into a blood warrior, whispered Naruto in shock. Hear me and obey Apok MK2. Kill the berserker. Hearing that command Aruka turned Apok MK2 charged at Naruto. Naruto dodged the attack but could not bring it upon himself to attack his former teacher. Instead the boy chose to keep away from the monster's attacks. Naruto was able to stay far from Aruka, but Apok MK. 2 spat out a spray of blue liquid at his eyes blinding the boy. The liquid was also eating his eyes. Naruto held on to his face screaming completely unaware of anything around him. Aruka raised his right claw into the air preparing to strike, but could not. Deep inside Aruka still had some control over his body. Sadly it wasn't enough to stop Dr. Minakami from controlling him. Destroy him. Rip that boy's head off. With one fast swipe Apok MK2's claw dug into Naruto's skull and tore his brain into bits. Naruto gave one final scream and fell to the ground and stopped moving. Aruka looked at his claw and was twitching. You have done well Apok MK2 or should I say Amino Aruka. Naruto, no, no, roared Aruka as he looked at the remains of the boy he loved like a son. Soon enough Aruka's mind was destroyed in favor for Apok's successor. Suddenly Naruto's body was getting up and he growled like a zombie. What? Impossible. How could he be standing like that? The two mutants stood facing each other. Apok MK2 swung his right claw at Naruto who ducked and used his left vibration blade to cut the arm off. The advanced Apok rammed one of the spider limbs into Naruto's left chest plate. Naruto hammer fisted the limb off and dropped to the ground. He grabbed the limb and ran towards Apok while pulling the limb off. The young berserker jumped onto the mutant and drove the severed body part into its shoulder. Then Naruto jumped off Apok MK2 and landed behind it. The huge creature turned and charged at the berserker, but the super mutant opened its right chest plate and fired its devastator at it. The mutant formerly known as Aruka was vaporized in an instant. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.